official exterior experts of the Huskers. Are you the decision maker in your company? Consider this. For the first time in decades, there's a better option for a corporate card and spend management platform. Meet Ramp, the only corporate card and spend management system designed to help you spend less money so you can make more. Most corporate credit cards offer points as incentives, but those points amount to less than their worth in real cash value. Ramp's corporate cards offer you cash back, real money in your pocket. Plus, you control who spends what with each vendor, and Ramp software collects and verifies receipts automatically, which means you'll stop wasteful spending and close your books in hours instead of days. Businesses that use Ramp add up to 5% to their bottom line the first year. If you're a decision maker, adding Ramp could be one of the best decisions you've ever made. And now, get $250 when you join Ramp. Just go to ramp.com slash sports. Ramp.com slash sports. R-A-M-P dot com slash sports. Cards issued by Sutton Bank and Celtic Bank members of DIC terms and conditions apply. I have never seen this before. Hi, John with Saul's Jury and Loan. The price of gold is the highest it's ever been. Now is the time to get the best price on your broken jewelry, chains, and diamond jewelry. Saul's has been around a while, and trust us, now's the time. Saul's Jewelry and Loan. Hi, this is John Bishop. Since the day I got my driver's license, I've had a check next to the organ and tissue donor box. It's a selfless gift because healthy organ donors can save up to eight lives. And with tissue donation, dozens more can get the gift of sight and burn victims can get life-changing skin grafts. Anybody can register and there's no cost to you or your family. Check that organ donor box next time you renew your license or visit goodguyssavelives.com. Learn more about organ and tissue donation today and see how you can save eight lives at goodguyssavelives.com. 1620 The Zone. But I got to say something about this UConn team, man. They have no holes. They can play big. They can play small. It is a UConn coronation. The Huskies make history. Back to back. National champions. Yeah, I mean, you can't even wrap your mind around it. But you just know how hard, how hard this tournament is. What a special group of people, a special coaching staff, an incredible group of players, the best group of players you could possibly do it with. And, and UConn, you know, UConn is a special place this time of year. Live from 50th and Capitol Avenue in the Big O. This is Mornings with Sharp and Hanley on 1620 The Zone. 1620thezone.com and 1620 the zone tv now here's gary nick and jimmy i just got three things to say god bless our troops god bless america and gentlemen start your All right, good morning, everybody. Welcome in on a uh, Tuesday. And with that, the college basketball season has come to an end. I learned something very valuable on my drive-in this morning as uh, we welcome in the two Jimmies, one with an IE, the other with a Y. Also known as the A-team. Oh. Go ahead. Okay. Whoa. Is this, uh, <laughs> is this a wrestling reference? Uh, yes. Okay. We're, we're, well, thanks for bearing lead. Jimmy and I are heading off to... Florida here to enter the NXT training facility here in a couple hours. I think that is somebody else in this building that's headed off to Florida and not not me. Uh, but, you know, it's scripted. So good luck with that, boys. Thanks. Appreciate it. Uh, I, I learned before we talk about Tucon. Um, nice. Let's. Uh, oh, gosh. Um, I do believe that there is an unwritten rule in this town. Uh, you, you had a little uh, traffic snoof, snafu yesterday. Not your fault. Um, oh, yeah. Because of uh, some construction. I am convinced now that traffic laws do not exist in this town prior to 6 a.m. Is that because everybody runs red lights? I can see that. Ooh, almost got, speed almost got plowed today in the uh, roundabout. Not a good way. Like just outside of my house. Like right there at 67th and 63rd and Shirley. Yeah. Like I saw the guy flying down 63rd and I'm like, okay, I'm going to hesitate here because this guy does not see me at all. Even though I was like. Or care probably. Well, I, was like, I was like in the roundabout. It's the second straight day. I like was thinking, man, I'm going to have to call uh, State Farm and tell them about my accident. Because coming out of my house in my little neighborhood, uh, a guy was like a bat out of hell yesterday and almost drilled me. So I did the I did the thing where, you know, very macho thing. I uh, gave him the bird. Yep. Um, and then um, I didn't. You know that guy's at his mom. office somewhere. He's like, you know, I saw Gary Sharp today. He gave me the bird. <laughs> no, the guy, the guy got like almost, you too, huh? almost like just drilled me. 
So then I like, you know, like I slammed on the brakes and I was like going to back up. So the guy today, I did this thing. So I'm very macho today. Mm -hmm. um, the guy that almost drove Teacher me Wheaties. in the roundabout. Like, you know, he didn't even see me. He like blew right by me. I would have been like. Is know, this a yield close. or a stop sign situation? Well, it's just a regular roundabout. There yeah. are some uh, laws that they have uh, put on the books uh, sure. about roundabouts. So then I do the thing where the guy is like through the roundabout and is driving away and he realizes, oh, there was a guy there. So, of course, I speed up behind him. Of course. Got to yeah. get right on his tailgate. All right. So my uh, my adrenaline is uh, rolling today. So uh, before 6 a.m., uh, traffic laws in this town do not exist. It's not uh, the first time that's happened. I saw on the way in today, three people, three different people run red lights this morning. That's Just all? turn left on a red. I was like, oh, oh. okay. Well. It's dark. It doesn't apply till it's light. It, no, it, that's serious. Like, I, I think if I uh, got paid by the parking or the, not the parking ticket, but the ticket, traffic ticket I gave out, like they could uh, swear me in. Yeah. I could make the city a lot of money. Citizens arrest. Make the city a lot of money. Gene, Josh. Get the boys in blue out at 4 or 5 a.m. Uh, speaking, There's money to be made. Speaking of Gene, before we talk about what happened last night in the uh, desert, <laughs> um, the Creighton men's basketball team stopped by the mayor's office. Yesterday. Oh, that's right. I was wondering where you were going with this. I was like, okay. You ever read, you ever <laughs> read, the, you ever read the comments on anything that is posted about the uh, mayor of our city? Is the words Kansas City written a lot? Kansas City, St. Louis. Surprised you were there. Yeah. Yeah. Um, Who would you like in 1985? What do you like, think of Don Dickens? No, nobody's ever like, oh, that's kind of a cool picture. Hey, thanks for uh, recognizing this. Thanks for all you do here in Omaha. It's like, hey, hey, I'm surprised you're there. Uh, hey, the with Mars that note, the Cardinals. What do you think? <laughs> Welcome in, everybody. It's uh, Mornings with Sharp and Hanley. Jimmy Allen is back today. I am. I got to fix here that uh, camera. What? Your head is uh, shining brightly. I'm just beautiful, baby. You wax that thing? Time on my head? Yeah. Yeah. Um, uh no <laughs> <look> good. <laughs> no i do not <laughs> excuse me <laughs> oh oh uh all, all right. right so whole gang is here uh last night the college basketball season came to an end it was uh <laughs> to yukon as they won back-to-back -back titles something we talked about yesterday was so true throughout that game and when it was all said and done and yukon wins by a comfortable 15 to go 12 and 0 the last two years 12 and 0 against the spread that essentially last night was best player against best team. That's how that game played out. Yeah, and uh, maybe, and uh, this hurts, maybe the best coach in the country utilize, utilizing a way to exhaust said player to make sure it was kind of a four-on-five four on five matchup last That's night. That's right. You said if he was your coach, you'd love him. Well, not publicly. Thanks, Jimmy. Jeez. I'm not allowed to admit that out loud. It's respect. <laughs> hey, I, I'm not. A, I'm not afraid to admit. I'm, the, I'm riding or dying with Dan Hurley. The way they went that two-one triangle to kind of bring Zach Eady as far away from the basket and make him run to earn everything last night was a masterpiece coaching wise. I'm I'm glad that people recognize that he can be a maniac, but he's a damn good coach when it comes to X's <laughs> and O's on the whiteboard and constructing a roster. Even when even when uh, Zach Eady was walking over to the bench, he was making sure he was trying to exhaust him. He was a little bit of chippiness there. So, I mean, Z Zach Eady had 37 of their 60 points, and they still lost by 15. What does that say? But it tells you Zach Eady is really, really good. But they did exhaust him. I, I thought they did a they're, – they're just built differently to handle a 7'4 guy. And you don't need a 7'2 guy to say, okay, we've neutralized him. They did a really good job of sticking with Eady and playing one-on-one -on -one. And they didn't let Edie get away from him, even though he had 37. But their that was going to happen no matter what. Their happened. perimeter defense last night was suffocating. They really did not do anything special. They they were they played they 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 did a smart defense. They were one on one. They were two on two with Edie and Smith, and then they got after the perimeter. I mean, they kind of they kind of executed a philosophy that some have tried against Purdue is let Edie have everything and then slow down the yeah. other four. But it was also a master class in the difference between Dan Hurley and Matt Painter. I mean, Dan Hurley coached circles around Matt Painter. Agreed. When you have the best players as a whole, that helps. But when you outcoach somebody and you cannot adjust, uh, that gets one-sided. And I, I know the game was close for a while. At one point, I mean, we're, we're what, seven, seven minutes to go, and it's 20, what was it, 23, 23, a little over seven minutes to go. From that point on, yeah, they it looked like it looked like it was yeah, over then. They outscored them fifty-two to thirty-seven, and they absolutely suffocated the perimeter for Purdue. I mean, there, they they had no answers for him. There was that moment where they they focused in on Edie, and then they zoomed over. 
uh, to uh, to Braden Smith, and he just had his hands on his knees and was gasping for air with like five minutes to go in the first half. And I was like, oh, this is not good. Yeah, they, they, that was another part of that. You're absolutely right. They sped him up. Now, I don't think Purdue's, and this is no, you know, no woe. There's really only one team in the Big Ten that I thought this year had good foot speed, and that was Illinois. Illinois. Yeah. Is UConn has, UConn is fast. I mean, got, uh, we're not talking just the way they run their offense, but guys are actually fast. Yeah. And it's time we and, give Tristan Newton his flowers, by the way. Cause, well, who's not? Uh, I just think there was so much uh, talk about him not getting uh, Big East Player of the Year. And obviously, he won the player uh, of, of, of the tournament last night. But I, I just think that, I mean, I think it's there's this consensus that Zach Eady is the best player in the country, and I, man, if if he's number one, he Tristan Newton might be one A though. I mean, he is he is spectacular. Yeah, I don't think anybody was. Uh, that's the that's the thing about UConn. I don't think anybody was like ignoring Tristan Newton when you're on a team that basically has six guys that could be yeah, the number they're one. Too, guy they're too good team. to recognize yeah, him. <laughs> so I, Tristan Newton is recognized, and he was the most outstanding player award was his to be had. But Zach Eady is the best player in the country. And Zach Eady at the beginning of that game was the only reason that Purdue kept it close. He was absolutely killing it, but they forced him to work. Um, you know, he he, he had to live in the paint, but it was a great game plan. And I'm, I'm, you know, something I really appreciate. Don Staley did it the day before. Dan Hurley did it last night. Is they recognized their assistant coaches that did the scout. Uh huh. You know, that's a short turnaround when you go from a Friday to a Sunday or a Saturday to a Monday, and it's it's not like all of a sudden you wake up and it's like, okay, what do we do? You're 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 scouting ahead. So you have the basics in play, and then you just need to tweak a little bit. But both head coaches recognized assistants that did the scout. And that UConn team is so well put together, but they're also a smart basketball team that has a purpose, and they just all blend well together. They pass the ball. They're fun to watch. But, man, did they execute their scout because defensively they gave Purdue no room. And I'm sure at the top of that scouting report is let Edie get his, do not let them shoot from the perimeter. And you had a Purdue team, a Purdue team that was only able to get off seven threes. And even at the end of the game, when they were, what, 12 to 13 in that range, they they just tried to keep pounding inside. They did not want to shoot the three ball. Yeah, more hell of a they only made one of them. Yeah, it was hell of, well, another, another thing is you, you, you dominated the perimeter. Purdue had... One guy that had assists last night. One guy. Yeah. One guy. And that was uh, Smith with eight. That was the only guy that had assists. I mean, this is this was a master class last night on what UConn did to Purdue. They did such a good job of making sure that the plays at the rim didn't beat them. When the, the, the tallest guy on the court was on the other side of the bench. And it's, it's incredible. And when we, we, we look at the way the way they did it like Dan Hurley did a, like was perfectly fine with telling letting Donovan Klingon go out there and bang and and do his thing uh until he realized that it was like he, he was willing to take one of his stars and ask him to play in a role instead of being the guy and it just seamlessly happened it didn't seem like there was any kind of issue with that like he he, he tried giving Donovan Klingon the ability to go out there and showcase his skill set until it was time to flip the switch and change the game plan. I think that says a lot about him as a coach and how his players respect it. That game was decided in the middle eight. I mean, it, it was 23-23 uh, with seven minutes to go. But the last four minutes where Purdue's offense got stuck, and they were still within striking distance, but you knew that UConn would have that that spurtability, that punch. And then the, the first four of the second half, and that game was over. It, it, it kind of reminded me, going off the best player versus the best team of what happened on Sunday in Cleveland. Iowa had the best player. South Carolina had the best team. Yeah. And you knew that after halftime in a tight game, there was going to be a punch thrown by the better team. And that's what happened in South Carolina. That's what happened last night with UConn. They threw a punch right out of halftime, and the other team never recovered. Well, I mean, even Almost a spit an image of how those two games played out. We we talk about that made three, and I, I think it's important to point out that it was a heavily contested hit every part of the rim before it rolled in, and it was one of those things with five minutes left in the first half. They needed it to stop a seven zero run too. Yeah, you, you, that was in the first half. UConn, uh, th there's enough time for debate about UConn be this team being uh, mentioned among the the best. I don't know. I'd go that far, but you, you you're you're not going to find. 
a two-year run that is as good as UConn's, in my opinion. Now, now Duke did it 91-92, and then Florida most recently. The thing about Florida is they brought kind of everybody back. Right. This UConn team had to replace starters that were off to the NBA and some young guys, and they found a way to just be basically a juggernaut the entire season. Yeah, you could argue this team was better than last year. But but I'm going to go on the two year run. I'm yeah. going to go on the absolute two year run because even like if if you look at their run in the NCAA tournament where they go 12 and 0 and they're 12 and 0 against the spread and their average margin they they didn't lose by or they didn't win by anything less than 13 points. Even UNLV, the great UNLV team, uh, in 90 that 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 stretch they had is they had one game. They were playing Ball State. I mean, UNLV back then had five NBAers on the floor. They almost lost to Ball State. This UConn team never, never was in doubt. Like no one ever really challenged them. Well, and they get they, they get talked about as the number one seed. And the, the the path that they took wasn't all that difficult. But look what they were able to do. They they beat a Purdue team who was consensus probably either the second or third best team in the country all season long. Mm -hmm. They beat an Alabama team that was the number one seed uh, in the tournament a year ago. They beat an Illinois team who a lot of people thought maybe was a top 10 team in the country all season. And then you beat a San Diego State team that was uh, the national runner-up a year ago. And then, obviously, you beat uh, Stetson and in, 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 uh, Northwestern. But, I mean, Northwestern was probably the best nine seed in this tournament. It's not like they had the this easy path that was uncontested all the way yeah. through. Yeah. Uh, so the college basketball season is over. Uh, I on the interwebs last night with the Kentucky job <laughs> open. The the ridiculousness of people thinking that Danny Hurley was going to go to Kentucky. Yeah, why would you leave that situation you're in right now? That just to even think about that and then like put it out there that man he's going to leave. Watch out, boy. You kind of hope you enjoyed your run. You know what? Dan Hurley's a very smart guy. I know I'm probably I'm I'm not with the mainstream here of my love of Dan Hurley, but Dan <laughs> Hurley is a very smart guy. He's about fit. There's a better fit to chase three in a row than there is to go to the cesspool that can be Big Blue Nation. Plus, he's got everything he wants at UConn. And, every, and he let every, everybody he yeah. let everybody in Connecticut know last night how much he loved them. By the yeah, way, yeah. And see, when you when you say that stuff out on the old interwebs. You, what, what are you just looking for clicks? Are you are you just are you not dis are you disconnected? Because Danny Hurley to Kentucky makes no sense whatsoever. Other than he's the best coach in college basketball right now, and SEC has a lot of money. So he said that after the game in his Dan Hurley way, we ain't leaving. And I'm sure that they will get back to Stores, Connecticut, and he'll be right back in the office because he's wired differently. They will go after a chase for three in a row, and it will consume him. That's just kind of who he is. And I mean, I think it's going to be really difficult, but you can't discount what he has done. I mean, he's the best coach in college basketball right now, and, and uh, he's got he's got he's got maybe the best program in college basketball right now with six titles in the last twenty five years. And and my favorite part about the interwebs last night was how many casual basketball fans who haven't seen UConn last night were like. This guy's a maniac. Dan Hurley, what does Dan Hurley do? It's like, no, he does this every game, like six times yeah. a game minimum. You have to watch. Uh, so um, I saw UConn play a couple times this year. The game against Creighton, and then I saw him play down at KU when they didn't have Castle and they got beat. Is You have to go watch him in person because I don't think UConn games on TV with Hurley does justice on him in game because he's everywhere. Absolutely up and down the sidelines. He's riding officials. He's on the floor. Don't know how he didn't get a T last night pushing his own guy. Yeah, it doesn't it doesn't but, matter if they're up 15 either. He never stops coaching. Yeah, he he is uh he's entertaining to watch in person. He's infuriating. You know why he's infuriating, Jimmy? Because he wins. But watching him in person is like almost exhausting how much he marches up and down, rides the officials. He's 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 you know, the glasses are on, the glasses are off. He's chirping at fans. He's chirping at officials. He's chirping at his own players. But there is one thing that he does that he did last night that I just, I I was very humored by. So he is just riding, riding high knees. I mean, you know, the game was getting physical and Edie was starting to get some calls and fouls were starting to rack up. And Hurley wanted to let it be known that, you know, he wanted his voice to be heard. So he is riding, riding, riding high knees. And then he flipped it off 
and started to talk to Tracy Wolfson. He was like the calmest guy in the world. Yeah, he just walked over and it's he, a bit. he literally gave himself a. <laughs> All right. <laughs> I, listen, I mean, it, it's one uh, of those, he's a great ref, great friend. It's one of those things, man. If if you're officiating a UConn game, though, it has to be absolutely exhausting. Like he just and, and, and I think and, it is if you're a new official. Yeah, because most of those guys. Well, hats like, off to him, but he the, never stops. Like he yeah. never takes his foot off. But the he's gas. also one of the guys. So watch him though. He'll be he'll ride you, ride you, ride you, and then a couple of plays later, that same official is the lead official, and he's right in front of the bench. And it looks like they're joking. Yeah. So I think if you if you've officiated for a while, you've had Hurley in your life. And so you're used to that. And he probably has a relationship with you. I can't imagine a new official, a young official for the first time uh, refing a UConn game with him in your ear because he'll test you. And, you know, if you if you mess up, he's going to test you even more. And then it becomes, well, do I bang the guy or not? Yeah, and and I, like we talk so often around here about like they the, should have him mic'd up. I would love to hear oh, Danny please. Hurley mic'd up yeah, during a game. Just take my money at that point. Uh, if if uh, like we talk so often around here about Bo Pelini and the ability to not turn it off. I mean, that's really the difference. Is Dan Hurley knows exactly when he can take his foot off the gas and and give the give the officials an attaboy versus maybe some coaches that just are. All gas, no brakes, 100% of the time. And you wonder, so the, there was the complete opposite of each head coach last night when it comes to working the officials. Matt Painter is super calm and collected during games. Um, he really doesn't say much. He doesn't sit. He stands. Um, but, he, but he doesn't He doesn't really, he doesn't get after officials. Where Hurley is the complete opposite. And it depends on what you think if that works. You know, that's if you right. get an extra call or not, because the same thing has been said about Hoiberg is why isn't Fred more animated? I mean, it's just whatever your, your pre- need to be. whatever your preference is. I think it's also your personality. You can't be a guy that is a maniac on the floor and be like super calm and collected and normal off the floor. Like Hurley's life is a roller coaster, but he's in the lead car and he controls everything. I don't think I don't think you can flip it where in the middle of you know in a you just 40 become minute that rant, guy one yeah day. you become that guy where you're ranting and raving and then you walk away and you're like oh man that that guy's a different animal I just think in in coaching that's not possible you can maybe be half that in your personal life but I think once you are that way that's who you are and I want you to be that way I don't want you to be a fake guy I want you that's why I like Hurley he's authentic. I mean, it doesn't matter what day of the week you're getting. You're getting the same Dan Hurley. He's not performing for the cameras. He's not performing for the microphone. He is who he is. You you brought up Matt Painter in the, in that Sweet Sixteen game against Gonzaga. There was a moment where Gonzaga, I think, it was either on a seven zero or nine zero run, and Matt Painter is over on the sideline. He's absolutely losing it, and you could see him like take inventory of what's going on and calm down and like literally walked away from the huddle, gets back into it. And you just watch Purdue kind of balance themselves out. And it was one of those things that he's not that guy. Yeah. And when your head coach starts showing personality that he's not, things fall off the rail really quick. If you can't roll that back. He in. also looked like a guy last night that he knew what he was getting into. Oh yeah, of course. I mean, there, there's only so much as Zach Eady can do. I think he's got to be really disappointed in his guards. I mean, Fletcher, one for seven from Fletcher, three. Yeah, I would be too. Jones Jones showed that the physicality was not his ball game, but lawyer lawyer looked like he would rather be somewhere else because that that was not his cup of tea of playing against UConn and their pressure defense on the perimeter. Um, well, yeah, and that was the thing. So pre- Painter, Painter looked like a guy that man, we're going to need an all 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 world effort out of Zach Eady to stay in this game. He could just and he just had that look, and he was absolutely right. Yeah, and it, it was one of those things that if you if you look at the way UConn played defense, like it, they, like if you look at the first three minutes, the last three minutes, it didn't slow down, and Purdue just looked like they didn't know how to handle that kind of pressure at that level of, of athleticism. All right, uh, welcome in on a uh, Tuesday. It is the uh, 9th of April. Uh, Sam McEwen's going to join us in about an hour. Uh, Nebraska football begins week three of spring camp. Uh, today there is uh, media availability, so uh, Sam will stop by at seven thirty with uh, thoughts as we wrap up the college basketball season on the floor, off the floor. It never ends. Uh, and then also Brian Christopherson will uh, make an appearance. The lineup brought to you by the Rooferies of John Higgins Weather Guard. Now, so now that the basketball season is over, and 
Record ratings for women's basketball, 18.7 mil watched Iowa, South Carolina. It's all about matchups. Matchups and stars. We watched a lot of women's basketball this year. I don't know. I think the men's game last night will do well, but not in that category because it was a good matchup. And there's a lot going on last night. We too. we we if we watch because of matchups. Like if it's a good matchup, we're watching. Um but as the season on the floor comes to an end, and when it does at the final four in the national championship game, we wait for one shining moment. I didn't think this was a very good men's okay. basketball tournament. But was the what did you think about the one shining moment? I'm getting there. Jimmy okay. has a take. He's like itching. I think it matched how poor the men's college basketball tournament was this year. There, there was is Jack Golke and DJ Burns the most swag dudes that played in the NCAA tournament this year? What did we have? How many buzzer beaters did we have? Two, right? One, one, one. Texas A and M, Houston to go yep. to overtime, and that was it. It was a very and this isn't this isn't about UConn. I mean, maybe maybe this is UConn was so dominant. It was to me a very meh men's basketball tournament. Yeah, and, I, and I think I think whoever was editing one shining moment felt the same way because I thought that was a bad. bad I was sitting there watching, and I was one like, shining moment. Th- this isn't getting any better. Like it almost got worse the way it, like. They they were like, okay, what are the six most recognizable faces of the year this year? Here they are, and then a couple yeah. other things that you probably won't even know what it's from. And the final call. So I'm glad there, I didn't stay up to watch. There was, um, I mean, there's a little controversy here locally about yeah. last night's one shining moment. Uh-huh. <laughs> I thought that was the fewest teams that had been shown in one shining moment. Showed Nebraska twice, though. Twice, however. I, I know that's the controversy, but as a whole. I thought there were fewer teams that were shown Mm -hmm. in one shining moment. I mean, the tournament wasn't great. The one shining moment wasn't great. I don't know who was editing it, but they got some splaining to do because Nebraska being in the tournament for the first time in a decade, as you mentioned, got in there twice. But there's a little bit of an issue. Now, before I tell you about Nebraska's, uh, so the Creighton Pep Band was in it. Uh, celebration in the locker room was in it after the Oregon win. Yep. And then they were part of the Tennessee highlights in the Sweet 16. Am I missing anything with Creighton's uh, the appearance? The twice that they showed Tennessee was actually in the game against Creighton. Though. Okay. So they showed Nebraska twice. As we were discussing yesterday, Tominaga is featured as he hits a three. But then as one shining moment continues on, you know, now they're, the, now they're into the stretch of that production, which is not easy to do. Got to be better next year, I'm just telling you. Is we get to the sad parts where people are crying and there's emotion. And subtly, there is Jawan Gary appears. Yeah. <laughs> we now, picked the wrong Husker to be crying in this video. The wrong Husker. You and I yesterday. And the wrong tournament yes so the Jawan gary appears in one shining moment late last night it is from the big 10 tournament where he fouled out against illinois and he is on the sidelines doubled over showing some emotion uh nebraska wore white against texas a&m Jawan gary and you have to you probably saw it and you're like what's that from yeah (laughs) that's that's nebraska but wait a minute you probably had to rewind it to go back and go, are my eyes deceiving me? No, Jawan Gary is in one shining moment from the Big Ten tournament, not the NCAA tournament, in the Big Ten tournament. So this tells you that this package was put together two weeks ago. Somebody was very ready for basketball season to be over, and they just found some clips of people crying. Well, I, I don't, and they I put the final call in. I didn't know. Signed, sealed, I, didn't, I didn't go back and you know do the Zapruder. Um, I don't know if there was maybe one or two others that were not from the NCAA tournament. I mean, heck, there there wasn't there just wasn't a lot to it. But the fact that you included a clip from a team and a game, well, a game that was not in the NCAA tournament is that a, is that a, is that an all time first for a one shining moment? Is it time to retire? We got, we got controversy. Is oh, that just a moment? Oh no! Here no, we no. go. No, Luther going to get out of bed. He's going to give you a whooping. Oh, it's just not good. <laughs> like it, it is time to move on from that. 
It really is. It, it, it's it's yeah, the song. ESPN's poppy version. I mean, we're all human. We make mistakes, but I don't know. No, I, I'm, I'm just talking about the song in general. Like, take the video out of it. It's just. It, it's 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 a wants post it's a show it's a, it's a song called one shining moment about like 40 different moments like it's an oxymoron in itself and you pick one no you just play, play a different song there's so many better options that's what friends are for <laughs> <laughs> I, don't, I don't know about retirement there that now you've gone you, you've made the quantum leap here. I just said it was bad this year, and it matched the ma- of the men's basketball tournament. And now you want one shining moment to yes, be done. This is the Jimmy like, Allen like, experience like, like, I cut, signed up for. Like cutting down the nets, you want him to cut one shining moment? Yeah, uh, yeah. There were people that in a in a game that was clearly decided halfway through the second half. There were people that stayed up and they not- kept their kids up on the East Coast to watch one shining moment. <laughs> and now you want to put it in the graveyard? Yep. Holy Two feet moly. in. Bury it six feet under and pile the dirt on top of it. I mean, I get it. In, 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 a, in, in a time where traditions are dying left and right, sometimes it's okay. It's okay to put it, put old Yeller out to pasture behind the woodshed. And that's what I think that's what we need to do with one shiny moment. I'm I'm over it. It's it's you start the game so late, it's 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 not worth it to stay up for nine times out of ten, you're disappointed anyway. The song doesn't give you any hope. It's it reminds me a lot of like the Sarah McLaughlin commercials when the dogs, the dogs? when the dogs have been left out in the wintertime. It's like this is just <laughs> depressing. On here? It's depressing. Okay, let me just diagnose your your thoughts here. This is great. Because Luther and Teddy are gonna be coming to visit you. Um I just wanna I just wanna I, wanna, I, wanna try, I just want to try and figure <laughs> out here. You've now made the jump to just getting rid of one shining moment. Yes, I made it. I made it last night at four seconds into the video. He told me it this morning within five minutes after we celebrated. OK, we sleeping. So I'm Congrats. just gonna, I'm just going to judge by you saying, you know what? I watch it every year. Highlights, adversity, injured players, missed shots, Tears. championship moments. You're not for that. Then you must not have a beat whoa, whoa, of whoa, your whoa, heart. Whoa, 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 whoa! I'm I'm for the video package. It needs a different song. What? Feel the beat of your heart. Uh, Feel the wind in your face. I it, wind it, beneath my wings. I mean, it's on the same vein though. Like it just doesn't match the intensity of the tournaments played at. And and I get it. It's the supposed, ball is tipped. It's supposed to be this there like you are, <laughs> like pedestal moment. But it just feels like. I don't know. It, it it feels like it's lacking. It, it's not with the times, as as the kids would say. You're all in. You you're, you're fine with that song. You don't think it. You don't think it's kind of had its heyday. What what are you gonna? I, I I'm I'm willing to listen to this. I did not expect this. This is quite the turn. I mean, I, I, like it's like the turn of the guy hit me today in the roundabout. But I don't okay. Ne- I, I, I want to. So I don't necessarily what, have what, a. It should be this or what, that. What, what would you replace? But, what would you replace the song with? I don't know. Like every other video package, like the the video package at the end like of the Bubba World Sparks? Series. I mean, if it's we rocking get that everywhere. Game day song, you could. I will listen. It's 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 one of those things that it just has a really anticlimactic feel to the way that because the tournament's supposed to be exciting. Like we didn't like to your point. We didn't Here's get it this year, booty, but we're supposed to. We're we're supposed to get all these buzzer beaters and these shock moments. That has but nothing to do with the song. Song like this. That has nothing to do it's with like, the song. Like like when 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 old uh, Teddy and Luther were sitting around and they were composing this. I don't think they said, you know what? In the 2024 tournament, it's going to be not a very good tournament. Uh, let's change the song. It's not their fault. I this, think the tournament just wasn't very good this year. And maybe yes. this year is the is the best year for because there weren't that many. So you're ready to moments, retire the song? Yeah, I'm just out on the song. I'm fine with the video package. I just I think it should have more of an upbeat finality feeling to it, not a please donate your money so these starving dogs don't have to suffer anymore feel to it. Wow. But you should still do that. Donate your money to the starving dogs. It's fine. Is, that's not a metaphor. That's for the dogs, and you weren't calling the college basketball players starving dogs. No, I was not. No, because I was a DJ Burns. He ain't starving. Wake up choosing violence today. I just, I, I'm just over it. I, I think it's one of those things that sometimes change is good. And I think one shining moment has had its place in history. I think it's time to turn the page and move on past 1974. <laughs> I don't, I don't remember what NBC played at 1974 when the tournament ended. Probably was less depressing than one shining moment. <laughs> Been around since 1987. <laughs>
Same thing. <laughs> it happened before I was born. It was 100 years ago. Sometimes it's bad. You don't have to retire it. That's true. I mean, when your blind Ooh. dog is bad, do you like <sighs> ship him off? I got to take him to the vet today. He's uh, We think he's got glaucoma. Is he named Paul? Fred. His name's Fred? His name is Fred. Fred. It's awesome. Fred hey. the dog. You you might you might be able to save yourself here because I I'm just like stunned on we're we're getting rid of one shining moment after a bad tournament, um, <laughs> after the John Calipari dog walking <laughs> yesterday, I am I, now I'm not I I love dogs but I I do not own a dog, um just because of my current situation I wouldn't it wouldn't be fair to the dog to live with me, <laughs> is because I had it all planned uh, like. It, in a real world where I was at home more, um, I would get two uh, bulldogs, and they would be uh, meatballs and applesauce. Because <laughs> well, why would awesome. they be? Because um, those are great names for bulldogs. Yeah. But I'm always amused by people that name their dog normal people names. Like you have a dog named Fred. Yep. John Calipari has a dog named Paul. I'm I'm amused by that. I think that's fascinating. That's why that's actually, Paul that's actually why we named him Fred. I was like, let's just pick the most normal human name we can. See, I think that's that's I thought you named that's, after that's, Fred that's, very, that's very interesting to me. When we got him before we before Fred Hoiberg got hired too, by the way. So that's not why. Fred has some issues. Yeah, now he's got a lot of them. Poor guy. Did he do okay yesterday? No, like he's got like a bulging eye. Like it just started happening yesterday. Like we we got to get him in today and it's and you, and you thought the eclipse wasn't going to be inter interesting. Yeah. <laughs> no, thankfully he was inside for that, and that didn't cause it. It's just, yeah, I, I think we're hitting a point where we knew he was going to have some serious medical issues, and I think, unfortunately, we're getting to that point. So. Ooh, no, that now that's not what we wanted. Yeah. More, more, more l less about the demise of Fred and yeah. more on your hate for one shining moment. Yeah. Yes, the yeah. demise of one shining uh, moment. Yeah, yeah, we're here to kill something else today. All right. Um... <laughs> wow. Wow, that's so good. I wish I had said it. Yeah. You're not the only one that thinks it's awful, by the way. Our friend Thomas, who emails from time to time, I just, agrees. I don't understand why people like it. I really don't. Like, I get it, it's strictly nostalgia. Like, you, you either have nostalgia feeling for it or you hate it. Like, I think I don't think there's any in between. All right. Uh, TL3 says, stop acting that Jimmy is the only one with that take. The song is outdated, awful. It works better as a lullaby. <laughs> what? Thank you. Thank you. And it's one of those things like you're not driving down the street to one shiny moment. You know what I mean? <laughs> like, the only time you're hearing that song is in that moment for a reason. It's not intended to uh, like pop in the car and drive. It's emotional. Yeah. It's the feel. It's the love. Have you ever not, listened to that? The Barbie have song? you listen ever to listened words? to that song outside of the NCAA tournament? Yes. Yes. Drunk at 2.30 in the morning. I don't believe either of you. When I get ready oh. for the start of the season in November. When I used to have a social okay. life in college, we'd get back and we'd end up playing. Uh, Lego Maniac back. says, uh, "Get rid of that lame ass song." There's uh, that's something my grandparents my, would my have man. listened to. Three, Jimmy. That's like five. About this. I would just like to point out the listeners of sixteen twenty. The zone have great takes. It's unbiased opinion. <laughs> it, it's too bad a fill in host doesn't have uh, takes that I was uh, waiting you know, for. I said, equal I, to him. I teed him up for that. That's on me. I forty three <laughs> past the hour. Wow. It like all out on congratulations one everybody moment. we did it one shiny moment is dead thank you thank you for listening this morning damn juan gary gets his first appearance it's not even in the ncaa tournament <laughs> and you're ready to kill the thing dead gone 86th you have no emotion you have no heart <sighs> i really wanted purdue to win last night <laughs> so best purdue pete best player versus best team worst mascot uh, Providence might be on line one. Pistol Pete wants to uh, enter the chat. Uh, too. You can uh, join the conversation. Not sure where this is going to go today uh, because we're going to talk about mullets and uh, dogs named Paul a little bit later. Uh, the Zone Hotline, which you can get in touch with us, 402 951 1620, is brought to you by 42 Degrees, the source by your mom's house. Where you are. Uh, you can also <laughs> email us karaoke again today? into uh, the Equitable Bank inbox. Uh, where they take banking personally to find locations throughout the uh, metro area. Gary at 1620thezone.com. You're running for your life. <laughs> Equitable Bank can be there. You're a shooting star. You've got a Twitter account. You can tweet the show on the JTech Construction Zone Twitter feed. 
And but now it shows at Gary Sharp 1620. At Jimmy Allen 1620. And I'm sorry for doing this all to you all. <laughs> but time is short and the road is long. In blinking of an eye, we'll be right back with more of Mornings with Sharp and Hanley on 1620 <laughs> the Zone. Mornings with Sharp and Hanley on 1620 the Zone and 1620 thezone.com with Gary Sharp and Nick Hanley. most listened to all sports radio station again and again and again 1620 the zone get more with murphy tractor each of our 29 locations offers new used and rental john deere construction equipment an extensive parts inventory as well as other complimentary products we also have a full team of capstone certified technicians with field service capabilities Let Murphy Tractor be your first choice for your construction equipment needs. Visit us online at murphytractor.com. Is reviewing life insurance on your to-do list? Now's the perfect time to add it. A friend recently told me that securing life insurance sooner rather than later can help you lock in lower rates for years to come. So I bumped this up on my list and got it done. I called SelectQuote and couldn't believe how easy and affordable life insurance is. I'm 40 and got a $500,000 policy for $16 a month. My husband's also 40 and his $500,000 policy was only $18 a month. Plus with SelectQuote's same day coverage, there was no medical exam required and we were covered by the time we hung up. Knowing I have this checked off my list feels amazing, but the peace of mind knowing my family is protected feels even better. Call Select Quote at 1 800 670 5151. That's 1 800 670 5151. Or go to selectquote.com to get your free quote today. 1 800 670 5151. Details on example rate at selectquote.com. Don't miss this week's zone deal. This week's half off deal is Cops. Receive two $25 gift vouchers for just $25. Cops makes delicious pizza, fresh salads, and tasty charred wings. For the basic menu, click copspizza.com. And for the extended menu, visit them at Shadow Lake Town Center, 180th and Center, and the newly reopened 72nd and Jones locations. Zone deals go fast. 9 a.m. Friday, 1620thezone.com. The Zone Inbox is brought to you by Equitable Bank. We take banking personally. Email me, Connor Happer, with the Connor Happer Show at Connor, C-O-N-N-O-R, at 1620thezone.com. Send me your love, your hate, and maybe a few hot takes. The Zone Inbox, presented by Equitable Bank. Without the ones like you, who work tirelessly to keep things running, everything would suddenly stop. Hospitals, factories, schools, and power plants, they all depend on you. No matter the weather, emergency, or time of day, you're the ones who get it done. At Granger, we're here for you with professional grade industrial supplies. Count on real time product availability and fast delivery. Call clickgranger.com or just stop by. Granger for the ones who get it done. Omaha Kings FC, Omaha's professional Major League Indoor Soccer Team, welcomes the 2024 MLIS League Finals to Omaha's Baxter Arena. Join the Omaha Kings and MLIS this Friday, April 12th, with two back-to-back semifinal matches, but only one ticket needed for both games. The first match is scheduled for 5 p.m. Then there's the championship match on Sunday, April 14th at 2 o'clock. Tickets at Ticketmaster.com, the Baxter Arena box office, or by calling 402-554-MASS. Get your tickets now. Hey, baseball fans, join the Blur Tailgate at Hilton Omaha this June for our 12th annual hospitality event during the College Baseball Championship Series. Book an experience for your clients or employees with an inclusive bar, buffet, TVs, music, and tailgate games. Secure your spot today and let Blur Events take care of all the work so you can enjoy the day. Plus, we're just steps away from Charles Schwab Field. Visit BlurEvents.com to book your group, buy tickets, or learn about sponsorships. That's BlurEvents.com, your college baseball and football tailgate destination. And we're back. Mornings with Sharp and Handy. Here's Gary, Nick, and Jimmy on 1620 The Zone. I still can't get over that Juwan Gary was in one shining moment, <laughs> and it's not even an NCAA tournament game. You would think that like there would be an editing team that would figure that out. I hey, mean, Nebraska were white for the I mean, first just time. I mean, this used twice. He cried in a game. And that's the scene that didn't make it. We were like, that's a certain. It was a good cry. Yeah, it 
probably should have been a lock for that video. Uh, all right. Welcome back in uh, 6.50 on a uh, Tuesday morning. Sam McEwen coming up in the uh, next uh, hour. The one thing, uh, the discourse that will happen now around UConn, uh, they got six titles in the last 25 years. Uh, they are a blue blood. They are a fantastic program. They show no signs of slowing down. That is their sport. They are all in. And credit to them. I'm not conference cheering guy. Once you get to the tournament, you're on your own. But, Thank you. But four in the Big East, which has got four of the last eight titles. Is that right? Villanova yeah. got two yep. and, and UConn has gotten there too. Is you are doing it in an era of football money where you have a football program, but it is not in a power five football conference or now a power four football conference. You're able to do that without that huge cha-ching. But this, what, this is what it does for the Big East because it actually is, for UConn and the Big East, I think, Jimmy, the timing is right because they're in negotiations for their TV deal. You already know that Fox loves themselves some Big East basketball. Right. And you got, you got UConn, major brand. Villanova, quality brand. St. John's could add to that. You never know what's going to happen at Georgetown. You got Creighton in the league, um, but they focus so much on the East Coast. But what a time to be in charge of the Big East and negotiating your TV deal. Well, you left that Marquette you're... there, and, and Shaka Smart and the personality that comes along. You got you have the personalities in the head coaching positions in the Big East right now that can kind of pull the wagon and 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 be your negotiating tool. Because a, well, you a, a have... the basketball is really good, but b you have to have the brand you like got the, the, the brand the. Coaches are coaches are the stars in, in men's college basketball these days, but the brand is what I'm selling. I'm selling UConn. I'm selling uh, Villanova. I'm selling, hey, St. John's could be this. Hey, Georgetown's going to be back. But you're in a good position to say, give us what we want. Or does ESPN even, even have a chance of getting involved? Because Fox would be crazy to let the Big East leave. But would, but ESP, would, e would ESPN... I mean, we love the East Coast. Mm -hmm. Would ESPN say, uh, hold on here, we'd like to talk to you. Now, I'll go a step further. I don't think this would happen because I think UConn, finally, after being a nomad from the earlier Big East, has a perfect fit and a perfect home in this Big East. What if you were a conference like the Big 12, which uh -huh. you've done before and it's been rumored? They you, say, around. you say, hey, we'd love to have your basketball. You kind of You don't want to ignore football, right? We we could put you in a spot with football. I, I you, you, and everything. UConn UConn is is ideal where they're at. But I mean, if you're if you're a a gunslinging Big Twelve commissioner, and you've been attached to that kind of a a move before, and that part wouldn't you country? revisit it again? And and I you, find out how to make one you bring money? you bring up the ESPN thing real quick. We know how petty rich people can be. Do you think there's any part of the brass? at ESPN that is really irritated that they've got a defending national champion two years in a row right in their backyard that they can't showcase their mm -hmm. games. I'm sure that sticks in the craw of the people up in, in Connecticut a little bit. It's a big Monday, 6 o'clock. <clears throat> sure would look good with some Big East basketball on it. Yeah, I, uh, but I, if 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 I'm the Big 12, because, I, I mean, if you're UConn, you have to listen to some degree too because there's probably got to be some part of your university that is a little upset that the football team doesn't get the shine of the rub that you're seeing and the, the dollars that you're seeing these other teams get. I mean, I'd pick up the I'd pick up the phone, I'd listen. Yeah. And then be like, mm, you know what? We like where we're at. Yeah. And we are we thing. are come back with a no bigger number we, and we'll talk. Have you not seen that. when we play down in the city? Mm -hmm. Not seen Madison Square Garden. Have you not seen that we like playing teams that are near us, that we have these rivalries that are rekindled again? But and people in Lubbock? I mean, Big, Big East is in a in a really good spot here to negotiate for some more money because I, I I just don't I don't think Fox would want to let them go. It would be a mistake. It's there's, it's basically it the staple of their FS1 mm -hmm. winner broadcasting is now, Big East athletes. I think with ESPN, ESPN's all football, all football, women's basketball. Yeah, like you look at men's college basketball. As long as they continue to to employ Seth Greenberg, I got nothing for him. Seth Greenberg carries John Calipari's <laughs> water. It's it, it, he was just. He just he hurt himself last night being on the air talking about Calipari um, at nauseum. <laughs> but I don't I don't think he like ESPN football. We're going to see this in the fall. Even 
even more so this year, it'll be the SEC versus the Big Ten. I mean, it'll be ESPN and the SEC, Big Ten and Fox. I mean, yeah, more it's more than in that seen. direction. So I don't think ESPN is as all in on college basketball as they used to be, which is unfortunate. They still still have some good properties, but they just went a whole year without having Big East or Big Ten. And and they got away with not really talking about them on Sports Center, which I mean, if, if UConn is not doing what they they're doing, uh, does the Big East make Sports Center very often? No, if you if you still watch Sports Center, but the, the Big East in a good spot here with UConn and and a good league where they've been the best college basketball league on the men's side for two straight years and only got three to, teams in the tournament this year to say hey, can we have some more money? Now that's where. The UConn Marquette Creighton effect. What does that do to Seton Hall? Georgetown, you would think, is going to turn the corner. Uh, DePaul might have a pulse with Chris Holtman. Um, Providence with Kim English is going to be in a good spot. They're going to Se- be really good. Next Seton year. Hall. Seton Hall is they they got themselves a coach, so the league is in a really good spot. Um, and UConn's going to force everybody to be better, but also. Hey, we're not in a football league, and there's a couple of you schools that do not have football, and you're all in on men's basketball. We can do this in a football dominated college world. Well, yeah. And, and I think another thing to point out, you bring up Seton Hall, the Big East won the national championship and the NIT, by the way. <laughs> like, it's it, they've, they've got two titles despite the snubbing that they got when it came to tournament. Seton time. Hall have a parade. Did I hear they were supposed they to did. have a parade. They had a, they had a parade yesterday. I mean, even Nebraska didn't have a parade in the '90s when they were winning the NIT championship. They just put <laughs> they just put a, uh, another apple up in the orchard at the Devaney Center. Hey, championships are championships. Got to celebrate something. I mean, they should have been in the tournament. Ah, uh, well, maybe not then. I, man, no, I, they they should have been in over Virginia, not Indiana State. Seton Hall should have yeah. been into the field of '68. That's I was I was about to have that debate in my head, and then I thought about it, and yeah, they probably should have been in one of the playing situations. They're they're really good, and, and they they kind of got stifled at the beginning of the season, but they get, they really turned it on at the end. All right, uh, the uh, way too early uh, top twenty fives for college basketball on the mid side are out, and things are things are going to change. Uh, but if you dabble in them, USA Today has Creighton seventh next year. But they have Alexander and Kalkbrenner coming back. Uh, that would make a big difference. John Fanta, I think, had him 16. I uh, saw the Athletic. I don't think the Athletic has. Well, the Athletic might have him like 20th. But everything is predicated on Kalkbrenner and Alexander. But USA Today, just, just doing that nobody's going to leave, which these polls are. I look at them, but. Until they say they're gone. Um, they're technically still there. Uh, number uh, seven in the country in uh, pre-season. Uh, Big East will be about the same next year. Uh, the Big Ten will be about the same, the same huge. But watch for Rutgers with the addition of two five-star players. Yeah, that they, yeah. <laughs> they could be. They could be one of the more interesting teams in college basketball next year with their incredible recruiting class. Really good head coach, Jersey Mike's money. I mean, could 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 Rutgers could Rutgers make a little noise next year in the Big Ten with with Edie gone? I'm trying to think of. The, the power structure, the way that conference is going to look. And obviously, we got to see how things shake out, but kind of looks so wide open from the outside. Looking Michigan in. State should be better. Yeah. They, Purdue, Purdue won't have a seven foot four giant. But Matt Painter's. But they, the they still have some key returnees that I think will stay. Um, and they have a good recruiting class. So the problem with the Big Ten, it's the same teams over and over and over at the top. And the, the wild thing about the Big Ten not winning a title now. What are we, 24 years? Yep. They've had seven different teams give a crack at it in the Good final. Good teams, too. And haven't been able to get a title. Ten, ten total, though, right? Seven different teams, ten total times. Right? Is that correct, I think? I thought I saw it was they were 0 for 10 in their last 10 tries. I think it's 10 teams over 10 tries. Uh, when Michigan State was winning or in 17. 2000, I thought of the Big Ten as a basketball conference. I don't think that yeah. the Big Ten is a basketball conference anymore. Is that pivoted in line? It feels like that was like a four years ago thing. It's like kind of when that derivative it happened, was an, right? It was when Urban Meyer came to Columbus. Yeah. <laughs> and, and, and the Big Ten became a all-in football conference that plays a little college basketball. Which is crazy because they've got some really good teams. Like this this year's Illinois team was fantastic. Obviously, the P- Purdue was the runner-up. And you really had a 
mean, Big the, Ten basketball was always must watch growing it, up. It was like kind of yeah. a late season surge where the teams got better as the season went along too. And I think Nebraska falls into that category. And you've got some personalities at coaches. I, I really think there needs to be a focus from this conference going forward on on men's basketball. I really do because you 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 have way too much star power. You've got way too much money to kind of play second or even third fiddle as a conference in college basketball. I don't know, man. I'm, I'm, I am, I like my, my bread, usually wheat, and I like it buttered. Football is your, your money maker. Football, football, football. And if you have 12 spots for me, can I have four of them? That, 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 that's where I'm going. Because look at the four that are joining the Big 18. Yeah. They're not, what are they, are they going to do more for you on the football side or the bas- men's basketball side? UCLA, mm. USC, Oregon, Washington. More for you with football or more for you with basketball? Oh, hold on. That. Well, yeah. we, we got an update with Jimmy. Think about that for a moment. But I, Big Ten to me is football. And whenever, when Urban Meyer showed up in Columbus and said, this is the way we're going to do it, I, for, for a decade plus now, it has been a football conference that plays good college basketball, but it is football, 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 and some quality women's Olympic sports. All right, update with uh, Jimmy Chavez coming up. Sam McKeel to the bottom of the hour. Uh, we'll see who he thinks is blue bloods right now in college men's basketball. That fraternity has it grown? That's always an has argument. it shrunk? Yeah, because UConn is there. UConn is a blue blood. Yeah, six titles of six titles. Period. Right. Sammy Mack coming up at the uh, bottom of the hour. Update with Jimmy uh, coming up uh, next. Good day for baseball in this town, by the way. Uh, it's Mornings with Sharp and Hanley. Jimmy Allen sitting in today on 1620 The Zone. Mornings with Sharp and Hanley on 1620 The Zone and 1620TheZone.com. Live from the Host Coffee Studio, this is 1620 The Zone. 1620 The Zone. Traffic. From the Pyramid Roofing, time-saving traffic center. If you are traveling I-80 eastbound, an accident has been reported approaching Highway 370 exit 439. This accident has the left shoulder blocked currently. If you will be in this area soon, it is best to stay right. No other accidents, obstructions, or slow-moving traffic at this time. Just remember, stay safe and wear that seatbelt. I'm Peter Krenzer. This time-saving traffic is brought to you by Saul's Jewelry and Loan. I have never seen this before. Hi, John with Saul's Jewelry and Loan. The price of gold is the highest it's ever been. Now is the time to get the best price on your broken jewelry, chains, and diamond jewelry. Saul's has been around a while, and trust us, now's the time. Saul's Jewelry and Loan. Are Nebraska craft beers and ciders important to you? Whether you just love Nebraska brewed beers and ciders or you're a full-fledged craft brewery, there are benefits to membership for anyone with the Nebraska Craft Brewers Guild. Their sole mission is to foster and help grow the Nebraska-centric brewing community. Become a member today at Nebraska.beer and help advance the craft beer and cider industry in the state of Nebraska. Find out more about the Nebraska Craft Brewers Guild at Nebraska.beer. Watching a ball game at Oscars Pizza and Sports Grill is pretty awesome. Oscars offers the MLB package, so your team is always on their upgraded audio video system, and nothing is better than watching the game with a cold, frosty one, Oscars Pizza, or award-winning char-buffed wings. And with daily lunch and dinner specials, it's really a no-brainer. So get ready to watch your favorite team play ball at Oscars Pizza and Sports Grill, 173rd and West Center Road, and takeout at 162nd in Maple. Temperatures are warm, and Omaha Maverick baseball is hot. The Mavericks have won their last two conference series and lead the Summit League in conference wins. Tonight, the Mavs take on crosstown rival Creighton at Tal Anderson Field. Don't miss this classic matchup. It's $2 Tuesdays when all Pepsi products and Bush Light cans are $2 when gates open until the third inning. And this weekend, Maverick baseball plays South Dakota State. Get your tickets for all four games by calling 402-554-MAVS or by going to omavs.com slash ticks. Prescriptions require an online consultation with a healthcare provider who will determine if appropriate restrictions apply. See website for details and important safety information. Subscription required. Price varies based on product and subscription plan. Hey guys, did you know there's a generic form of Viagra that works just the same, but is 95% cheaper? And you can get it online at hymns.com slash radio. Through Hims, you'll get a free medical consultation to determine the ED medication that's best for you. Discreet shipping if prescribed, a 100% online process, and a range of treatment options, including trusted generic alternatives to the name brands, at up to 95% off. ED is personal, and at Hims, 
so is treating it. Just go to hymns.com slash radio and get connected to a licensed medical provider online for free with zero copay, no expensive appointments, and no awkward face-to-face conversations. To start your free online visit, you need to go to this exclusive address, hymns.com slash radio. That's hymns.com slash radio for your free online visit. H-I-M-S dot com slash R-A-D-I-O. Hi, this is Doug Nodgard with Equitable Bank. Great service never goes out of style. When the digital age dawned, many said computers would be able to handle many of the interactions that used to take a person. Boy, were they wrong. How many times have you called your bank and gotten a recording to press one or two? Not at Equitable. Not only does Equitable answer your call in the first ring, it's answered by a human being. That's because Equitable Bank values its customers. Equitable Bank, we take banking personally, member FDIC. It does not matter that the madness of March is finished because we've got so much going on now in sports. John and Josh here to tell you about the FanDuel Sportsbook. The NBA and NHL are gearing up towards the playoffs. Baseball has just begun. Yes, we've got the UFL and a lot more. And right now, new customers at FanDuel get $150 in bonus bets guaranteed. That's $150, win or lose. You can bet on any of those sports, plus all of the great items available right now. Visit FanDuel.com slash 1620. And, Sean, don't forget about that golf tournament down in Augusta, Georgia, because we have that coming up this weekend as well. Go to FanDuel.com slash 1620 and make your first bet an automatic win. It is 150 bucks. Win or lose in bonus bets at fanduel.com slash 1620. 21 plus and president in Iowa. First online real money wager only. $10 first deposit required. Bonus issued is non withdrawable bonus bets that expire seven days after receipt. See terms at sportsbook.fanduel.com. Gambling problem? Call 1 800 bets off. Tickets for less. Best seats, best prices, no service fees. Shop ticketsforless.com. KOZN Bellevue, Omaha, Council Bluffs. This is 1620 The Zone. Now back to mornings with Sharp and Hamlin on 1620 The Zone. Nebraska ball adds another transfer from North Dakota State. Remember the last time that happened, that worked out okay for them. This one is Andrew Morgan. You know who he is? 6'10", 245-pound big, says that the Nebraska coaching staff sees a skill set similar to rink mass, able to facilitate from the outside and help with spacing. He will replace Josiah Alec and possibly mass should he not return. The former buys and standout credits Sam Greasel among others with selling the Husker program. He averaged 12.9 points and five rebounds per game this past season at NDSU. And Gary, you've actually, I mean, you've seen him more than anybody here. So you know exactly yeah. what Nebraska's getting. They're getting a guy that adds rotational depth. Did you start that with eh? Well, so I don't want, just because he's the first out of the portal, he's a good fit for Nebraska. Yeah, he's not going to be um, the dude. Yeah. Yeah. It's okay to have, it's okay to be excited about a sixth man. I, I, have I don't see him starting a regular starter at Nebraska. He's rotational depth. Uh, I don't know. I, I saw him for three years. He wasn't the best player on North Dakota State's roster. But anytime you get a guy that's six foot ten with a mullet, I think you got to take him. True. Yeah. Speaking of that, whatever happened to Billy Ray Cyrus? His daughter's successful. Man, she's a banger. She's just good music. She, she is on a heater, but what yeah. happened to dad? They have a falling out. He, no, he's being smart and letting his kid live her life. Think he still has the mullet? No, he doesn't. I think uh, he was just at some workshop the other day. How do you go what when when you don't have the mullet, what do you go to? Yeah. Uh, retirement. No, but what does your hairstyle go to? You just go to like a oh, he's just cleaned short. up. Short. Yeah. Like do you part your hair on the side? A little bit like Jimmy Chavez, actually. Very similar. Hmm? I don't know. I think once you've gone mullet, it's tough to go back. Yeah. I mean, I had a mullet. Andrew once, Morgan's but... got. I, I've seen it up close and personal. I'm not going to say it's uh, spectacular, but it is a. It's uh, not Quinn Ewers esque. It is a solid uh, mullet. We'll we'll discuss a little bit later because what's the difference between a mullet and what Mahomes and Raiola have? What it's called a, a faux hawk, right? Faux hawk. Yeah, I think so. Whatever. What happened, I'm not of me. hair. Whatever so. happened to the mohawk? Uh, it's on every eight year old wrestler and. Kids wrestling these days. It and, got canceled. And the rat tail. Why oh, can't we yeah. bring back the rat tail? For several reasons. Please don't do that. <sighs> I mean, take your kids to the mall, put them on a leash, and hopefully they have a rat tail. <laughs> you get a little, they go to the photo booth. 
Uh, Nebraska baseball's Brett Sears named Big Ten Pitcher of the Week. Deserved. He improves to 6-0 and in the season after dealing a two-hit complete game shutout and a 3-0 win against Ohio State Friday. Two hits are the fewest allowed in a complete game by a Nebraska pitcher since Matt Waldron against Michigan State in 2019. The Huskers travel to Kansas. They used to be in the same conference. That's tonight at 6 o'clock. Omaha baseball opens the first half of their eight-game home stand, and I uh, Creighton visits Tal Anderson for the second of three games between the two this season, ending with a three-week set against South Dakota State. Omaha hockey's Brock Bremer is set to return to the Mavericks for a Big fifth news. year. He comes off his best season. He netted eight goals, added 12 helpers for a career-high 20-point campaign. He scored in four of the final five games of the season and recorded his first career four-game goal streak. His goals in games two and three of the NCHC playoffs were both game winners. He's appeared in 123 games in four seasons, totaling 20 goals and 30 assists. The Storm Chasers are back home and open a series with Gwinnett tonight at Werner Park. South Carolina's victory over Caitlin Clark and her teammates uh, in the NCAA championship game on Sunday had a preliminary audience average of 18.7 million on ABC and ESPN. It's amazing what happens when you air games before kids can go to bed. <laughs> the only sporting events in the United States to draw a bigger TV audience since 2019 have been football, the soccer ball, and the Olympics. The audience numbers are expected to increase when Nielsen releases its final numbers today. Nielsen said the audience peaked at 24 million. It's the most watched basketball game since 2019 when Virginia and Texas Tech averaged 19.6 million on CBS. And finally... The Houston Astros scratch Framber Valdez from his scheduled start last night against the Rangers because of left elbow soreness. What else could go wrong for them? New manager Joe Espada said Valdez played catch on Sunday and reported soreness in the elbow. Maybe he shouldn't play catch then. The 30-year-old was sent back to Houston for further evaluation, though Espada added in his pregame media availability that not placing the veteran on the injured list is a sign. The club doesn't believe the injury is serious, whatever you say. The Astros called up right-hander Blair Don't Call Me June Henley from AAA Sugarland to start in place of Valdez. In a 10-5 victory, Henley made his Major League debut at the home of the Rangers just a few miles from his hometown of Fort Worth. But he didn't get out of the first inning. He allowed five runs on four hits with three walks while recording just one out before he was removed. The Astros' bullpen came up, though, and took care of business as they won. Uh, they have some work to do. Uh, thanks for not bringing up uh, what kept me up last night. Uh, one shining moment. Mm-hmm, I mean, mm-hmm, waiting for it to start. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Uh, Cubs blew an 8 nothing lead. Mm-hmm. I, I saw that. Yeah, yeah. bullpen kind of let us down. They had won 234 in a row when leading by eight runs or more until last night in uh, San Diego. So there's only so many things we can get in this thing. Yeah, yeah, yeah there it goes. Just like the newspaper uh, was late. Yeah. Uh, good day of uh, baseball. So uh, Omaha actually plays Gwinnett today at 12.05. Oh, 12.05. Oh, nice. uh, Michael Massey yeah. is on a, a rehab assignment for the uh, Storm Chasers. They play the Gwinnett Stripers, who are the AAA affiliate of the Atlanta Braves. And they have a couple of top prospects on their roster. And then, as Jimmy alluded to, big night over at Tal Anderson. You going to be there? Uh, tonight, no, I will not. Be a nice night. Beautiful night. 68 degrees uh, for a first pitch between Omaha and Creighton at Tal Anderson. The Northeast wind night, too. The guy on the PA will be the best PA announcer you've ever heard. You guys got Lawrence Tanter from the Lakers to come? Connor Happer's going to be there? <laughs> Gene Honda. <laughs> yes. Yeah. Gene Honda will be there tonight. Congrats on the get. Yes. Yeah. Um. I am looking forward yeah. to this game because the last time they played a couple of weeks ago, we had 14 different pitchers pitched in a midweek game between Omaha and Creighton. Uh, hopefully you get less. less than half that tonight. <laughs> that's a that's big, a long night, folks. Big stretch for the uh, Mavs. They're back home, uh, and they, they're playing better baseball. Yeah. Uh, they got off to a, a rocky start, um, and you know how Creighton's playing. They're 24-5. and five. So hopefully we'll see a lot of people at Tal Anderson tonight. I think that'll be a good crowd. Mm-hmm. Weather's warm. People want to get out. A PA guy will be great. I have yet to catch. You come to the game. I might give you a shout out. Omaha game. Hey, the weather park. Hey, Steve over in 111. How you doing? Gives you a wave. Throws you a hot dog to the booth. Thanks, Steve. I'm very humorous. I got some new things this year. If you haven't been to a game yet. Have you ever been booed as a PA guy? Uh, no. No. I've only uh, been scolded once. I was a fill-in guy at the Devaney Center for a Nebraska men's game. <laughs> and uh, you weren't supposed to say that a play was under review. I did, and I got hollered at. I got scolded. As Quinn the... Snyder was hollering at the scores table. I got scolded at the Sweet 16, so it's okay. Or on the PA? No. Just... Oh. oh. 
Apparently, my behavior at the table is unbecoming of me. Were you shirtless? Those pants. Were you taking John's uh, headset? What exactly I, uh, were you doing? I believe the person next to me started clapping, and I think I and then, and then somebody said that I was celebrating for Creighton, and I got talked to. Did you say? But he's the voice of the program. Hold yeah. on, come on. Was the person next to you clapping? Yeah, it was Alex. <laughs> It's fine. Wow. <laughs> it's fine. Beep, 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 beep. How did poor Alex on the radio? Damn, I, I like now Alex. I feel bad for Alex. I'll put him in one shining moment there and make go. him feel better. <laughs> That's what we should have done. Three minutes of Alex. Okay. It's all good. Did you just tell him he's cheering because they just refilled the coffee in the media room because <laughs> of a late tip? Uh, trust me, we needed it too. It was a long night. Uh, one other uh, note. So the uh, wing bracket. Mm-hmm. Yeah, uh, put yes. together by Sarah Baker Hansen. She'll be here on Thursday. Is over, and we have a winner, and it is a friend of the show. Uh, Oscars beat out tracks right. for the best wing in Nebraska or in Omaha by two votes. Yeah, it was close. So for everybody that voted, uh, that participated, that patronized some new places that specialize in wings, uh, thank you. Uh, so we'll have SBH coming up on uh, Thursday, but Oscars won. They won by two votes. If she ever does like a uh, bracket for appetizers, Oscars has got a shot at that too because she uh, or they they have probably the best spinach artichoke dip I've ever I've ever had. Uh, I'm not. Uh, that is not my go to, but I'm not opposed to listening to another bad take by you. They uh, they have uh, they they do it with the rye bread too instead of chips. Ooh, it's fantastic, okay. yeah. Now I can see uh, that, that, that's a difference maker. Because I'm I'm not a big rye bread fan either, and yeah. I tried that for the first time with the spinach artichoke dip. Game changer. Game changer. Uh, a couple emails here in the Equitable Bank uh, inbox. Uh, this is from Chris. For most of my life, when anyone said UConn, I have thought women's basketball. Given the back-to-back men's point. titles, coupled with the women's last title being back in 2006, has that now changed? Four in a row is still four in a row, and the women won six out of eight in a period at one point, but 2016 was a few minutes ago. Which program is the flagship program now? It's the men. It's got to be, right? Back-to-back national championships. You've won six in 25 years. Six, I look at their six, coach on TV. Six no sleep. in uh, 25 uh, years. Uh, John writes in. Hi, John. You ready for this? I'm ready. Um, an amazing thing happened while I was driving to work listening to the show this morning. <laughs> he uh, blow through a roundabout and about takes somebody out about six and third and center. What if that guy's a listener and he's just heard me calling him out time after time? That was him. I love his show. Man, I was going to plow into that Buick. Um, (laughs) For the very first time since Jimmy Allen first started on 1620 The Zone (laughs) Airwaves, he had a take that I agreed with. One shining moment needs to go. And I don't even watch the tournament. Okay, you've just disqualified yourself. Yeah, I just get annoyed with everyone talking about it the next day. What was this guy's name? His name is John. John, to, to have John's it. To, been, John's here's the been thing with about us since takes. day one. Love me some John. You have He's to the actually engineer. watch the sport to have it. <laughs> He's the engineer. <laughs> uh, it really surprises me they haven't, it, and, and maybe it's because they're afraid of the backlash, that they haven't entertained trying something else. Because we've seen entities do that, right? Like they have this tradition, they get away from it, and then there's this backlash, and they just go back to it. That's right. the thing. It was called you ESPN can, on ABC. They got rid of a lot right. of tradition. Uh, you can... <laughs> you, you can you can always go back to it and like give something else a shot. No, you can't go back to one shining moment. If you're going to get rid of it, <laughs> yeah. you can't go back. You've to spoken. It. Yeah. Here it is. That's a you were on a roll there for a moment. Maybe just was, maybe just stop. We're but, sorry about Dua Lipa last year. Yeah. <laughs> I listen, I, I hope they go away from it and never go back to it. But uh, John writes in. You uh, can. Jimmy is right. Just get rid of the song. While you're at it, get rid of Riggles, Fenway. <laughs> Fenway, it's grandpa stuff. Need new. Might as well get rid of o- Rosenblatt, too. Oh, wait, we did that. And nobody misses it. Wait. So he's pro Jimmy? or Yeah. I, 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 I didn't because Because I was thinking you're getting then, quite the yeah. response here in your favor. There's, a, there's some sarcasm. Okay. And then John said, I love the show. Thanks, John. All right. Uh, here is uh, Random Mike. Hey, Mike. What's on your mind, Mike? I, I just have to give a shout out to that caller you had. Uh, in fact, I think Jimmy made a special mention of her in the uh, replay. Uh, uh, at the end there, of yesterday's uh, show. Yeah. What, what was your take on her call? Uh, I she prefaced it with uh, I'm a Nebraska volleyball fan and very disappointed in Harper Murray. And uh, 
I thought it was very sensible. We're all human. We make mistakes. We have to learn from our mistakes. No, I, I, I didn't have anything wrong with her phone call. I thought it was spot on. No, yeah, I did too. And, uh, and even talking about Caitlin Clark, uh, uh, I, uh, <laughs> I mean, it's quite remarkable what she's done, obviously. And, uh, and I was rooting for Iowa. Uh, and her, uh, you know, doesn't mean I like everything about her, but uh, uh, what she's done is incredible. But, uh, but that caller at first, uh, I thought it was a little boy. Did you think so? No, <laughs> no, that was a, that was a woman, Mike. Okay. I, 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 did not, I did not. I did not think she was a a, a male. I thought it sounded like a little boy. I thought, okay, what's the little kid have to say? And then it turned out she said she played like forty years ago. I believe so. Yeah, it sounds about right. Yeah. But I thought I thought it was fantastic, Colin. and I like the fact that you let her have her say, and uh, and I think she is a, a Nebraska fan and an Iowa fan. Uh, she's a Nebraska volleyball season ticket holder and is a a fan of Iowa women's basketball. Watching them play the last couple of years, and, and what you said about the DWI, uh, you know, like uh, I thought it was right on target that if you're unfortunate enough to be on the road or anywhere near somebody that's driving intoxicated. Uh, you know, these are life changing experiences. I mean, it's. Uh, I mean, the, the thing about the thing about the DWI is there's such a difference in what your intent as somebody who's driving under the influence and and what you're actually doing and the consequences that it has. Uh, and I just thought it was a, a remarkable call. And I like the fact that you guys uh, uh, let her have her say. But uh, I, I, I got one question about, you were talking about uh, uh, rotational depth with this new recruit. Mm -hmm. The bench points in that championship game between Iowa and South Carolina, what was the difference? Uh, was it was a 37 nothing? 38, 37, yeah, something like that. Yeah. I mean, isn't that incredible? Yeah. I, I mean, if you're a coach, and you let that happen. And I was thinking of Creighton, you know, in the, in the situation they've had. How important is it when you've got great players to to not play them, you know, all 40 minutes or whatever uh, and, and get some fresh yeah. people in there? Yeah, I mean, it's important. Some are some are better built. Like, I mean, Zach Eady's stamina at seven foot four, 300 pounds is pretty impressive. But, in, in, you know, and, and there are guys on Creighton's roster this year, they had a short bench that could play 35, 38 minutes. The thing with Nebraska with Andrew Morgan, when I say rotational depth, is Rink Mass can't play north of 30 minutes a game. He's got a he's got a bum knee. He may have to have surgery actually in the offseason on that. That's still up in the air. But is if he coming he, back? I think he is. But he's he's got some interest from uh, back home to play internationally. I, I think he sure. he's got to he's got to figure out that knee. But if Rink Mast is not being forced to play mid 30 minutes next year. I think that's very valuable to Nebraska. Hey, let me ask you this. I know you're a Rezac guy. How do you think he does at the Notre Dame? Uh, which one? <laughs> the Ted, quarterback. The Anthony? Yeah. Um, I think he will be a really good teammate, and he will work hard, and maybe if something happens and he's able to develop, he'll get onto the field. But he'll get onto the field originally as a holder. Yeah, I can. wouldn't be surprised. They open at Texas A&M. I wouldn't be surprised if uh, – the first Rezac on the field for Notre Dame is Anthony, not Teddy, as a holder. Which is Did you want them both wait, to be at Nebraska? Uh, I would it would have been nice. I think they're I think they're exceptionally on and off the field. Yeah, they're great but, locker room dudes. But they're uh it's a it's a fit at Notre Dame, and that was a that was a dream scenario for them, for that family to get the opportunity to send two boys to Notre Dame. Yeah, dad hey. dad's out there this weekend and going to Nashville afterwards too. Mike, uh, thanks for the call. And uh, by the way, uh, their older brother, Dom, has been moved back to running back at Vanderbilt. Nice. All right, 23 past the hour. Sam McEwen is uh, coming up uh, next. Sam loves, loves him some one shining moment. Can I, can I throw something out there? He brought up South Carolina's bench points. Like, and, and, and everybody, always, and like, obviously, that was Creighton's Achilles no. heel all this week. But listen, Tessa, jo like, Tessa Johnson is, you, you don't have somebody like that on a lot of different rosters where you have a freshman that's going to be an impact player for you later coming off as your seventh or eighth person off your bench very often. So I think it's one of those things that people, people bring up how good South Carolina's bench was uh, in that championship game. They have a very unique situation. Well, it's also very unique this year. It has nothing to do with one shining moment is that <laughs> in the men's and women's, we had a clear cut favorite that won the national title. Right. Yeah. And they did it with depth and overall talent. Those are what won. 
I think Cinderella might be dead in college athletics. Discuss among yourselves. 402-951-1620. Think about it. The year of championships this year is Cinderella dead. All four ones, all four twos made the Sweet 16. Don't get it. Don't get confused with, you know, the Wizard of Oz and Cinderella. They're not the same. But is Cinderella dead? I don't know. Might be a discussion to have down the road. Uh, we'll have a discussion with uh, Sam McEwen. That is uh, coming up next. It's mornings with Sharp and Hanley. And uh, a big fan of uh, One Shining Moment. Jimmy Allen. We all make bad decisions. Um, we, we do. We just, uh, <laughs> I don't know, that's a bad decision. It's just a very interesting moment in your life. Oh, I was talking about Sam being a fan of One oh, Shining Moment. Oh, gotcha, gotcha. 1620 The Zone. All right. We are, the weather is warming up. You know, there are people that are just itching to get out on the golf course, to get outside, to do things out in the community. There are outdoor events that are happening this weekend, and you want to look your best. People say to me, man, your fit is rad. How? And I say, because my friends over at Lindley Clothing at 132nd and West Dodge in the Linden Market, John and Marlene and the entire staff, they are taking care of me. I've needed some sportswear of late, have gone in there, and even better. Right now, the spring sale is going on, and you got 15% off sportswear. At Lindley Clothing and Well Suited, which is an absolute game changer. So there's a lot of stuff going on. So you got sportswear, you got the best clothing from Bugatti to Samuelson to Peter Millar. No, that's not your fantasy baseball lineup. That is suits that will get you looking right to go to the prom or graduation. Don't rent a suit. Heck, buy a suit at an affordable price right now at Lindley Clothing and Well Suited and take advantage right now of their spring sale that is going on. We are right in the middle of the spring sale, it's the final week. Go to Lindley Clothing, 132nd and West Dodge in the Linden Market, and then slide all over and see Well Suited right next door. It is a game changer. Lindley Clothing and Well Suited. Gary Sharp, Nick Hanley, and Jimmy Chavez. Mornings with Sharp and Hanley. Weekday 6 to 10. On 1620 The Zone. And 1620TheZone.com. The Connor Happer Show. Basketball is better than football. It's time to finally admit it to ourselves. The state has brainwashed you for years and years and years. Football this, football this. We have to talk about all these football topics. Who's going to be the fourth string running back this year? I'll never know. Does it matter? No, it doesn't. You ever notice how we're so happy right now and we haven't talked about football in weeks, Josh? Weeks. The Connor Happer Show, weekdays from 10 to 2 on 1620 The Zone. Your Omaha area forecast from a Godfather's Pizza Weather Center and KETV News Watch 7 on 1620 The Zone. A beautiful spring day on the way Tuesday. Expect mostly sunny skies, wind out of the west, just 5 to 15 miles per hour with highs in the upper 60s. I'm meteorologist Sean Everson from KETV News Watch 7. 1620 The Zone Traffic From the Pyramid Roofing Time Saving Traffic Center The earlier accident I-80 eastbound Approaching Highway 370 Exit 439 has been cleared Left shoulder should be good to go there No new accidents, slow moving traffic Or any obstructions to report Traffic should pick up here pretty soon But for now the road's looking good Just remember stay safe and wear that seatbelt I'm Peter Krenzer. This time-saving traffic was brought to you by Zoom Drain. Zoom Drain's highly trained team of experts and our fleet of well-equipped service trucks are dedicated to providing solutions for homeowners, plumbing contractors, mechanical contractors, and business owners across many industries. Contact Zoom Drain anytime by logging on to zoomdrain.com. Watching a ball game at Oscar's Pizza and Sports Grill is pretty awesome. Oscar's offers the MLB package, so your team is always on their upgraded audio video system, and nothing is better than watching the game with a cold, frosty one, Oscar's Pizza, or award-winning char-buffed wings. And with daily lunch and dinner specials, it's really a no-brainer. So get ready to watch your favorite team play ball at Oscar's Pizza and Sports Grill, 173rd and West Center Road, and takeout at 162nd in Maple. Get the one and done you want for your dog's monthly protection. NextGuard Plus, a Foxhole Honor Moxie Dectin and Pyrantal Chewable Tablets. Protects against fleas, ticks, heartworm disease, roundworms, and hookworms. All in one delicious beef-flavored soft chew. Use with caution in dogs with a history of seizures or neurologic disorders. Dogs should be tested for existing heartworm infection prior to starting a preventive. Ask your vet about NextGuard Plus Chews. The one that I want.
I've never seen this. John Deneen from Saul's Jury and Loan. I've never seen the price of gold as high as it is right now, which means you could be sitting on a gold mine yourself. Bring us in your broken gold chains, gold rings, and diamond jewelry. You'll never get a better price for those items. Saul's knows jewelry, and we've been around, and we've never seen gold this high. Sell your gold with confidence at Saul's Jewelry and Loan at any of our six convenient locations. Find it all at Saul's, Saul's Jewelry and Loan. You'll find it all at Saul's, Saul's Jewelry and Loan. Hey, baseball fans, join the Blur Tailgate at Hilton Omaha this June for our 12th annual hospitality event during the College Baseball Championship Series. Book an experience for your clients or employees with an inclusive bar, buffet, TVs, music, and tailgate games. Secure your spot today and let Blur Events take care of all the work so you can enjoy the day. Plus, we're just steps away from Charles Schwab Field. Visit BlurEvents.com to book your group, buy tickets, or learn about sponsorships. That's BlurEvents.com, your college baseball and football tailgate destination. We're going abroad for the first time in years to Spain. But we don't speak Spanish. So we started using Babbel. And started learning Spanish fast. With Babbel, you can start having conversations in another language in just three weeks. Babbel's conversational method teaches you real-life words and phrases. And with Babbel's interactive bite-sized lessons, you'll remember what you learned. ¿Cómo te llamas? ¿Cómo te llamas? ¿De dónde eres? ¿De dónde eres? When you learn a language, you want to actually use it. Babbel is designed with that goal in mind. In just three weeks, we're starting to have conversations in Spanish. Estoy muy emocionado para ir a España contigo. Aw, he just said, I'm very excited to go to Spain with you. Nos vamos a divertir mucho. And that means we're going to have a lot of fun. <laughs> sí. Gracias, Babbel. Babbel, language for life. Celebrating 10 million subscriptions sold. Now try Babbel for free at Babbel.com. Just go to Babbel.com and start learning a new language today. That's Babbel.com, B-A-B-B-E-L.com. Hey, baseball fans, join the Blur Tailgate at Hilton Omaha this June for our 12th annual hospitality event during the College Baseball Championship Series. Book an experience for your clients or employees with an inclusive bar, buffet, TVs, music, and tailgate games. Secure your spot today and let Blur Events take care of all the work so you can enjoy the day. Plus, we're just steps away from Charles Schwab Field. Visit BlurEvents.com to book your group, buy tickets, or learn about sponsorships. That's BlurEvents.com, your college baseball and football tailgate destination. Roofing, siding, and gutters. Make the right call with the rooferees at John Higgins Weather Guard. Now back to mornings with Sharp and Hanley on 1620 The Zone. All right, later this morning, they'll open up the gates. It'll be the running of the journalists to uh, get a best seat for uh, open <laughs> practice today. Uh, Sam McEwen will have his eyeballs and his pen and pad there ready to watch week three of spring football. But right now he joins us on Mornings with Sharp and Hanley on The Zone. Good morning. Good morning, guys. Hey, Good before morning, we uh, talk a little uh, football, um, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna to test you here because I'm curious on who you would put in this after UConn wins last night. Who are the current Blue Bloods, according to Sam McEwen, in college basketball right now? UConn, Duke, Kentucky. Kansas, North Carolina. I think those are your five. That's probably where I'd put it. And and uh, UConn is a blue collar blood, so to speak. Like um, they're not necessarily getting all the five star kids up there, you know. So uh, they're they're doing it a little bit different way. But you know, they've won more national titles over the last twenty five years than any other program. So you have to yeah. you have to credit them for what they've done and who they are. Those are probably the five that came to the top of my mind. As you ask that question, do you uh, do you put this UConn team up there amongst uh, the best of all time when you talk about doing it two years in a row and the way they did it? I do. Yep. I think uh, obviously you can't compare eras easily because the NBA's rule set around uh, the sport and guys going to the to the NBA is is obviously changed things. Um, but but yeah, I do. You know what's interesting? The first player uh who played for john thompson to go to the nba early was alan iverson that mm -hmm. means that 20 years yeah. of john thompson players including patrick ewing and alonzo morning and Dikembe mutombo and all the other players all played four years and so you know i imagine in my mind there's a team like you know the the georgetown team that lost to unlv that had morno morning and mutombo and i don't know that uconn beats that team i don't think uconn beats the unlv team that uh, you know, one won the national title and one lost in the final four. So, mm -hmm. 
you know, there's there's circumstances where if you start gaming it out, you're going to run into, yeah, they're not going to beat that team. But but um, having said that, you know, UConn's dealing with what they're dealing with. And so, you know, this is this is the the the, the hand that's been dealt all of the teams. And I think that I think the sport's in a better place than it was ten years ago. And I think UConn's one of the best teams of all time. Well, well this two year run is almost unprecedented. Uh, I would even put it ahead yeah. of the Florida and, and and the Duke. We were talking earlier, so the Big Ten gets to the stage and and redemption for Purdue. Um, after what happened last year, they got all the way to the national championship team. They got beat by a team that's better. They had the best player. They played the best team. But looking at like the Big Ten now that has gone since 2000 with Michigan State without a title, when do you think this league made a switch where it's more identified with football than men's basketball? Because I think it's that way. Yeah, absolutely, for sure. Um, I think it probably happened in the 90s. You know, Um, I think Ohio State football obviously was great in the 60s and 70s. But some people would argue it happened when Bo and Woody had their 10-year war and and that, you know, that's when it probably occurred. But, you know, if you look at the 80s for, for Big Ten basketball, Indiana won two national championships, Michigan won a national championship. And then, you know, so it was, it was pretty great basketball. I'd say the Big Ten was the best basketball league alongside the Big East in the uh, – in the eighties. And I know how people feel about the big eight around here, but big 10 basketball was really, really good um, in the eighties. And so, you know, I think, I think it probably began the shift then when you get to the nineties and Ohio state gets really good. And the Ohio state Michigan rivalry is more than a regional thing. It's, you know, the last game of the year and it's the biggest game of the year. And it's always on TV. I think TV has favored big 10 football. Um, when the big 10 got off a of big Monday, that hurt them a little bit, um, I think. And so, yeah, I mean, I think the it's definitely a football league at this point, for sure. Uh, it's that it, it's it's a different than the SEC um, in terms of the the storyline, but Big Ten football is a big, big deal, especially at the very top of the top of the league. We, we've seen a big uptick in NIL money for basketball cr- programs around the Big Ten, though, and, and specifically yeah. recently in in Nebraska. Do you think we see an associate athletic director for basketball? sooner rather than later in Lincoln? I think that would be a novel and helpful idea. I do think that Fred Whitford has a lot of those qualities within him. Mm. Like he, he's able to, I think, um, synthesize a lot of the ideas that an associate basketball AD would have. I, I think Fred could be a GM at the NBA level one day, if that's what he, what he wanted to do. Um, so I, I, I don't know. Like there's some coaches, who their minds going in a hundred different directions and you need an administrator to be able to focus that. I don't know that Fred needs that, but I do think that, you know, they could definitely use somebody who's a liaison in the NIL market. And his, it was also, you know, fighting for what Nebraska basketball needs to do because, you know, what we need to, you know, our, our beat reporter, Wilson Moore's done a great job. At some point we'll sit down with Fred and, and, and just do the whole big picture. Because now that you've made the NCAA tournament, that's not like the end goal. Now you've got to strategize for the next five years. And I think there's a lot of areas that I'm sure he wants to address and and work through, including scheduling. How do you get Nebraska to play a schedule and get in some of these tournaments that help you? I, I think Purdue was greatly helped by some of its early season games. I know Gonzaga was helped by that. Alabama was helped by that. You've got to get in some of those games. And then you've got to get in those games, and then you've got to win them. And so finding the right matchups, things like that. Talent acquisition, I think, is really important. And then if there's one area where I think Weber, you know, could use some tailoring, it's let's find the guys. It doesn't have to be a bunch, but one or two guys each year who you can identify as four-year guys who can be your guys over the course of the program, and they can be the culture keepers as you bring transfers in. Mm -hmm. Um, Because I think that's something that Nebraska is missing a little bit, is that you're not going to hit 100% on the transfers every single year like they did last year. So you've got to have four-year guys or guys that you brought in as redshirt freshmen who are culture keepers. And I I think that's one area where they're going to have to uh, get a little bit better is in identifying the kinds of players who are not only good enough to play for Hoiberg, but will stay. And that's, uh, I think Jamarcus Lawrence is good enough. He didn't want to stay. And I think that's something you got to figure out. Yeah. That's why I think as this roster evolves, 
Nick Janowski, who is already signed, sealed, and will be delivered the sharpshooter from Wisconsin, might be the most important guy because he needs to be here for a few years. But that just hasn't been Fred's thing. Is a, guy, a high school guy comes in and, you know, McGowan's was one and done, but stays here for a while and develops. It just, it, it, that hasn't been his thing, but I think it needs to be his thing with that kid. I agree. And, you know, I think I've watched a lot of his highlights in recent weeks. And I guess, I don't know, I'm, I, I, you don't want to put too much on a kid, but he, he appears to be, you know, um, in that Purdue guard category. I think he, he's, I'm not saying he's Braden Smith, but right. he's good. Like, I think he, he has a chance to be um, very good right away at Nebraska. You know, he could score eight, nine, ten points yeah. a game. And, and they need somebody like that. They need, they need somebody to come in who, who uh, you know, it's like, oh, yeah, this is a guy we want to, you know, build around as, as time goes on. And Tim Miles didn't have much of a choice. Like, he had to do that. And, you know, he, you know, he raised up um, – Ty Webster it didn't work quite the way they hoped with Ty, but he kind of developed Ty Webster over four years, and they developed Siobhan Shields, and they developed Isaiah Roby, and you know that they have to find those players again uh, in in the Hoiberg era, or it's going to be hard for them to make the tournament as frequently as fans want them to. Sam McCune of the Omaha World Herald joining us. I want to circle back to our, our discussion that Jimmy and I have been having about Purdue Big Ten basketball compared to football, and I posed the question. The four that are joining to make it the Big 18, UCLA, USC, Washington, Oregon, more of an impact in football or men's basketball? Great question. I think initially it's going to be football, um, and it's going to be in a couple of different ways. Um, I don't know that any of those teams, except maybe Oregon, is going to really change the nature of the Big 10 right away, but I think the level of exposure that Big 10 teams will get, and then just, you know, being able to recruit that region more easily because you'll be able to sell the kids on going back there every so often, I think will be notable too. You know, the four, the four teams in basketball, there's clearly a lot going on with, 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 with uh, change, you know, Mick Cronin's probably, uh, he's on the hot seat. Andy Enfield, you know, left and Eric Musselman came in. I don't know how many more years Musselman has, I, I, I don't know, and we'll see what he's able to do out there. It's a weird recruiting market. There's been great books written about the Los Angeles basketball scene that I encourage people to read, uh, but it's not easy to recruit there. Like it, It's actually hard uh, to get some of the kids out of that area because a lot of them are controlled by you know AAU people, and they don't necessarily go USC and UCLA. Dane Altman, you know, he's going to retire soon. I don't know when he's going to retire, and Washington's starting over. So, you know, I think there's, you know, there's, that's something probably to watch. I think on the women's basketball side, it's going to be a profound impact right away. Mm -hmm. Two best teams in the Big Ten next year are going to be USC and UCLA. Quite frankly, the third best team might be Nebraska. Uh, I I would not, I would not discount the possibility of that. ESPN put out their, uh, I don't know what you call it, their two early top 25, and Nebraska's the third highest Big Ten team in it. The first two are USC and UCLA. So, I think you're going to see a profound impact in that sport. Um, you're going to see a profound impact in softball uh, almost immediately because of USC, Washington, and Oregon. Um, and then you're going to see this, this, people care about this. You're going to see a profound impact in track and field. I mean, that's the most profound probably is that Oregon will come in and win everything. So I, I hope that uh, the other Big Ten teams are probably done winning most of the most of the Big Ten titles. So you know, football. It'll be there. Um, I think Oregon's gonna gonna contend for the Big Ten title right away. In fact, I'm gonna make them my favorite to win the Big Ten. Uh, but uh, but I think over time you'll you'll see you'll see that the football thing is more about exposure and more about the opportunity to play coast to coast football. Sam, you guys brought up something on on the Pick Six uh, podcast yesterday about uh, AJ Store, who's uh, reportedly looking for seven figures. When we're talking about a guy who isn't really in the upper echelon of the transfer portal, looking for that kind of demand. From a financial standpoint, is it like in a, in a school like Nebraska's best interest to maybe avoid those situations to kind of not drive that market up? Yeah, you know, I think Nebraska, you know, I'm not saying that they would necessarily be against adding a player of that caliber. I think AJ Store is looking for a situation where it's national title. Mm. And so um, AJ Store could very easily go to Connecticut. 
Now, I don't know how much money they have up there. Um, I, I, I get the sense that UConn doesn't necessarily have $10 million to spend, and they do it a little bit differently. But, but you know, I could see him. There's probably only about five or six schools he wants to go to. And I think, um, you know, what I read on Twitter was that KU offered him seven fifty, and he wanted a million. And KU said no. You know, that's, that's the way it goes. And, and I'm sure he'll, he'll land somewhere, probably not for a million probably for less than that. Um, one thing I'll say is if you give a kid a lot of money, you know, an NIL fund, you're probably more likely to play him. Yeah. I mean, you're, you you know, even mm-hmm. though yeah. it's not your money, uh, it, it belongs to wealthy people and they don't want to give all that money and then see the kid sit on the bench. And so, you know, one of the challenges that I think Nebraska had in its first NIL football season is that I think, I think, uh, you know, the, the Prince, the, the largest son uh, went to Oshan Mass. I mean, I think that was probably the priciest of the, yeah. of, and he turned out to have a nice end of that season. But he, You're, I think a lot of people walked away from that saying, well, he's not, you know, this isn't what we thought we were going to get for the, the NIL money that we spent. And so um, I think there's probably been a little bit more, hey, let's spread the NIL money out a little bit so that we're, we're taking care of a, of a deep group of players versus trying to buy one or two guys with, with uh, extra money. Hey, what do you think uh, as we begin week three of spring ball, the, the week three narrative will be? Well, we haven't, you know, and they've they played it all pretty, pretty cool so far. So at some point you're going to see, and I, you're going to see the coaches get ticked about something. I don't know what it's going to be, but there's always a point in camp where, you know, everybody starts to, this is now boring. We want to play the spring game. We got spring fever. We want, you know, let's get to summer. Some of these guys might be thinking of transfer. And that's about the time the coach kicks it up a notch and says, we got to, you know, we got to lock that. And so that, that usually comes in week three. Uh, and we're hitting that now. So we'll talk on Thursday. Uh, they have a scrimmage on Saturday. I think that's going to be important, uh, especially for guys that are trying to decide, okay, am I going to, Am I gonna stay at Nebraska, or do I? Am I, you know, way down the, the depth chart? Because remember, the portal opens next Monday. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. It opens next Monday. Um, I don't know. You know, Nebraska. The, Nebraska chose to schedule its spring camp when it did, so we can't blame anybody for going into the portal on Monday if, if, if they realize, hey, you know, I've been through two and a half weeks of this camp and. I'm way down the list and I can tell that I'm not going to play and so I'm going to go like that's going to happen. And so I think that scrimmage is important in that way. We'll ask rule about it on Thursday. Yeah. Are you expecting anybody? Yeah. You know, it's the possibility of somebody leaving and halfway through camp. That's what they wanted to do. They wanted to set it up this way to, to help their off season conditioning. So they have to expect you know, one or two players to be like, yeah, I'm going to hang it up and go somewhere else. What are you expecting, uh, or I guess what are you looking for today? Obviously, with with the quarterbacks already speaking, it kind of seems like that situation's ironing itself out. What do you what, what are you most excited to see at practice today? Well, you know they don't show us much, you know, and and so it's mostly drill work. I'll probably go watch the offensive or defensive line, maybe the linebackers. I like watching Rob Dvorak uh, teach. He's a good teacher. Knighton's good. Uh, Rayo is good. He, he he's got a graduate assistant that's really good too, or whatever they call Aaron Foley. I don't know. I think he's. I think he's. I think he still is a G. Hey. Yeah, but you're he's right. Good. He's he needs to be. He gets mentioned a little bit. He does um, Barthel had an interesting drill the last week? Um, I, I, that group that group of players still, you know, he's. I think he. I think he kicked it up a notch last week, and I'll see if I'll see if that's still the case. I think there's an urgency there to get guys. Um, you know, Gabe Irvin can't do a lot. So he's kind of held out. And, um, but they, they want to get guys going. They, they need to get that position as good as possible. They know they, they feel like they've got a guy in Quentin Knives who's talented, but you know, he didn't do much last year. And I think they really want to, you know, light a fire under him to get going. Uh, you know, they're bringing in a kid maybe this weekend, maybe next weekend. You know, he's kind of there to. <laughs> He's kind of going to take that spot, you know, this Jamarian Parker from St. Louis. He, he's going to be that guy if, if I can't. Like they're, they need a player who can make plays in open space. Ramirez in his final year, um, he's not, you know, they can't count on him 
next year because he won't be around. So they got to find a player who can do some stuff in open space as a wing back and a tailback, some other things. And Parker's the guy they identify. I think they would love it if I were that guy. So that, that'll be something I'm watching. Those probably those three positions. The quarterback stuff's not very exciting. You know, they're just standing there throwing footballs. Um, <laughs> It's not very exciting. It's, uh, they, it, it, you can kind of watch them throw the football and, and all the rest. But, you know, what you want to see when you're watching that stuff is, is real drill work, seven on seven. The last time we got to see that as reporters, it's during the Riley era, and we would go to practice and we'd watch, you know, we'd watch Tommy Armstrong really struggle in practice. And then he was better in the games. There's no question that Tommy was a gamer because in practice it wasn't, what you would hope it would be. And then in the game, he'd do stuff that he didn't do in practice. So we'd always walk away from practice back in that era and go, man, how, how are they going to throw the football this week? And then they'd, they'd find a way to throw the football. They would. Aaron Kolick has been upgraded to an uh, analyst, by the uh, way. I just wanted to throw that out. And, and coming up on June 1, he could be more involved than he already is. He could. Now, yeah. this is going to be so interesting to, to watch. They just had Bill Belichick in, mm-hmm. and you know I know because I've I've listened to Belichick's speeches over the years in various different places. Bill Belichick was not like in the NFL; you can kind of have as many of these guys as you want, and he was never big on like having forty five of them. He's like you, you, you need to have kind of a tight group group of guys that kind of all know what they're supposed to do, and they all know everyone else's job. And I'll be curious to see if rules like okay, let's have twenty. You know, let's let's elevate yeah. twenty guys because th- there does come a point where you got too many guys with too many voices, and then it doesn't really it, it doesn't resonate. Now, Coling is is a guy that I think you would see elevated to a coach, but I don't know. I, I'll be curious to see if rules like, hey, let's have twenty five, or if he's more like, let's have fourteen or fifteen, yeah. but not, you know, literally everybody on the sidelines with a headset running around in people's faces. I'll be curious to see what how he tilts on that. Yeah, they're they're pretty ro- robust behind the scenes. Sam, thanks for your uh, time. Look for uh, your reaction uh, after uh, the morning of practice. Thank you. Take care, guys. That's uh, Sam McEwen, the World Herald. Brian Christopherson actually will join us after he watches practice. Uh, so he'll be coming up at uh, 930 with his thoughts, and maybe we'll get Bobby Hessling on to talk about what's going on with Nebraska Spring Football and the Nebraska Spring League. It's been pretty good. I mean, the way it's worked out and the Nebraska Spring League. Yeah, when he's talking, Matt Rule talked about it on what day was it? Tuesday or, or Thursday, where he was just brought up the fact that it was Saturday. Sorry, he brought up the fact that uh, you know only one other place in in the country does it like that, and it's Georgia. And it was kind of the reason he kind of took that approach was to make sure that everybody is working, getting the reps they deserve. I think Bobby Hessling is going to be involved in the spring game. I think this is all leading up to what's going to happen with the red white game. What they're doing with this Nebraska Spring League. Like the way they pick the teams? Uh, the way they pick the teams, the competition that's going on. I, I, I have a feeling that it will culminate with the red-white game. And Bobby Hessling will be a prominent person uh, on the mic. That's just what I'm thinking. Don't know anything? I was going to say, why do you think this? <laughs> just get Bobby Hessling on. Bobby Hessling is becoming a household name in Nebraska because of the hair and, and, and because people are interested. But this is what they're doing. And all of those videos, that's for, I think, them, not us. Because there is parts that are cringeworthy. But there's also <laughs> parts that are like, man, I get it. I get it. This is this is to make spring fun when I think it could get pretty uh, monotonous. All right, 7.53. Uh, again, BC will join us uh, after open practice this morning coming up at uh, 9.30 on Mornings with Sharp and Hanley on 16.20 The Zone. Hey, right now, the playoff time of the NBA and the NHL. Baseball's in full swing and FanDuel is your best – place to bet on every single game. There's a lot of stuff going on. And right now, if you're a new customer, listen up. You can get $150 in bonus bets guaranteed. That's $150, bucks, win or lose. How about that? Winner, winner, chicken dinner. You can bet on everything from slap shots to home runs to slam dunks. Heck, you can all do it on a parlay. There was a, a, a odds boost yesterday. You could do it on FanDuel, and that all included that. All on the app that is safe, secure, and easy to use. So what are you waiting for? All you got to do, it's pretty easy. Go to FanDuel.com slash The Zone. That's our promo code. And make your first bet an automatic win. Winner, winner, chicken dinner with the promo code The Zone. FanDuel, America's number one sports book. 21 over present Iowa. We're on the real money wager only. $10 first deposit required. Bonus issued is non-withdrawable. Bonus bets that expire seven days after receipt. See terms at sportsbook.fanduel.com. Gambling problem call 1-800-BETS-OFF. 
More with Gary and Nick after this on 1620 The Zone. Remember, no matter how you listen, it's still AM radio. 1620 The Zone. Get more with Murphy Tractor. Each of our 29 locations offers new, used, and rental John Deere construction equipment, an extensive parts inventory, as well as other complimentary products. We also have a full team of Capstone certified technicians with field service capabilities. Let Murphy Tractor be your first choice for your construction equipment needs. Visit us online at murphytractor.com. It's Champions Replacement Window Season, and we're celebrating with Buy Two Windows Get Two Free. If your windows are drafty, difficult to operate, or costing you money on your energy bill, it's time to replace them. Champion Windows is here to help. Champion builds our own windows right here in the USA. We make the process easy. We help you choose the best design options for your home. We then build your project in our very own factory. Our install team manages your project every step of the way, and it's all backed by our lifetime guarantee. Turn your house into your dream home with more livable space in a new Champion sunroom or enhance your curb appeal with new siding. Now 30% off. Don't wait. This sale won't last long. Buy two windows, get two free and 30% off sunrooms and siding. Call 877-GO-CHAMPION or visit championsavenow.com to schedule a free in-home estimate today. All discounts apply to our regular prices. Select style supply. Minimum purchase required. Cannot be combined with other advertised offers. See store or website for details. Planning something fun for your office, family, or friends? Joe's Karting is for you. Take a break. Come to Joe's to race, relax, and recharge. Great for team building. Ditch the speaker and burn some rubber. Trust us, Joe says you'll leave motivated. Joe's Karting race packages range from providing simple stress relief races to the real deal race experience. Check us out at joeskarting.com. Remember, go to Joe's, your place to race. Email on sportsmanlike conduct on the Equitable Bank Zone Inbox with whatever is on your mind, from your hot takes to what you think is one. The Zone Inbox is brought to you by Equitable Bank. We take banking personally. We want to hear from you on the Equitable Bank Zone Inbox. Getting quality employees to fill positions in your company is essential, but finding those people can be a major hassle unless you use ZipRecruiter. ZipRecruiter makes finding quality people a breeze. And right now you can try it for free at ZipRecruiter.com slash radio. With ZipRecruiter, one click sends your job to hundreds of top job sites. But more than that, ZipRecruiter's advanced technology identifies the candidates with the skills you need, sends you a list of great matches to review, then actively invites them to apply for your job. And the results speak for themselves. Four out of five employers who post on ZipRecruiter get a quality candidate within the first day. That's right, the first day. Now you can focus on your business and let ZipRecruiter do the work finding the best people for you. See for yourself. Experience the ease, efficiency, and power of ZipRecruiter for free. Just go to ZipRecruiter.com slash radio. That's ZipRecruiter.com slash radio. ZipRecruiter.com slash radio. Host is roasting every morning. Host is roasting every day. Put your coffee department in good hands with Host Coffee Service, providing direct delivery and loaned coffee equipment with service programs. If you're ready to change to a better coffee provider, it's time for Host Coffee. Omaha's best coffee since 1972. Host Coffee is always roasting something good for you. 1620 The Zone at 1620thezone.com. And we're back. Mornings with Sharp and Handy. Here's Gary, Nick, and Jimmy on 1620 The Zone. All right, hope your uh, Tuesday's off to a good start. It's always a good start when you join us on 1620 The Zone. You good? I was handling my mic there. <laughs> I saw that. Uh, a day after uh, America got mooned. Hope everybody survived. Did you see what the number one Google search is today? Why do my eyes hurt? <laughs> really? <laughs> Lack of sleep? It's uh, a late game last night. Here's just a, uh, Morons. a person that uh, went to uh, Lewis and Clark State Park yesterday in Council Bluffs to watch it. A lot of people there. Yeah. A lot of people. It's a very uh, high point. And I have, uh, if anybody would like to purchase, I have uh, Eclipse 2024 used glasses that I will make a deal with you. But you'll need whoa, them for the next whoa, one. Whoa, 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 whoa. I think you're burying the lead here because this is a... 
two-time in-game worn pair of glasses. But right? the other ones are the special 2017. Oh, you had two different pair of glasses. Totality, yes. Oh, okay, I'm sorry. I yeah. thought you used the same pair twice. Um, it's cool. I, I I enjoyed what I did yesterday. I would rather do it in person than watch it on TV. And I hope I'm around yeah, for weird. the next one in 2044. Um, I watched exactly zero seconds of the eclipse. Mm-hmm. And I enjoyed my day. Well, went on about it. Nothing changed. You watched it last night. Purdue got eclipsed by UConn. Oh, nice. <laughs> I see what you did there. I could be a headline writer. Yeah. No, I, I, I thought it was. I thought it was cool. Um, you know, when they say you're not supposed to look into it, I still am a kid, so I we look into it. Um, Is it really that okay? When, when they say don't drive with the glasses on, you're like, I wonder how dark these are, and you slip them on for a little bit, and you're like, whoa, I can't see anything while you're driving. Yeah, I, it's really scary that they have to tell people to do that based on the fact if you put those glasses on and thought it would be a good idea to drive, I've got some questions about your life decisions. Um, maybe, hey, maybe that was your guy's problem yeah. at the roundabout today. Maybe he still had the eclipse glasses. Oh, on. no, I saw his didn't... eyes. His <laughs> eye, he, 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 he saw my eyes. I saw his eyes. I know who you are. I know what you drive. Now I know where you live because you turned on Uh-oh. a street before uh, the street that I normally Get turn on. Get the eggs, Gary. Oh, I, I'm, I'm, I'm way <laughs> over the egging. <laughs> it's good. Take got, a tire under his back I'm window. A, I'm a doxer. No, just kidding. Nice. Uh, all right. Uh, the next hour upcoming, uh, Sam said something about running backs. Um, huh. The running back position at Nebraska in the spring hasn't been uh, glowing through the uh, first two weeks. Is this a trend after last year's running back room that included some interesting things, whether guys were injured or not? We will uh, discuss that. More on Andrew Morgan and stroller for a dog. If you know somebody that has it, do you trust that person? No. We don't have it. I'll pose it to you, too, because you both are dog owners and like they're precious in your life. You treat them like your kids. Like them more than pretty much all humans. So does John Calipari. Apparently. Mm-hmm. Specifically, uh, people that come stay at Cameron's face. It's mornings with Sharp and Hanley on 1620 The Zone. Hey, whether you're taking your dog, you know, for a walk and you have a stroller and the dog is not on a leash, or whether you're pursuing a new job, here's what you got to do. You got to be at your best because Fido needs you to be at his best. Like when Fido darts out in traffic, you, you need to be able to jump and have that energy to go do it. So all of a sudden, if you can't do these kind of things, these like simple tasks as a guy, and you're wondering, hmm, I can't focus. I got stress. I got attention span is not good. I got decreased mental acuity. I'm trying to text recruits and I got TV stations that are asking me what I'm doing. All of a sudden, my mind's going nuts. And you're like, it isn't just because I'm pursuing another job. There's got to be something else because I'm not interested in Fido anymore. I'm not interested in my spouse. Not that they have anything to do with each other, but now they can lead to relationship problems with your dog or your partner or spouse. And you're like, I got to get to the bottom of this because things aren't right. Yes, men. Things aren't right. You need to figure out what to do because if you've had energy in the past and you've been able to keep up with your kids, work, all of that stuff, and now you're not present, let's figure out why. And that's where my good friends at Mentality come into play. LowTUSA.com is the website that you can check out all the information on how they, with their FDA-approved testosterone treatment and the board-certified physicians, are helping men throughout Omaha to overcome low T. Get back on the path where Fido has a skip in his step and you have a skip in the bedroom. All you have to do, make an appointment right now. Go to lowtusa.com. You'll get a complete physical consultation, blood panel results, and a plan if you have low T to be the very best for your wife and kids. It's pretty simple. Go to the website today, lowtusa.com. It is mentality. Mornings with Sharp and Hanley on 1620 The Zone and 1620thezone.com. Live from the Host Coffee Studio, this is 1620 The Zone. 1620 The Zone Traffic From the Pyramid Roofing Time Saving Traffic Center Hope your Tuesday morning is off to a great start Roads looking good as of right now No accidents, obstructions Or any slow moving traffic to report currently Things will pick up here pretty soon Especially that Dodge eastbound traffic Starting around 180th But as of now, things are running smoothly Just remember to stay safe and wear that seatbelt I'm Peter Krenzer This time-saving traffic was brought to you by Fernando's. Mario Street Tacos or Steak and Chorizo Queso Blanco Enchiladas can only be found in one place. Fernando's, great Mexican food, awesome margaritas, and a wonderful family atmosphere. Fernando's, Omaha's favorite Mexican for more than 30 years.
It's spring. Now is the best time to shop at Lenahaw for all things garden or landscape. Our garden center is filled with the largest selection of homegrown plants, flowers, trees, and more. The area's best mulch and soil available for delivery and pickup. Rooted in quality, unmatched value. Lenahaw Nurseries, 192nd and Center. Is your concrete cracked or uneven? Hey, everyone. Coach Greg McDermott here to explain why you should choose Everlevel Concrete Repair. Many people think they need to replace broken concrete, but repairing it provides durable protection and comes at a fraction of the cost. Everlevel provides permanent repair solutions to fix your concrete and protect it against future damage. And it all comes with a long-term transferable warranty. They offer free inspections to walk you through the entire process. Call Everlevel Concrete Repair today. Nominations for the Step Forward Awards are now open. These awards are the state's most prestigious awards for volunteerism, and we need your help to find outstanding volunteers from your region of the state. If you know a volunteer who deserves to be honored for their service, visit serve.nebraska.gov and click Nominate Now. Made possible by sponsors like Omaha Public Power District. Nominations must be submitted by June 1st. Paid for by Serve Nebraska, aired by the Nebraska Broadcasters Association and this station. Prescriptions require an online consultation with a healthcare provider who will determine if appropriate restrictions apply. See website for details and important safety information. Subscription required. Price varies based on product and subscription plan. Hey guys, did you know there's a generic form of Viagra that works just the same but is 95% cheaper? And you can get it online at hymns.com slash radio. Through HIMSS, you'll get a free medical consultation to determine the ED medication that's best for you, discreet shipping if prescribed, a 100% online process, and a range of treatment options, including trusted generic alternatives to the name brands, at up to 95% off. ED is personal, and at HIMSS, so is treating it. Just go to HIMSS.com radio and get connected to a licensed medical provider online for free with zero copay, no expensive appointments, and no awkward face-to-face -face conversations. To start your free online visit, you need to go to this exclusive address, hymns.com slash radio. That's hymns.com slash radio for your free online visit, H-I-M-S dot com slash R-A-D-I-O. The world's largest sports book in Las Vegas is available right at your fingertips in Iowa. The Circus Sports Iowa app is sports betting the way it should be. Bet anywhere in Iowa and experience high betting limits, tight money line splits, and exceptional customer service. Download your new bookie today. Visit CircusSports.com and start betting like a pro from anywhere in Iowa. If you or someone you know may have a problem with gambling, call 1-800-238-7633. Temperatures are warm and Omaha Maverick baseball is hot. The Mavericks have won their last two conference series and lead the Summit League in conference wins. Tonight, the Mavs take on crosstown rival Creighton at Tal Anderson Field. Don't miss this classic matchup. It's $2 Tuesdays when all Pepsi products and Bush Light cans are $2 when gates open until the third inning. And this weekend, Maverick baseball plays South Dakota State. Get your tickets for all four games by calling 402-554-MAVS or by going to omavs.com slash ticks. Tickets for less. Best seats, best prices, no service fees. Shop ticketsforless.com. KOZ and Bellevue, Omaha, Council Bluffs. This is 1620 The Zone. And we're back. Mornings with Sharp and Hammond. Here's Gary, Nick, and Jimmy on 1620 The Zone. All right, bands off the field. Third quarter begins. Some mornings for Sharp and Hanley. Jimmy Allen is in uh, this morning. He's uh, killed off one shining moment. Much of the despair yeah, of Juwan gone. Gary, who was able to sneak in there with his uh, foul out performance against Illinois in the Big Ten tournament. You've not seen it. Uh, so the the local angle, uh, the Creighton Prep Band, Pep Band is in. Uh, celebration in the locker room. And uh, there's a lot of Dalton Connect with Creighton in the background. Then you have Nebraska with Tominaga hitting a three, and Juwan Gary, after fouling out, overcome with emotion. Unfortunately, he fouled out against Illinois in the Big Ten tournament, but that is in one shining moment. Jimmy has killed it off. He's killed off college basketball. All it's the dead. It's all over. The, it's all the games are done. Uh, the last time. <laughs> there you the go. Last overtime. There you go, ever. Stat boy over there. The last time that UConn lost in the NCAA tournament. 1964. Feels like at this point. Be a long streak, yeah. Or they haven't made the tournament from '64 to the last two years. Do we have UConn fatigue? That's the question. Uh, no, I don't either. I think it's no, great. 
Uh, Teddy Allen uh, win ah, UConn. That's right. Last time that UConn lost the NCAA tournament, Teddy Allen went for 37. Uh, Teddy, who is, uh, where is Teddy today? I think Teddy's in the, I think he's playing in the British League. Still playing some pro basketball. It was a terrible English accent. Yeah, I little, didn't know what you were going for. A little there. bit Irish in there. Do you have an, do you have a, uh, an Irish Brit? That'll do Because accents. if they do, uh, that would be my uh, accent. He's on the radio, 6 to 10. Teddy <laughs> Allen in the British, eh? No, that's, that's more Irish. But I think that's where uh, hey, is it the Teddy Le- is playing. playing for the Leicester Riders. How's he doing? British. Apparently dropped 42, 11, and 5 the other night. Man, he's a bucket getter. Uh, Josh was, Patrice, the best album. <laughs> he, he, was, he was playing in Canada. And then he's over there. Who's right. he playing for? Uh, the Leicester Riders. Oh, he, it'll, I think Teddy will play basketball forever. I don't see him hanging up anytime yeah, soon. You find him at a YMCA 20 years down the road. It's like Yamir Yager in hockey. Hey, question yesterday. Uh, we didn't we didn't go all deep into WrestleMania. Much of the dismay of our hordes of listeners. Yeah, we had a lot of complaints, so we didn't talk about it enough. Um, watch it for entertainment. If if you think the NFL is scripted, why don't you like professional wrestling? So here's the thing, and I will stand on this hill and die on it every time. That's a simple question. Everybody I loves want you to die. You've already killed off something today. Everybody. It's very near and dear to a lot of people's hearts. Every single person loves professional wrestling, whether they tell you that Whoa. or not. It's Whoa. storytelling at its finest. These are the takes Whoa. I was hoping for. It's here. a sport as old as time. Everybody listen, the, the day the day the day that the, the day that the Undertaker lost at WrestleMania to Brock Lesnar, I got text messages from people that I didn't even know that knew the Undertaker was a person. Everybody watches professional wrestling. It's everybody's guilty pleasure. Whether they admit it or not, you've enjoyed at least one professional wrestling show in your lifetime. Everybody loves professional wrestling. <laughs> I'm done. No, don't. But you still got speaking a couple days left. Uh, you're speaking of the choir, I, I, I enjoy professional wrestling. I've dabbled in and out. Sometimes you don't have time in your life to consume professional wrestling, but WWE is at a good spot right now. You know what maybe irritates me more than anything on the planet? M- more than one shining Sandstorm. moment? When you go to a fast food restaurant and they don't include something in your order and you don't check the bag and take it all the way home and you're like miles away from the place and then you go, dang. That might be 1A. And okay. You check the all right. Seat. When somebody's like, yeah, I used to like professional wrestling when, but now it's blah, 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 blah. No, you yeah. still like professional wrestling. You just don't like the product. Uh, so I think, no, no, I think there's some some eras where we like a little bit better. That's okay. right, 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 right. Yeah. I'm not talking about liking one more than the other when they say i don't like professional wrestling but i liked it when that's not how that works like you okay you just don't like the product that's out there now you like the concept oh, sounds like saturday wrestling. night live we'll yeah, say we'll, exactly we'll say exactly if, if somebody doesn't like professional wrestling or watch it they do vehemently tell you they don't yeah and yes like, oh, they, they are very vo- they don't watch that stuff it's fake i don't watch it and then they go on a list of like the last five times that they watched it it's like it's oh so you do you down wrestlemania hey. yeah so I listened to Cody Rhodes' entrance song 15 times yesterday. It's really good. Whoa! Okay. Um, there was something that Sam McEwen just said, and, and <laughs> Dion says it's fake. You're, oh, what? You're fake. That's my other thing. Yeah, you're a fake. It's fake. It's yeah, not it's a soap. Oh, yeah, Jackie Chan sports. didn't really punch that guy it's in the face. It's soap opera it. for men. Uh, Connor Happer, uh, I most certainly do not love professional wrestling. It is most certainly not as old as time. It literally is. It's been around. He since. canceled football, too, yeah. remember? It's literally been around since the dawn of time. Just just fire off for the next two hours. Like every minute on the minute, uh, just old time wrestlers. Yeah. Throw him some George the Animal Steel. Uh, go with the go with Baron. Von Raschke. <laughs> Claw. Claw. Yeah. Mad Doug Vashon. I mean, Bam, Bam, by the Bam, way, Bam. all guys that have you're rattling off guys Omaha uh, ties. They have that have Omaha ties. Ted DiBiase. I mean, Sting. I mean, was wrestling is I mean, think about it back in the day. A wrestler could have a wooden leg, take it off, and beat somebody to pulp, and then put it back on. In Omaha, Nebraska, at the Civic. Yeah, yeah. Shawn Michaels. Saw, Shawn Michaels ripped I off. Saw, uh, I saw when Mad. I, I, I saw later in life, um, and he's not with us anymore. But when Mad Dog Vashon living here in Omaha, I saw him once, and I was like amazed. Because he's a legend. Okay, so, I, I didn't so, know if there was something that. So happened. maybe just you know throwing a little Bob Backlund for Connor. 
Just go old school wrestling like uh, Terry Gordy. Shout out on the Shawn Michaels reference, San Antonio. Hey, just, uh, that, just, that, so no, here in Omaha, some, the only pay-per-view we've ever had, he literally ripped off Mad Dog Vashon's leg and hit Diesel with it. Uh, I got food poisoning that day and threw up all over the Civic Auditorium. It was awesome. I was eight. Many people have thrown up all over the building. I did it sober, though. It's a claim not a lot of people can make. My dad snuck us into the building. We weren't even supposed to be there. Good time. So your dad was a... Uh... My dad pulled this move. He walked up to one of the side security guys and handed him five bucks. And you know like, what your dad pulled off of your takes today? Your dad pulled off it. He, he found somebody to create you. Yeah. Yeah. Congratulations, Pop. <laughs> Congrats on the sex. <laughs> so what'd your dad do? Uh, we walk it. So uh, my dad used to do this thing where he thought it was funny and it was never funny because it didn't work, where he would be like, oh, I didn't get tickets to wrestling this year when they would come, right? Yeah. And like... I'm sitting there waiting for the bit because he used to sell cars, so he'd get home a little late. And it's the only pay per view the city's ever seen. And I'm just like looking at him. He's like, "What?" I'm like, "Okay, give me the I didn't get tickets thing." And I just see like the like distress come over his face. I was like, "Oh no, oh no." He's like, "Buddy, I'm really sorry." He's like, "I really didn't this time." He's like, "Let's go drive down there and see if they have." I'm like, "It's been sold out for months." I'm nine. I'm like just the <laughs> most angry I've ever been in my entire life. So we drive worst down there. day ever. <laughs> we drive down there. He looks at we're walking. At, we, we stopped and got fast food. And I'm not going to say for where because I don't want to bury somebody. Uh, but we stopped and got fast food. We, oh, oh, OK. We, we, food we poisoning. Yeah, we we pull up to the building. He looks at me and I've never seen him be more serious in my life. He goes, don't say a bleeping thing. I went, OK, walks over to this guy working the side door at the Civic and hands him a five dollar bill. He goes, can I just walk in and buy my kid a, one of those replica belts? We'll walk right back out. Guy kind of looks around and goes, yeah, but make it quick. So I'm talking to my dad, and he's clearly not paying attention to what I'm saying. He's looking over his shoulder, staring at this guy. The guy looked away for maybe two seconds. He, like, hooked my collar and drugged me up the old uh, ramps at the yeah. Civic. We go up to the top of the stairs, and I'm, I'm not even kidding. We get to the top of this ramp, and I just blow chunks all over the floor. Like, we literally have been in the building eight seconds. <laughs> and he, like, he just looks at me. He's like, what the hell? And I was like, I, I, I don't know. Like, I felt fine. How can we sneak in when you're blowing our car? Yeah, yeah. So uh, this lady comes over. She's like, oh, don't worry. I'll get it. He's like, oh, yeah, I'm sorry. He's like ushering me away as fast as he can from all these security guards to this building we just snuck into. We get around the corner. He's like, are you okay? I'm like, yeah, I'm fine. He's like, let's go in the bathroom for a second. We go in the bathroom. I lose it again. He's like, all right, well, let's go home. And then somebody's music hit. And I was like, oh, we're not leaving. And then we just <laughs> walked around the building for the next two hours. Thanks, Dad. Thanks, Pops. Yeah. Dad played dice downtown as well. Yeah, I also helped him uh, hold the ladder when we stole cable one time. Like my dad was, my dad was a shyster. <laughs> my father likes son. I thought you were gonna say something right. like, uh, you know, the uh, people with your last. I mean, wish if you're if you're gonna do that, I mean, you gotta. Everybody has like a famous place where they've done that outside of a bar next to a dumpster in Jim yeah. Rose's car. Nice. <laughs> one of the basketball tournament in Kansas Just City. Sneak it in there. Uh, I was sick as a dog for like the next yeah. 12 hours. It was awful. Well, it was quite an experience that you've never forgotten. It's worth every minute, though. Got to oh. see uh, Shawn Michaels versus Diesel, and the British Bulldog came out and wanted to fight him. It was great. Good times. Uh, Sam McEwen brought up something earlier. <laughs> nice pivot. I'm trying. But, you know, when you when you say blow chunks and I have to talk about Sam, that's kind of an odd <laughs> a pivot. Um, he was talking about running back. So today they have uh, a little brief... Uh, media availability to watch practice. It's week three down in Lincoln. Uh, we still have a couple more weeks before the uh, spring game. But he brought up a running back. So you asked a question about him, and I thought his response was interesting because I think running back was one of the poorest positions coached last year. I, I, I it, The rotation, the development, the knowledge just was off kilter. I know there were injuries involved, and when you lose Irvin and you lose Ramir Johnson and you don't expect Emmett Johnson to be the focal guy at the end of the year, I get all of that, but even when guys were healthy, I don't think it was a position that was well coached. And he said something, and because the question was to Sam, what do you think you'll see in week three? What's the narrative? And he said, I think you'll see some urgency out of running backs. Mm -hmm. Well, I'm worried about that position. Well, the head coach has brought him up unsolicited. Well, because to, to we, po uh, we, we clamor for a, a three-down back. We want a bell cow. When Ryan Held was here as the running back coach and he talked about bell cow, we all went and bought bells, yeah, and cowbells, and we 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 rang them on the air because we were looking for that uh, you know that bell cow, um, and that's been a at a place that has been known for its eye backs, and it's been a while since Nebraska has had a big time running back where you went that's a hammer Rex to Amir Halu to Rex to Amir was we were spoiled yeah Divine jumped in and said hello how are we all doing but it was brief 
I mean, he he was on the milk carton for the majority of his career. So I'm listening to Dowdell, who they would they would like to have take over the the RB one. Emmett Johnson's in play, but you have Irvin, who man, I don't know how he comes back from that injury, and he has been injury prone. I was gonna say which and one. I know we love him. I I, I can't ride with Amir Johnson because I don't know what you're gonna get out of him, and I don't know what they want to do with him. And it's wild that he's going into his sixth year, and he's still on the list of well, what happens if he does this? I think we're confused and we don't know what to do with Ramir, and he's just a really nice guy that can be a guy here and there. I, I think it's well past that he'll ever be like a major impact guy at running back. And then you have Ives, which is, you know, spinning a little bit, trying to get his feet on the ground and be out there consistently. I'm I'm worried a little bit about running back. I just whether it be depth or what they want somebody to do. I just that that's I think that's going to be a work in progress all the way up to the UTEP game. Is it a matter of uh, you've got so many different types of bodies in that room that you don't necessarily have one guy that can do everything? So it leaves so much of a spin the wheel to see who you put in this situation type scenario. I, a little bit, but I also think it's doesn't it feel like okay? We don't want Emmett Johnson to be the number one guy, but we do realize that Emmett Johnson probably does everything what we, we what we need. But he's not the wow guy that's a home run hitter. But is he our best option? I think in this case is Dowdell is learning how to play running back instead of just being a running back. And that's where EJ Barthol, show me what you got in coaching chops, is teach guys how to be a running back. Not just they played running back and they have the body to do it. And so you just bang into other bodies and you get five, six yards and maybe you get a seam and you get a house call. You got to learn how to be a running back to be on the field for three downs. It might be more of a us than a them that we go, man, can Nebraska get a three down back? And they're going, I just want a running back that can do what we ask, where I can have my star quarterback turn left, turn right, hand off, and they can read a hole, get skinny in a hole, or understand what they're doing, or catch a pass out of the backfield, because Nebraska will run a lot more stuff wheel routes, bubble screens, all that kind of stuff where they utilize the running back catching the ball because they have a quarterback that can play pitch and catch. I don't know. I think the running back position for the next three weeks is something to to watch to see if somebody emerges. But at depth. Well, I think they're going to be the asked Kwan, to pass Kwan, block more the, this year, too. Juan Lacey was going to be that guy. That's that's a yeah, that's, that's the an biggest unfortunate miss. decommit. That's the biggest miss so far, the Matt Rule era. I, 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 and I, I think from a standpoint of you talk about your your quarterback turning left and right and guys knowing where they're going, but I, I more than that, I think they're going to be asked more to pass block this year and need to know assignments more, and that's something they really weren't asked a ton of last year. And it's just com- a complete philosophy change. Uh, Walter says, yeah, Gabe Bourbon, 95 carries, 414 yards. Nice guy, works hard, injury prone. Right. And, and, and he's overcome one major knee injury. He's got to co- overcome another major injury. I just... I'm at the point where some guys are injury prone and you can't, you can't trust them where when you check in every Saturday that they're going to be available for you. I mean, I want a ride or die guy where I can ride that guy and he's an 18 carry a game guy. He can stay on the field, wants to stay on the field. I don't have to worry about that. That's why it's so important in this, the, the class of 25 is to get the next Kawan Lacey, which you had, which I was enamored with. I thought he was absolutely the guy that we have been wanting for a long time. He decommitted, ended up at Mizzou. Um, Parker kind of looks like that yeah, guy, ironically, to, uh... goes to high school in the state of Missouri. Um, but Dowdell's got three weeks to to show that he is learning how to be a running back instead of just playing running back. So, we'll see, DJ th- Barthel. But I like I liked when Sam said EJ Ur- Barthel's coaching with urgency. I'm like, good, yeah, because he needs to. So you you said something interesting there. When we talk about a running back getting 18 carries and being that guy, with what we saw out of this uh, out, of, out of this offense last year, and obviously that that was bare bones and skeleton crew style offense, but with, with the addition of Dylan Raiola and and the talk about the wide receivers and the explosive plays, do you think they want one guy to carry the ball 18 times? Like I, I think I would be surprised by that. I mean, I have a running back by committee. If you had a running back by committee, who would be your committee right now? I I I think I, mean, I don't Dowdell would be one of them. Emma Johnson, yeah, Emma would, be Johnson other, would be two. But... Yeah, if and Ramirez kind of been that by committee guy his entire career at Nebraska. He gets buried on the depth chart and somehow finds his way somewhere to the top by the end of the season, usually because of injuries. 
but I, I just I, I think they would rather have a couple of guys that are better at different things and and be able to utilize them down the stretch versus one guy that can I'm, just tilt the rock. I mean, you were there on Saturday. The reality with where Nebraska is at running back right now, and and this is a good discussion to have in spring because there's a long time between spring and when you kick off against UTEP. 144 days. Not thank, that I'm counting. Thank you very much. Yeah, you're welcome. I appreciate that. I used to be the countdown guy. I Googled it. And when then I, I realized the that, that life is going fast, man. I can't believe that it's April 9th. Is the 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 current situation at running back in Nebraska that maybe you kind of want to admit it loud, but you don't? It's not great. Is your most complete running back? Might be a guy who I would actually like to see a little bit more, but he's technically a walk-on, is Maurice Mazuka. And he got called out by his head coach on Saturday, well, too, as a guy that they really that, like. There's sometimes coaches say stuff that you have to listen pretty closely on and then go, why is he referencing him? He's a guy who played a little bit last year, but he's got the look, a really, really good body, guy that seems to always, always work hard. You see drills, and he's a guy that go, man, I don't have my program with me. I don't recognize that guy. I mean, when they brought him up in their current situation of running back, I think that says a lot. I had two coaches I mean, ask he, he me might, who he was on Saturday, by the way. Specifically, it was like, hey, have you seen this running back kid? Well, you would see him like if you if you got into the stadium early, you know, and you'd see running backs work. He's a guy that you would look at. You would have you, you wouldn't go, oh, that guy must be a walk on. Must yeah, be a guy. Like must one. be a guy that started his. You know, uh, he's he's not a walk on. He, he's a guy that's probably they got him out of high school. No, he's a walk on that played somewhere else before he got here. So, see if that name comes up again, because he's been here. And his brother's here now. Um. See if his name like this week comes up again. Yeah. And I think what is today? Today is offensive guys, right? No. Uh, defensive guys. Ed Foley and Evan Cooper. Yes. All right. Well, it, I, I I'm glad that I'm glad that Sam referenced the word urgency when it comes to running backs because they're very much a work in progress on offense. That would be nice to have that to be the least of your concern is who is your running back. Z- is is that your biggest concern on offense right now? Because for me, I th- I think it is. I, th- I, I it's pretty obvious who your quarterback's going to be. It sounds like you've gotten your wide receivers to take that next step and be the guys that specifically the transfer guys that you thought you were going to be getting through the portal. And it just kind of feels like the running back room is. Eh, we'll see what happens. That's uh, not a good situation to be in. No, and it wasn't. It just it wasn't overall from coaching to playing. I don't think a good spot last year that has to be better this year because that can't be a weak link. Um, it can be if, as long as it's average and contributing, but it can't be a weak link in this offense. Yeah. Cause I mean, when we talk about the lack of closing out games, that's usually from a lack of a running game. And that's kind of been Nebraska's MO. Cause I think they will be better on the offensive line. I, I think there will be, there's, there, there's a whole part of better quarterback play. will make some guys, better and you will go whoa what where did he come from like Jalen Lloyd is a prime example Jalen Lloyd is really good Jalen Lloyd had too much speed for poor quarterback play where what Jalen three of his four catches were explosive plays he had house calls but he's a guy that ran routes properly didn't have to be told that no you don't you don't cut off a route too early and usually I mean, won that route. Difference by the between way. him and Jalen Lloyd, Jalen Lloyd, and Malachi Coleman last year in their craft, noticeable. But you didn't have a guy that can complete the football to a guy that that matched Lloyd's skill set. Now you have a quarterback that can match what Jalen Lloyd does well, and you're going to go, "Oh wow!" Well, he's been there. Now he's got a quarterback. I think there will be an offensive line as a group that, because of different quarterback play and decision making, and the clock ticking in their head. You will go, well, that guy really wasn't as bad as we thought. There'll be other wide receivers. There'll be a tight end. But what will it do to a running back? The one thing I like. I mean, play- what it's going to do also. I mean, let yeah, me good. finish it. It will make Matt Rule better. The one thing that I like. I think that- Matt Rule needs to be better in situational football. A quarterback that doesn't ride you through a roller coaster will help you in that category as well. And when Glenn Thomas talked the other day, he, he brought up the fact that he really liked how polished Tony White's defense is because his young quarterbacks have to play within the rules of their system. And I think a lot of that excuse me, has to do with the fact that 
they like a situation where if they're calling something, they know exactly where their pieces are going to be on on the field. And it's it's going to help young quarterbacks. But to your point, it's going to help that offensive yeah. line that at times struggled with pass yeah. pro. This is the fun exercise. Listen to some of the stuff that Satterfield said last year that Glenn Thomas is saying this year that actually is a strength. So one of the things Satterfield said last year, and I think he said this publicly, I know I was there when he said, we need the football to go where we're, where we're calling for the football to go. I can't call plays when I don't know where the football is going. I want the football to go here. It's not going here. I can't call plays. Glenn Thomas says something like that. All you need to know about the difference between the 23 collection of quarterbacks and the 24 collection of quarterbacks. It's pretty simple. Yeah, and it's one of those things you've actually got quarterbacks playing quarterback too. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and, and that absolutely helps. You don't have a, a running back playing quarterback. You don't have to worry yeah. about uh, about improvisation when when you don't need it. And you've got a guy now that, to what you brought up yesterday, can well, throw into you, the wind and beat coverage. Well, don't, you, don't you think it's just it, they're, they're running a normal offense? And when was the last time we were able to say that in Lincoln? Like where where you turn on a game a game on Saturday and you go this looks like a college football offense. Well, there have been times. I'm just saying last year was the skill set at the quarterback position didn't allow you to run a normal offense, or because of being let down by a quarterback who you built your offense around and what you wanted to look like wasn't there, and so you had to pivot and you were not built to. They were not built last year to go to plan B right away with the in- entirety of the offense, whether yeah. they be wearing headsets or helmets. You, this year, this year, it doesn't matter who the quarterback is. The offense will look the same in your top two quarterbacks. You, you brought up B.J. Barthel and like the ability to coach guys to play running back, and I'm not trying to buy anybody extra time or make excuses, but do you give the coaching staff kind of a, as a whole, especially on the offensive side of things, a little bit of a pass for last year because of, of the hole they were kind of in to start the season? I don't know. There are a lot of those guys, though, Jimmy, that they showed every guy, every guy, a position coach last year at Nebraska probably had one poster child in their room that they could go. That's the guy that I've developed. OK, that guy, when we took over Tommy Hill, for example, yep. Tommy Hill is That's a, exactly those things. Tommy Hill's like the that. poster child of what they're trying to do. Guy that stuck around. Previous staff didn't really know what to do with him. They said, hey, go play wide receiver. And he walked around and went. How? What do I do? Yeah. <laughs> but stuck around, and they said, your skill set is better suited to come back over to defense and play. But then the culture and the development part mesh together where you could be, you know, am I in? Am I out? All of a sudden, you're in, and you're playing, and we're developing you. You're still giving us the full Tommy Hill experience, but it seems like the the roller coaster has slowed down a little bit, and now... The year two, where I, I think the development project for Nebraska, year two is becoming like the year, is in year two, Tommy Hill is, I mean, he could he could fit the role of, of Newsom as a lockdown cornerback. Did you, did you think you'd be saying that midway through last year, looking at the Tommy Hill experience, which gave you the good, the bad, the ugly, maybe all in one series? So, but every position, that one guy, I don't necessarily think that isn't running back. Emmett Johnson is what you're going to say right away. What about him? I think Emmett Johnson was that good. Dude. He just hadn't been given an opportunity because he was buried on the depth chart, and he got the opportunity. The poster child this year will be either Dadell teaching him how to be a running back and not just be built like a running back, and then the next step that Emmett Johnson takes. I don't think you had that in the running back room last year compared to every other position. And, and I'm going to put quarterback aside. Everything we've heard about Dante Dadell sounds like he it's still pretty behind the curve, though. So, I, I mean, obviously, you've got a long time. We talked about 144 days before Retep gets here, but I don't know if that's going to be the guy that you're going to be able to hang out on. No, I'm, I think he's been in his career of, hey, here's the football, you're fast, and you can run. Oh, I mean, you can't just you know, draw up a play and go, hey, on this play, we're just going to hand it off to you, and you go do what you got to do. Yeah, you got to understand yeah. the concept. All right, 34 past the hour. BC's coming up in uh, an hour with his uh, observations on what's going on in Lincoln uh, today as week three of uh, Spring Bowl uh, kicks off. Uh, we'll see what he's looking at, what narrative is out there. 
Uh, we'll get some emails and some uh, tweets when we uh, come back. It's mornings with Sharp and Hanley. Jimmy Allen sitting in on 1620 The Zone. Hey, the spring game is right around the corner. It's now uh, less than three weeks. Hopefully the weather's going to be fantastic on that Saturday in Lincoln, America. And you want seats? You want seats to go see your favorite team. A lot of baseball today. Warner Park, 1205. You got Omaha and Creighton over at Tal Anderson at 6. There's a lot of stuff going on. Also, concert shows. Tickets for Less is the place to go. Local TFL. And as you know, if you dealt with ticketsforless.com or you've heard my experience or other people's experiences, always upfront pricing, transparent, and zero per ticket fees when you get to check out. That's right. You don't get to check out and you go, oh, wow, the fees cost more than the actual tickets. Not with ticketsforless.com. It's pretty simple. And don't forget, to get an even better deal on your next order, when you go to the checkout, put in the promo code the zone, all one word, the zone, and you're going to be cooking with some peanut oil. With ticketsforless.com, do it today. Ticketsforless.com, your place to go for the best shows, the best sporting events, the best concerts, all right there. Ticketsforless.com. Gary Sharp, Nick Hanley, and Jimmy Chavez. Mornings with Sharp and Hanley, weekdays 6 to 10. 1620 The Zone and 1620TheZone.com. Your Omaha area forecast from the Godfather's Pizza Weather Center and KETV News Watch 7 on 1620 The Zone. A beautiful spring day on the way. Tuesday, expect mostly sunny skies, wind out of the west, just 5 to 15 miles per hour with highs in the upper 60s. I'm meteorologist Sean Everson from KETV Newswatch 7. 1620 The Zone Traffic. From the Pyramid Roofing Time Saving Traffic Center. A couple accidents to report one at 31st Street southbound at McKinley. This has the right lane blocked currently. The other, I 80 westbound at I Street with cars off the road. Proceed with caution in both of these areas. Dodge east and westbound, both moving pretty slow right now. Eastbound between 180th and 168th, and westbound between 108th and 120th. Please remember to stay safe and wear that seatbelt. Have a great rest of your Tuesday. I'm Peter Krenzer. Time saving traffic is brought to you by Pyramid Roofing. If you've seen the light trucks with Rufus the Spotted Dog, then you know about Pyramid Roofing. Spring's almost here. Replace your siding, windows, roof, or gutters. Call Pyramid Roofing at 402-502-9300 or visit PyramidRoof.com. Never settle for less. My taco pie is really something special, and it can't be imitated. It starts with my zesty taco sauce. Seasoned beef, onions, lettuce, tomatoes, mounds of cheddar, and mozzarella cheese. This pie is the real deal. For a limited time, build your own feast with a specialty pizza. Like my taco pie, a one-topping pizza, and cinnamon monkey bread. Do yourself a favor and order. Today, Godfather's Pizza. Do it. Oh, 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 O'Reilly. Check engine light on? Take the guesswork out of your check engine light with O'Reilly Veriscan. It's free and provides a report with solutions based on over 650 million vehicle scans verified by ASE certified master technicians. And if you need help, we can recommend a shop for you. Ask for O'Reilly Veriscan today. Oh, 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 O'Reilly. Auto Parts. I've never seen this. John Deneen from Saul's Jury and Loan. I've never seen the price of gold as high as it is right now, which means you could be sitting on a gold mine yourself. Bring us in your broken gold chains, gold rings, and diamond jewelry. You'll never get a better price for those items. Saul's knows jewelry, and we've been around, and we've never seen gold this high. Sell your gold with confidence at Saul's Jewelry and Loan at any of our six convenient locations. Find it all at Saul's, Saul's Jewelry and Loan. You'll find it all at Saul's, Saul's Jewelry and Loan. Are you the decision maker in your company? Consider this. For the first time in decades, there's a better option for a corporate card and spend management platform. Meet Ramp, the only corporate card and spend management system designed to help you spend less money so you can make more. Most corporate credit cards offer points as incentives, but those points amount to less than their worth in real cash value. Ramp's corporate cards offer you cash back, real money in your pocket. Plus, you control who spends what with each vendor. And Ramp software collects and verifies receipts automatically, which means you'll stop wasteful spending and close your books in hours instead of days. Businesses that use Ramp add up to 5% to their bottom line the first year. If you're a decision maker, adding Ramp could be one of the best decisions you've ever made. 
And now, get $250 when you join Ramp. Just go to ramp.com slash sports. Ramp.com slash sports. R-A-M-P dot com slash sports. Cards issued by Sutton Bank and Celtic Bank members of DIC terms and conditions apply. There's no better thing than to help others in their time of need. John Bishop here to invite you to be an organ and tissue donor at goodguyssavelives.com. Anyone can register, regardless of age or medical condition. Donor hearts and lungs save lives. Donor tissue makes recovery from surgery easier. Next time you renew your license, check that organ and tissue donor box or visit goodguyssavelives.com. Learn more about organ donation today and see how you can save eight lives at goodguyssavelives.com. The Zone Hotline is powered by 42 Degrees, the source, by your mom's house. Now back to Mornings with Sharp and Hammond on 1620 The Zone. You guys know that uh, Danny Hurley is only 51. He's going to be around for as long as he wants to be, folks. He, uh, He's uh, got a lot of t- uh, gas left in his He uh, he said uh, in an interview that surfaced yesterday that he coaches like George Brett charging after uh, Tim McClellan in the <laughs> Pine Tar game at Yankee Stadium. And George Brett is his idol. Uh, Should ask him about the crab legs at the Bellagio sometime. Uh, former co <laughs> former co host of mine, uh, George Brett. W- nope, walked, Tim McClellan <laughs> walked up to <laughs> George Brett. All out. W- walked up to George Brett and asked him for his autograph at Rosenblatt one time, and told him to get lost. He was trying to get a date. <laughs> it was some blonde lady sitting next to him. While he was playing? No, he was uh, just in the stands. <laughs> he should have been like, "What have I told whoa, you?" That's whoa, my whoa, mom. Whoa, hold on here. Hold on here. I might I might debunk this. <laughs> When was this? Rob Love, 402 951. So this was after his playing career? Uh, I believe he was injured and on a stint in Omaha and was in the stands. Is this well before like he retired? Yes. Okay, because yeah. he got he got, he got married. married. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. This was during his playing career. All right. I secondhand story. I wasn't there, but that's what I was talking about. I, I, I could see that. George now was signed for a lot of people, but he is a little sarcastic. Make fun <laughs> no. of your weight. Ran into that one time, and I'm like, hey, F you. <laughs> <laughs> Would you fight George Brett? No. Oh, okay. No, we must protect George Brett at all costs. It's a national treasure. Yes. Yes. He's a man that wants one thing from the K when they blow it up, and that's a urinal. I want a trough in my man cave. I was just going to say, All he yeah. wants is a urinal. I mean, I, I think it would be fantastic. I would love to go to somebody's house, and their bathroom is like they have a, they have a separate for the ladies. They have a separate for the men. But they have a urinal. Authentic South not like a, Not like troughs. a toilet, but they have a urinal. If you could they have, have, but you'd have to have both. Like you know, like now you go to you go to restrooms and they'll give you both options. If you could have one piece of memorabilia from a stadium, any stadium ever, what would it be? South Stadium urinals, of course. <laughs> no, it's the last thing I would want. Um, it's a lot of history, a lot of wins. You can keep them. <laughs> uh, I don't know, maybe uh uh. Part of the wall at Wrigley that has ivy on it. Ooh, yeah. I put that in my backyard. That would be pretty cool. I'm trying to th- like, maybe maybe like the original dugout seats from the original Yankee Stadium. That's something that that would do nothing for me. The one that's with the blue padded. Yeah, yeah, those are awesome. <laughs> that was when the Yankees were relevant, right? It's been a long decade, Gary. That's okay. That's okay. Um, I was. Yesterday, this popped in my head when I was driving home. I was thinking about you guys. We had a good discussion Thanks. about uh, John Calipari leaving. And nothing's official today, right? Right. As, as of right now. Mm-hmm. So there are reports that he's finalizing the deal. He's got, a sign on his, he's, he's got a sign on his lawn from the fans in, in Lexington that thanked him for his time. <laughs> I mean, the dog in the stroller and the dog not on a leash so and walking, weird. that was kind of like, uh, okay, I'm, I'm out. Um, and it's... And when it happens, and it kind of crept into the broadcast last night, it's the biggest story in sports. He's leaving a top five job to go to a non-top 15 job. I think Arkansas is in the top 20, and maybe with an investment by the Chicken Nuggets Uh and Jerry Jones, it elevates. But we're talking about a guy that's leaving a top five job in college basketball that he is leaving. At 65, too, which is still a prime age in coaching. 
It looks great. Is it? He's not 65. 70. 65? Man, the the what you're going through as a, a men's college basketball coach with your roster and unlimited it's transfers. It's, and I, it's exhausting. I think 65 and sitting on a beach looks pretty good. Get back to me about 15 years, I'll tell you. I was uh, going to say, is this, but I was uh, thinking, so is this I, breaking news? I, 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 no, <laughs> I do. I wouldn't know what to do. Like I, my, my dad's had a second life in South Florida. Like yeah. as a retired guy, I thought, oh, my dad, my, my dad's going to be in trouble because his whole life has been going to baseball games and scouting baseball mm-hmm. talent and being in that world. And then he retired. I'm like, man, what is he going to do? And he was like, he's still going to baseball games. I'm going to spend all your money is what I'm going to do. <laughs> Thanks, I'm going to be tan. I'm going to wear socks up to my ankles. With Birkenstocks, it's going to be great. No, he does not. My dad's like hip now. It's really weird. He's having like a... A renaissance? Uh, I don't know. That warm yeah, weather. It really, What's his yeah. shoe game like? You. Huh? He's got a good shoe game? Yeah, he's... No, he's, he's the Birkenstocks. I don't know. He's, 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 he's never going to dress super well. Yeah. But he got a he got a lady in his life, and he got remarried, and oh, boy. she changed his fit. What's your dad's name? Walt. Good job, Walt. Good for you. People that know him call him Wally. Okay. Okay. So, but I, I think as you get to that age in, in coaching, I mean, look at Saban. There's a lot of more demands where you just can't coach. Yep. You do we coach? Do we think that that's what happened there? Or do we think there's something else afoot? You're conspiracy guy, so I can't wait for this it, one. It just feels like Saban wants to get. Don't like, beat around the bush. Tell me what you think. Yeah, I think he wants. To, I think he wants to be involved in whatever the Power Conference, SEC, Big Ten thing is. I, I think he wants to be. Do in you not realize that that forward. job has already been taken by Trev Alberts? Yeah. <laughs> Speaking of conspiracy theories, there's one. No, I, I, I just think that he. Why don't I listen to after hours more? I can consume all this when, stuff. Tuesday, uh, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, Mondays. I don't know when you're ever on. Yeah, yeah. when the sports schedule allows. Don't you exactly. hear the commercials? Doing the commercial. One of those special um, nice crispy treats and sit back and enjoy. Yeah, I, uh, I, I just think that he want like for a guy that just feels power hungry, like he just wants to be able to be like, I actually am the face of college football now. Okay, that's a bad take, but that's okay. Why is that a bad take? Explain I, that. I just think I, that I don't think that's what he wants to be. I think when he said what he, what drove him to retirement is exactly what it did. I I don't think he wants to be the he like he likes to talk about college football. We say, hey man, we need a commissioner. Why didn't it be you? I don't know that he wants to fill that role. But if you ask him, this he'll is the tell guy who went to Congress state. to talk about it though. Like, well, because it's not like he just completely ducked he's out. The guy, of it. He's the guy that will speak about issues that are not X's and O's. Yeah, but why does that matter to you if you're not in it anymore? Because you want the the sport to be in a good spot. You don't want more Nick Sabans that are at the height of their coaching career, and they say, nah, "I can't do this anymore. I'm out." You really think that guy cares about that? Yes, man. I I just don't see that for for everything. Like the way he left LSU, the way he left Miami, the way well, he people change. He's he that's cha- that's true. He changed during his career at Alabama. Rocky told us he actually became a softy, and maybe that hurt him in the end. Okay. He became a softie. Take it easy. Nick Saban became a softie. We all do in our old This is age. the same guy that was berating reporters on the sideline two years ago. Excuse me? But he's changed in two years. He grew. Okay. It's so the size of his heart. I mean, I'm, I'm older his now, and I'm tight. the epitome of joy. Wow, Jimmy. People do change. Look at you. I, I agree. I agree they do. Sometimes with 15 rounds of a fight. I think that much. I, yeah, I, I, th- I, th- I think he wants to do something after coaching. And is quote unquote retired. Roll Tide Willie doesn't get a hold of you. But back to what I was trying to say. At Jimmy Allen 1620 on tour. I don't think he listens to our show, but he is on TikTok. Um, <laughs> he'd be perfect for you. There is the hey, when so Shriner yesterday, goes to play uh, pro tennis. I'll just see if he wants to go to show with me. The moving from Kentucky to Arkansas, we used examples yesterday. I went with Jimbo Fisher. You said. Ryan Day to uh, Wisconsin. Uh, Jimmy did. Jimmy did yeah, had I, that. Yeah. Okay. Here's the other thing. As as you get the response from Kentucky about, gosh, thank you for taking them off our hands because we can hit the reset button. We can have a fresh start. You get a guy that we liked. He got us a championship, but now we get to get the next guy. Wouldn't it have in 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 comparing it like bringing it back in here? Wouldn't it be like when, you know, things were starting to get sideways with Bo, but he was still winning? If Miami would have hired Bo. Or Arkansas. And and you would have said, you know what? Oh, man, Bo's leaving. 
Um, go, go get them, coach. Thanks for what you've done here. <laughs> but we get a fresh start. Yeah. Isn't that, isn't that kind of like that's the a pretty good comp? Yeah. Uh, in listen, there's a lot of talk about like, him getting that Arkansas job instead of Bielema after that Big Ten championship game. And I think that would have been maybe a little more disappointing. But the Miami situation is probably where everybody had been like, yeah, this is kind of a good jumping off point for everybody. Let's let's move on and separate. And it, that's what it feels like in Lexington and uh, Fayetteville. Because it kind of feels like despite them being the SEC, you might still have some people that are Kentucky fans that may still be rooting, rooting for Cal. but It's not directly involving Kentucky. And I think that would have been the same case with Bo. I thought about that. You still had some people that were rooting for him at LSU when he went back. Uh, there's still some people that uh, you know take a vested interest in what he's doing in his career. Would like to hear him, maybe. Uh, Those same people that went up to Vermilion when Youngstown State when he was a coach I, at Youngstown exactly State what I was just about was to coaching say. against South Dakota and they went to watch Bo. Uh, yeah, I mean I seen an influx of uh, Penguins gear, not not Pittsburgh, but Youngstown in, in the state. For about a decade. All right, quick break. We'll come back. Uh, Michigan Lance is going to join us. Uh, Brian Christopherson will Florida. join us from uh, Lincoln after uh, practice opens. The uh, the running of the journalists will begin in about 10 minutes. You got a 100-yard dash in the state. Of uh, journalists? Uh, there's some youngins. There's some youngins that got I wheels. BC, I think BC would be in that discussion. I don't think he wants to. Uh, I, if he wanted to. That's if a yeah, I don't, I don't think so. Our friend no. Wilson. I'll go with him. Okay. Yeah, you gotta you gotta focus on the younger ones. It was a couple kids in the room on Saturday that I had no idea who they were, but they were Did very happy them? to be there. No, I, well, I mean, they were sitting around me. Were you wearing your after hours t shirt? Of course, I was. And then, no, I wasn't. I'm not that. On he the had the Letterman on. <laughs> threw chilly. A, threw a polo and some slacks on. I looked looked the part. Whoa, you're gonna you're gonna give us journalists a bad name in the state to cover <laughs> Nebraska football. I think it might had have a been top the best. hat that had press on it. I think I might have been the only person in the room not wearing jeans. By the way. Uh, at least you were. All right. Mornings with Sharp and Hanley. There's Jimmy Allen. By the way, DJ Prophet says crap take. I don't think that was intended for me. Which about what? Anything you said today. Okay. Now we kid because we care because <laughs> Jimmy has had some good moments today. The bell has not rung. Once. Uh no, it, it rang once. And it was a f- toilet, not a bell. Yeah, yeah there's That's a difference. Thing, yeah. There's a difference if you didn't know that. I I have noticed. He's I've brought got it today, though. I got he it. Oh, right oh he has come strong today. That's what I do. I mean, the eclipse has changed your life and your blind dog that's got glaucoma. <laughs> it's been a day. Uh, oh, uh, DJ was in reference to what uh, Happer posted. Oh, okay. All right. So Happer's got crap takes. Uh, it was about my crap take, but full circle. And well, for four hours, you can hear those crap takes coming up. Happer. <laughs> <That's right. laughs> but be nice. That's the Royals half. are winning. I mean, we, we all, we've all been there. Been there, done that. <clears throat> it was about the uh, everybody loves professional wrestling take. That's what the reference was to. Came strong off the top rope. I must give a uh, shout out to uh, the great guys over at uh, Nebraska Prospects Baseball Club. They want to do a uh, chat. Hacksaw Jim Duggan, Junkyard Dog, and the Bushwhackers. My uh, old time wrestlers that you could be you could be tweeting pictures of old time wrestlers. Just start sending him gifts. Yeah. Uh, shout out to uh, my guy at Cordell. That's on the Prospects team. We got things rolling over there. Well, they do a good job. They're friends of the program, not program, but us. They uh, do a really, really good job. Um, all right. We'll uh, quick break. We'll uh, come back uh, with uh, more. Good morning from Sharp and Hanley. Jimmy and Jimmy in the house on 1620 The Zone. More with Gary and Nick after this on 1620 The Zone. A Nebraska craft beers and ciders important to you? Whether you just love Nebraska brewed beers and ciders or you're a full-fledged craft brewery, there are benefits to membership for anyone with the Nebraska Craft Brewers Guild. Their sole mission is to foster and help grow the Nebraska-centric brewing community. Become a member today at Nebraska.beer and help advance the craft beer and cider industry in the state of Nebraska. Find out more about the Nebraska Craft Brewers Guild at Nebraska.beer. Make the right call. John Lincoln's Leather Call. The home of the brewery. When it's time to replace or repair storm damage, make the right call. John Higgins Weather Guard, the local, trusted, and proven choice. No one has installed more Da Vinci roofs, and there's a reason why John Higgins Weather Guard is the nation's leader. Community member, community supporter. Make the right call. John Higgins Weather Guard, the home of the rooferies. Make the right call. Hi, this is Doug Nodgard with Equitable Bank. Great service never goes out of style. 
When the digital age dawned, many said computers would be able to handle many of the interactions that used to take a person. Boy, were they wrong. How many times have you called your bank and gotten a recording to press one or two? Not at Equitable. Not only does Equitable answer your call in the first ring, it's answered by a human being. That's because Equitable Bank values its customers. Equitable Bank. We take banking personally. Member FDIC. News Talk 1290 Coil is your radio home for Omaha Storm Chasers baseball. Proud AAA affiliate of the Kansas City Royals. Tune in to hear every pitch, every hit, and every out as the Chasers play at Warner Park and across the International League in 2024. With the voice of the Omaha Storm Chasers, Nick Batters, on News Talk 1290 Coil. Tune in at 1290 Coil all season long for your Omaha Storm Chasers baseball as they take on the International League. It's Storm Chasers baseball on 1290 Coil. Are you the decision maker in your company? Consider this. For the first time in decades, there's a better option for a corporate card and spend management platform. Meet Ramp, the only corporate card and spend management system designed to help you spend less money so you can make more. Most corporate credit cards offer points as incentives but those points amount to less than they're worth in real cash value. Ramp's corporate cards offer you cash back, real money in your pocket. Plus, you control who spends what with each vendor, and Ramp's software collects and verifies receipts automatically, which means you'll stop wasteful spending and close your books in hours instead of days. Businesses that use Ramp add up to 5% to their bottom line the first year. If you're a decision maker, adding Ramp could be one of the best decisions you've ever made. And now, get $250 when you join Ramp. Just go to ramp.com slash sports. Ramp.com slash sports. R-A-M-P dot com slash sports. Cards issued by Sutton Bank and Celtic Bank. Members of DIC terms and conditions apply. How powerful is Cox Fiber? Powerful enough to let your band members in Vegas, Phoenix, and Omaha jam like you're all in the same garage introducing cox fiber from the company with the fastest download speeds eight years in a row it's internet built for tomorrow today cox always building better limited availability in select areas speeds vary and are not guaranteed cox terms and other restrictions may apply analysis by ukulele speed test intelligence in las vegas omaha phoenix fixed media download speeds q2 2016 to q3 2023 hey baseball fans join the blur tailgate at hilton omaha this june for our 12th annual hospitality event during the college baseball championship series book an experience for your clients or employees with an inclusive bar, buffet, TVs, music, and tailgate games. Secure your spot today and let Blur Events take care of all the work so you can enjoy the day. Plus, we're just steps away from Charles Schwab Field. Visit BlurEvents.com to book your group, buy tickets, or learn about sponsorships. That's BlurEvents.com, your college baseball and football tailgate destination. 1620 The Zone at 1620TheZone.com Now back to mornings with Sharp and Hanley. On 1620 The Zone. All right, finish the discussion about uh, Calipari. Um, yesterday, filmed in a, a, a really, really nice neighborhood in Lexington. Like, that's like Millionaire's Row uh, is where he lives. So it's probably not uh, out of the ordinary to see somebody with a stroller and a dog. Uh, as you two dog people, I got questions here. Not First of all, I think it's cool when... Dogs are named after human names. Like your dog is named Fred. Calipari's dog is named Paul. After I have Chris. a follow-up question. I have a follow-up question of where did the name come from? Because, you know, I, I want meatballs and applesauce, and you guys are naming them like George, Ted, Phil. Uh, I just thought Fred looked like a Fred. He's got like a very okay. human-looking face, so we went with a, a standard name. Uh, Paul, I wonder if it's uh, he's a... Uh, Alabama fan at heart. A big Paul for, Shirley fan. Bear. Oh, okay. <laughs> Back to our conspiracy theories yep. from Jimmy. There you go. I, I don't judge. I don't know that I can trust a, a guy pushing a dog stroller. I own a dog and a stroller. But the, they've so, never maxed. So the, the stroller is just if the dog gets tired, right? Yeah. Okay. Well, and the only other thing that I'll, I'll give him is if, a do- if his dog has some ailments like joint problems. They're old. Okay. I got a little corgi. I mean, it was a little. Yeah, I didn't see little, what the dog looked. It was a little fluff dog. I don't know what the name of that thing. Their is. Their little legs a get thing. tired as they get older. Yeah, so that's why you have the stroller. Mm, yeah. Okay. And I'll I'll give him a slide. It's like for the that. carts at Walmart. I mean, they're there, and not everyone needs them, but sometimes you need one. I was trying to see if I could find a picture of said dog, and I can't. Uh, yeah. I mean, I don't know. My dog's got joint problems, and I've never put him in a stroller, and he's fine. Joints wise. You think we'll ever get back to a point within college men's basketball <laughs> where? 
the players are the stars and not the coaches? Because uh, we just we're, we're on the women's side, it's about the players. It is all about the coaches are the stars in men's college basketball these days. I get it, the one and done, but we haven't since not since like the Big Eight run. We haven't had where coaches are the stars of the sport as much as we have right now. We had that run of like Kevin Durant, Anthony Davis, where there was the big college star, and there really hasn't been since like post that Anthony Davis team. And I, I think that's got a lot to do with it too. Is you've had some one and done guys where you kind of look at the lay of the land and go, "You sure you're a one and done guy?" And I, I think you need that that level of talent. For uh, it it's really makes sense, but you're also getting the Zach Eadies of the world, the Ryan Kalkbrenners of the world that are sticking around for longer, and that's kind of making the, that sh- that paradigm shift back to the players too. Is you're getting these guys that are, are fringe NBA guys that are sticking around and, and becoming a mainstay in college basketball. Because this is the biggest story in sports. I I I, I think it is. You got a, you got a guy that a is at a blue blood. One of the top jobs in the country, maybe the second or third best job, is leaving. Not even not getting fired. He is leaving to go take another job. This is like if Self had gone from Kansas to Oklahoma State. I mean, I know that's his alma mater. That's not my point, but yeah, you just don't see. So I agree with you. This is a big story because you don't see this happen very often. I mean, you'd have to if you wanted making a, a comp of a a player would be like a, I don't know. Um, Let's say Zach Eady. Zach Eady's got an extra year of eligibility left, and he goes to Nebraska. It checks out in the comparison here. Um, yeah, I, I guess that's fair. Uh, maybe even uh, an actual one that's happened is the Hunter Dickinson thing. I mean, Michigan to Kansas is probably a jump up, but it's one of those things you're leaving for uh, a, a big time program for another big time program. It didn't really get the run of, of and obviously Cal's yeah. a bigger name, but what we're talking about today. Uh, Jimmy, I just realized this because I, I went down the rabbit hole of looking at these way too early college basketball <laughs> polls. Again, USA Today has Creighton as seventh. They also have Alexander and Kalkbrenner coming back. Uh, Athletic has them 20. Fanta has them 16. Uh, all with the cachet of, hey, if such and such doesn't come back, if they won't, both, you know, both don't come back. Um, Dewan Harris is going to be the new Perry Ellis, isn't he? Seventeen year career. Dewan yeah, Harris, I was going to say, is Dewan Harris seven can yeah. have another year at KU. Yeah. Perry Ellis really? was the Caldwell Jones of Kansas basketball. What did he do? Win the national title a couple years ago as an eighth grader? Yeah. <laughs> oh yeah. Is this how, his, how so? Much? This would be his COVID year. I believe so. So he's got well, he's a redshirt senior. So that's five. His COVID year is six. Yeah. What, wouldn't the, but I thought he wouldn't this be isn't this his seventh season? That's what he's saying. Okay, yeah, I was I, I was I thought that I nil so. hits different down there. So and, and that's that's the great equalizer now, right? In like, his defense, it, it's a football school, so he just wants to see what happens <laughs> this fall. <laughs> but he is he is coming back, right? Look at Looks you. like it. Uh, as a sophomore, in, uh, 21 22 was on the, the on the national championship. Oh, it wasn't when he was in eighth grade. Yeah, no. wanted to clarify so that. that. It was fourteenth grade. Uh, yeah, but I mean that that's. I think it says a lot about these these programs that they're willing to spend the money to keep guys too, and because they know what they're getting. Yeah, it's it, it's one of those things that yeah, you could put all the money you want into uh, going out and recruiting eighth, ninth, tenth, eleventh, twelfth graders, but if you can get a guy that you you have stability and you trust and you know he knows your system, that's I think that's where the most money's going to end up going. That's why George Allen didn't want rookies. Uh, when we come back, a uh, couple of emails on what we just talked about because there is, you know, we're we're in portal comeback season. Uh, Nebraska, Creighton, Omaha—they're all trying to redo their roster. The fan investment becomes a discussion, but also is Fred Hoiberg because I, I think I think the guy downtown has done a good job of adjusting to the way you do business in college basketball. <laughs> yeah, he gets it. Fred might be because Fred invented the business, and then the business model changed. And he came back to run the business, maybe a little bit slower to adjust to the new business of college basketball until this year. A uh, couple of emails on uh, that and uh, a wrestling email about when you became a fan of the sport. We'll get into that. Uh, sport of Kings. In the na- next hour. Can't wait for the crossover. Uh, Brian Christopherson from Lincoln, where <laughs> practice is open uh, right now as we speak. 
Dylan Raiola just threw a dart 35 yards down the field to a streaking wide receiver. Not sure who that wide receiver is. Hey, don't take it for granted. It's mornings with Sharp and Hanley on 1620 The Zone. Mornings with Sharp and Hanley returns in minutes on 1620 The Zone. Live from the Host Coffee Studio, this is 1620 The Zone. 1620 The Zone. Traffic. From the Pyramid Roofing, Time Saving Traffic Center. All earlier accidents have been cleared. No new accidents to report currently. Just some slower traffic dodge westbound, still lingering between 108th and 120th. Other traffic around the Omaha Metro has thinned out as the morning has gone on. Just remember to stay safe and wear that seatbelt. Have a great rest of your Tuesday. I'm Peter Krenzer. This time saving traffic was brought to you by the Nebraska Lottery. The Nebraska Lottery has raised over $978 million, which has helped provide more than 117,000 college scholarships, save wildlife habitats across the state, and fund new facilities at the Nebraska State Fair. The Nebraska Lottery, helping to build a better Nebraska. When you keep a car for a long time, it becomes a classic. When you keep your air conditioner for a long time, it becomes, well... Let's just say it doesn't get better with age. Call Standard Heating and Air Conditioning and have your old air conditioner checked out. If it's needed, you can have a brand new carrier air conditioner installed in no time with fast and easy financing. When the other company sends salesmen, Standard sends qualified technicians. It's just part of the way we do the things we do. Carrier, turn to the experts. 42 Degrees invites you to a tour of our botanical offerings during the limited time botanical sale. Get huge savings when you stock up on premium Kratom, CBD, Delta, all up to half off. And our premium cannabis is priced so low it's almost, well, illegal. Don't miss the botanical sale with savings of up to half off on the best that Mother Nature has to offer. 42 Degrees, your destination for top tier cannabis, second to none product selection, and exceptional service. 42 Degrees, by your mom's house. Host is roasting every morning. Host is roasting every day. Since 1972, family owned and locally roasted Host Coffee Service has been roasting the finest coffee for businesses and restaurants. If you're ready to change to a better coffee provider, it's time for Host Coffee. Omaha's best coffee since 1972. Host Coffee is always roasting something good for you. Prescriptions require an online consultation with a healthcare provider who will determine if appropriate restrictions apply. See website for details and important safety information. Subscription required. Price varies based on product and subscription plan. Hey guys, did you know there's a generic form of Viagra that works just the same, but is 95% cheaper? And you can get it online at hymns.com slash radio. Through Hims, you'll get a free medical consultation to determine the ED medication that's best for you. Discreet shipping if prescribed, a 100% online process, and a range of treatment options, including trusted generic alternatives to the name brands, at up to 95% off. ED is personal, and at Hims, so is treating it. Just go to hymns.com slash radio and get connected to a licensed medical provider online for free. With zero copay, no expensive appointments, and no awkward face-to-face conversations. To start your free online visit, you need to go to this exclusive address, hymns.com slash radio. That's hymns.com slash radio for your free online visit. H-I-M-S dot com slash R-A-D-I-O. There's no better thing than to help others in their time of need. John Bishop here to invite you to be an organ and tissue donor at goodguyssavelives.com. Anyone can register, regardless of age or medical condition. Donor hearts and lungs save lives. Donor tissue makes recovery from surgery easier. Next time you renew your license, check that organ and tissue donor box or visit goodguyssavelives.com. Learn more about organ donation today and see how you can save eight lives at goodguyssavelives.com. Tickets for less. Best seats, best prices, no service fees. Shop ticketsforless.com. KOZN Bellevue, Omaha, Council Bluffs. This is 1620 The Zone. And we're back. Mornings with Sharp and Handy. Here's Gary, Nick, and Jimmy on 1620 The Zone. Very sad day after the uh, college basketball season has come to an end. Uh, as we've watched nonstop college basketball for three straight weeks, and we've seen eight commercials that are in a loop. Um, I don't know that I want to see uh, the Apple uh, Don't Let Me Go commercial anymore or uh, What a Pro Wants. The worst commercial what a on pro television. Gets. 
the worst commercial. I'm just very. I'm disappointed in people that do not know who the guy with Chet Holmgren is, because yeah. he because he's going to finish that's, in the top three of MVP that's a sign voting. Of, that's a sign of where the NBA is right now. I didn't, but I also watched the bare minimum of Oklahoma City Thunder. Games. They're really good, man. I know they're a tough. I actually to follow them through him now. He made them and the Beam team. He may be the most exciting yeah, player. Yeah, we got it. We got. We're we're fighting for our lives, Jimmy. Yeah, I know it's not looking good. I man, I I do not feel great about where the NBA is right now. Like, whoa, Jesus! What are you just? What he's are you, canceling what, the NBA. He's doing? coming strong today. <laughs> no, I'm not kidding, Jimmy. Jimmy. What are you just, doing? It, it just, You're like a walking mortuary over there. What are you doing? <laughs> Doom and gloom, baby, all day long. No, I just, I, I, it, it just feels like it's at this point where it's going to become a niche league on the Ocho, just tuning out <laughs> at a bad rate for the cornhole followed by pro basketball the amount of star power the league has right now it should be in a much better spot i don't i don't know how you flip that like when you have somebody that is an avid sports fan who looks at one of the top three stars in the nba and goes i'm not sure who that person is it's not a good sign that's fair like the the shea gilgis alexander the the casual the casual fan because he plays in oklahoma city i I get what you're getting at um because he plays in oklahoma city and they up until this year, and really this year, they haven't been featured that much. I mean, it was a it was but he's the reason they move. Are, it was an interesting move to include those two. Like Holmgren, I liked it. Holmgren because of what he did in college, and because of who you know he's tall gets the notoriety. Yeah, yeah you immediately recognize him. Um, but that could be our MVP he's with. So this is good. Yeah. Get to know him because I think we will get to know him a lot more in the spring. And, and, and maybe that's the answer to what I just said: is you 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 get the notoriety by getting guys so, some deals where. You, Shea Gilgis Alexander isn't uh, an MVP candidate. He's oh, it's the guy from the T-Mobile commercial. That's always good, right? When you can get brand recognition with your it league. starts though. It gets you. Hey, I like For watching sure. this. I liked him in the commercial. I'm gonna watch his team. All right, Alan and uh, Alan Mortuary over there to my left. Alan killed, and Alan, you killed <laughs> one shining moment. Now you've killed the NBA. Mm-hmm. Anything else you want to take a crack at? Christmas music. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> I'm just joking. Uh, the Lego Maniac writes in. So yesterday, mm-hmm. Nebraska gets some depth. Don't just because he was the first commitment out of the portal combat era of this time, do not go, man, he must have been the number one player. He's a good pickup for Nebraska because Nebraska needs rotation of depth. Uh saw him for three years in North Dakota State. Wasn't the best player on North Dakota State's team, who's second team all summit. Good player. Good could be a quality sixth man where you could roll fours and fives and be kind of deep there and also take the minutes off of Mast where he's not playing 35 minutes or whatever and right. you know, that that knee. So, But there is the part of Nebraska beat Minnesota. Nebraska's NIL for basketball is in a better spot. I'm learning through this process of locals being courted. By the way, William Kyle is going to go visit Iowa State when Portal Combat dead period is over. Um, Creighton's NIL is in a good spot. Really, really good spot. Okay, They have, you know, they know their limits and they do that nebraska's is better in basketball because they're learning and there is a little bit more of an investment but they beat minnesota so we all know that the state of minnesota is the land of ten thousand hockey rinks has (laughs) has has and has had just great high school basketball talent i mean people are going to see downtown jackson mcandrew is a dude from wisada in the twin cities He's a dude. He's going to be a freshman next year at Creighton. But Creighton has always recruited the state of Minnesota. Nebraska's dabbled a little bit, but the state of Minnesota has great high school basketball. I watch it all the time in AAU. I mean, they just roll dude after dude after dude, and everybody goes up there and recruits. And then the local school, they're like, hey, how come you couldn't keep this guy and this guy? And they're like, well, Suggs kind of wanted to play somewhere else. Holmgren wanted to play somewhere else. But Nebraska beat Minnesota for a guy that is a Minnesota guy. By and, all reports, is already committed to them too. Well, and if quote unquote, and and you know what, I I don't care if, well, Nebraska got him because they sold him a better of where we're going. If Nebraska got a guy, and that's the guy they wanted because he could fill a role, and they won because of the bag, I'm fine with that because you know what, that's a new way of doing business. And if you don't adjust to a new way of doing business, and you know that in your sport, particularly men's basketball, you got to play it, and you don't want to play it. And you're not going to be along and around. They're going to take your toys away and you're not going to be able to play anymore. So if Nebraska won and it put them ahead because they sold a plan and then they, you know, they greased the wheels a little bit, I'm fine with that because to get what you want, 
that's what you got to do in these day and age. So this is from the Lego Maniac. That's what I'm getting to here in the Equitable Bank inbox. Took you long enough, jeez. <laughs> wow. Go ahead. <laughs> When's neck back? Um, not soon enough <laughs> for me or you. Yes. Okay. Um, he's on a golf course somewhere today. So <laughs> Zach's email is: I, I guess him. I'll believe it when Nebraska starts bringing in studs. So mm. his initial email that I responded to was about Nebraska's NIL for basketball. And he says, I guess I'll believe it when Nebraska starts bringing in studs instead of a bunch of mid-major guys and instead of a bunch of mass 2.0 types. Don't focus on this was the first guy. You know, they got a lot of spots. He wasn't at the top of their board. He was on their board, wasn't at the top of their board. If Nebraska pulls in guys like Hepburn and Bill Yu, I'll start to believe it. And maybe guys like Griffiths, who's from Rutgers, who's going to visit uh, Payne and Ola Joseph. Now, Payne, so Nebraska's in on a couple guys that used to be at Minnesota. Payne's going to go visit Indiana. If Payne is smart where he wants to go as an NBA big man, Indiana's his spot. But he may be visiting Nebraska after he gets done in Bloomington, which is a good sign for Nebraska. Yeah. Omaha Bill you, mm, uh, I'm, I'm, I'm good there. I, I, I think he needs to drop down the level. He's the guy, say, he feels he's the guy that bad. was a five-star, got a lot of height, went to Iowa State, and didn't see the floor. And I was never really enamored with him. Uh, I watched him play a lot of AU basketball because Nebraska was interested in him early. If they fill the same open, seven open roster spots with second-term reserve value and some of the guys, it's just more of the same. What? It's kind of the way of college basketball. Right? No, 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 no. Hold on here. There's a thing called patience. Okay, it's actually in the One Shining Moment song. The ball is <laughs> oh. It's a long season. Got to have some patience before you know. It's early. My gosh. Yeah. Guys, Those guys that he referenced. Like they get lots of open holes. They're chasing guys. Just because Niles. one guy came in and you go, wow, that's a dude with a mullet in the second team summer league. Nebraska sucks. Stop. Stop. Get back to me in June 1. And they're constructing a roster for the guys that benefit them the most instead of constructing a roster for you. Now, they, they got to have some bigs with some athleticism. I would like that. But it's the first guy. Don't, don't think he's the number one guy. Thank you. That's my TED talk. We, I'm going to back to the list. What do we talk about? I love you, Lego Maniac. The, the, the big, need to email the show. The big targets. It, we live in a world now where it's not in their best interest to decide that stuff right away. I mean, you've got to drive the market. And, and if you're looking for the best NIL deal, if you commit to the first place you stop by, you're doing it wrong. So, like, it, it, if somebody commits at this point and they're one of those big guys, something went really, really wrong. Well. So, I, like, the, the the first person you get to the transfer portal now is never going to be the number, probably top five guy on your board. Because that's not how the, how the market works. Right and also remember how this works. Or sometimes you're working behind the scenes. You know, it, it's not as... We don't know as much. In, in recruiting high school kids, we know about visits and they're talking and everything. A lot of portal guys are pretty quiet. They like to handle their own business. They don't want to be recruited again. Okay, They just want to pick a spot. They want to be there. They want to play their sport next year. Yeah. So he's, he's the first commitment, not the top priority. And for Nebraska, he fits a need, not the biggest need yet. It's a long – look at last year when Nebraska guys committed. I mean, this is a long process. I mean, you don't like a quickie. You like it strong out, right? Yeah, I'm, I'm here there for a go. good time, not a long, or a long time, go. not a good time. All right, now on the uh, wrestling discussion, TL3 chimes in. It's the number two trend in the world right now. Is professional wrestling. Let me let me do a little fact check. Uh, yeah, I'm looking right here. You got a fact check. Boom. Your Twitter looks different than mine. Really? It yeah. says world trends. Mine says Scott Drew. He's fourth. Okay. Um, Matt Jones at Kentucky Sports Radio says they will contact Dan Hurley, Billy Donovan, Scott Drew. Dan Hurley said he'd get divorced if he left uh, UConn to go to Kentucky. Um, but TL3 writes in, uh, WWE is a bad Jimmy take. I used to love professional wrestling. I'll tell you exactly what pissed me off to stop watching. Matt Painter. <laughs> <laughs> he goes, I mean, uh, Shane McMahon and Undertaker in a loser leaves WWE match. Ooh, 
I do remember this. Yeah. Several years ago, and the storyline was beyond stupid, and the stipulation was somehow even more stupid. Neither one was leaving, and they didn't. Yes, I occasionally hear what happens, and I'm interested to a point, but my life has oh, so much more. Oh, so you more still like professional wrestling in it? Weird. It. Weird. I would, I would, I would revise Jimmy's statement to almost everyone has enjoyed WWE professional wrestling at some point in their life. That would be fairly accurate in my experience, but I am a guy who hasn't brought up a WWE event in several years because of one of the dumbest matches stipulations in history. But he still pays attention and knows what's going on. Uh, Full circle. Everybody loves professionals. He's got kids. I yeah. would, I would, I, that's that's somebody who was probably probably into the sport and one storyline, which was kind of a weird storyline to begin with. Yeah, very. Met, got you to leave the sport. That's not who good was, on the who sport. Who was this? Who was this person? This is a TL3. 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 I was in Dallas for that event, and that was also the same event where you had people leaving at the main event in protest of Roman Reigns and Triple H being in that main event. So you're, you're not alone in that take. But probably came back for the next pay-per-view the next month because they love professional wrestling. I'm here for you dying on this. Listen, hey. listen you, you have, I, I'm going to support you. You had, you had the... I'm not saying I'll agree. I'm just going to enjoy about, this. Think about the fever pitch of professional wrestling in the 90s, right? With with Austin and Rock and Hogan and Sting, WCW, Monday Night Wars, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. Fake Ultimate Warrior, yeah. You just had, that was the 90s. You, you just had the largest gate for a Monday Night Raw in history. People fall out of love with, we've all been in bad relationships, right? You fall out of love with somebody. Professional wrestling is that love that just continues to draw you back in. If 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 Person the you're product texting at one thirty, you cannot like something, but if the product gets good and you come back to it, you've always loved it. If you walk into a restaurant and get food poisoning, you're never going back there. You don't fall in love with it. It's gonna say if, it sounded like a Casey Musgrave song to me if, there. Yeah, right. If you if, if 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 you go back to a relationship that you've always loved, you never stop loving it. That's what professional wrestling is. Wow. It's a love story. I, I, you're Casanova. I'm, I'm, I'm no in. Casanova. Just call him Taylor Swift because it's a love story. I don't know about you, but I'm feeling 22. <laughs> Brian Christopherson is... Well, ask his favorite Taylor Swift song. No. Is that, uh, is that uh, the trend? I'll say, get up off this chair. I don't feel 22. She's not trending. No, wait a minute. Where are you just making that up? That is not Nebraska's favorite Taylor Swift song. I, I I was gonna, I said is that Brian Christopherson's favorite? Uh, I don't think so. I did not see him at the uh, Taylor Swift concert in July in Kansas City. You went to that? He looked. Yeah. Travis Kelsey invite you? No. Uh, at that point, they were just uh, courting each other from afar. I, it it is one of the most incredible shows I've ever been to. I've heard she puts she, on a great show. She, she sang forty four songs and didn't stop for like three hours. It's a regular boss gags. Uh, that's uh when we went and saw Bre uh. Zach Brown band when they were here. That's they put four hours straight. Just their hits. They played some Metallica. It was great. Yeah, and you don't have to worry about her uh, going to uh, Eric Church's uh, bar in uh, on Broadway. <laughs> Maybe killing a police Chiefs officer and uh, throwing a chair off the uh, sixth floor. Man, it's a party foul. I'm a guy that might end up on professional wrestling. His whole life is professional I wrestling. Gonna, I was going to say he, he he thinks he's already in it. He's trying to hit people with chairs off six story buildings. All right, uh, BC is going to join us here in a uh, little bit tomorrow. We'll uh, we'll get into uh, the full Masters breakdown. Don't forget, the Masters begins on Thursday at Augusta. The weather looks great. Twenty four straight guys. Cuts? We're looking at the eclipse yesterday. Oh, be still my heart. Kind of reminded me of the people that I was looking at the eclipse with yesterday that were around me. At Augusta? No, I was. I, went, I told you I went to Lewis and Clark no. The State people Park. around you remind you of people at Augusta. Yeah, I mean, it was like unity. Oh, I got you. Okay, I didn't know yeah. where you were going there. I mean, some people were waiting for you know, the end of time. It didn't happen. Think about if you live in New York City. You had an earthquake the other day, and then the eclipse. You're like, hmm. It's the end of times. It might be over. Uh, it is not the end of times in, in Tuscaloosa. Nate Oates has addressed the Kentucky situation and said he's not going anywhere. Today. Today. Which whenever just got to work. He's whenever whenever a coach says they're never not leaving, that is never a direct indication that they're probably leaving. Oh, Roy Williams once said he didn't give an S about North Carolina. How'd that turn out? I believe he retired there. Hmm. Ooh, it, hey, it did not go over well in Lawrence back then. I remember. <laughs> yes. All right. Uh, BC's it coming worked up. out for him. For Roy? 
Yeah, both, both for everybody. Well, both parties, yeah, 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 it did. It did. See, it can. It, that guy you got after him's done pretty well. It's okay. It, it can do it that way. Like this is what's happening with Kentucky and Arkansas. It's working out for both sides. But the departure of Calipari is much different from Roy. The um, he's not leaving the for a Roy, blue blue. even though Roy was going home and home. But there was the emotional of where, you know, where KU basketball was at the time. Mm-hmm. They're celebrating in Lexington, which is odd because he hasn't taken the job yet. But he's going to take the job, right? It would be. Would it be the funniest thing ever? If it he would didn't? be Arkansas. Be like, we give up. We have money to spend. Nobody oh. wants to take it. Are people in this Kentucky is, this upset? Is, this has to be happens. a done deal. Has to be. Yeah, I, I don't know. It's how. already the biggest story in sports. It would be even bigger if he stayed. And that's not a good look. But for why? Arkansas, why is it nine twenty four and there has been? Well, John's probably out walking his dog, man. <laughs> He's got stuff to do. He's got to mow the lawn, get his kids all moved. This is yeah, this has to be a done deal, correct? Yeah. Yeah, it's all right. They may be waiting for like the the national championship yeah, that's lured away off. Yeah. I no, 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 no. To Did you not Hurley, see what happened man. Sunday night? Yeah, it was all it was the John Calipari. The guy era. that just won the national championship addressed it sternly last night, was not happy that this leaked out before their game. Yeah, and I don't think you do that by accident. You, you want people talking about this if you're Arkansas. Well, also, it's Kentucky basketball. That too. It's one of the biggest brands in college athletics. All right, BC is one of the biggest brands that covers Husker football for Husker 24-7. Taylor Swift talk coming up next. Mm. <laughs> 1620 The Zone. Gary Sharp, Nick Hanley, and Jimmy Chavez. Mornings with Sharp and Hanley. Weekdays 6 to 10. On 1620 The Zone and 1620TheZone.com. You get a lot of junk in your inbox. This one, not junk, not junk at all. 1620 The Email. Exclusive content, contests, other stuff probably. Subscribe today at 1620thezone.com. Your Omaha area forecast from the Godfather's Pizza Weather Center and KETV News Watch 7 on 1620 The Zone. A beautiful spring day on the way. Tuesday, expect mostly sunny skies. Wind out of the west, just 5 to 15 miles per hour with highs in the upper 60s. I'm meteorologist Sean Everson from KETV Newswatch 7. A gain sent bead story. Jim was at the laundromat when he heard his ear said maraca, senor, but his nose said, hey, freshest scent ever. Following his nose, Jim found a man pouring a bottle of gain sent beads into the washer. The scent, the freshness. Jim blurted, sir, your scent maraca smell amazing. Actually, Jim, most noses call them Gain Scent Beads. Try Gain Scent Beads, way fresher than detergent alone. Get in zone, AutoZone. Welcome to AutoZone. What are you working on today? I think my battery's dead. With free battery testing and charging, we can help you get back on the road. Get in zone, AutoZone. So what if I need a new one? We have the right Duralast battery for you, only at AutoZone. Get in zone, AutoZone. And what about my old battery? We can recycle it right here at America's number one battery destination. Get in zone, auto zone. Restrictions apply. Got the happy hour blues? Get to Cops for happy hour relief with two happy hours from 3 to 6 p.m. and 8.30 p.m. till close Sunday through Friday. Cops serves 24-ounce domestic drafts for just $3 and 24-ounce craft drafts for only $4 plus $2 off appetizers. The restaurant that offers great pizza, burgers, and tasty charred wings now offers two great happy hours. Visit Cops today at 180th and Center, the Shadow Lake Town Center, and 72nd and Jones or click CopsPizza.com. Cops, pizza, and so much more. Be a memory for your grandchildren. Among Nebraska adults age 65 or older, 47% report current alcohol use. Drinking too much can cause harm to children, family members, and loved ones. By drinking less, you will still be around for your grandchildren. If you or a loved one is looking for help, find a treatment facility near you at findtreatment.gov. For immediate support, call, text, or chat 988. Brought to you by Nebraska DHHS in partnership with SAMHSA. 
Join me, Jimmy Allen, for the Creighton Athletics Hour. We'll be talking all things Blue Jays and interviewing your favorite coaches, so you don't want to miss it. It's the Creighton Athletics Hour Thursdays starting at 6 o'clock, only on 1620 The Zone, 1620thezone.com, and your 1620 The Zone mobile app. Baseball season is here again, and Tickets for Less has another reason for you to root for the Royals all season long. When Kansas City scores seven or more runs in a game this season, you can get 7% off your next ticket purchase at ticketsforless.com. Simply use the promo code ROYALS7 at checkout the day after the Royals score seven or more runs to redeem your discount. But be sure to act fast. The code will expire at the first pitch of the next scheduled Royals game. Learn more today at ticketsforless.com slash Royals. Hey, baseball fans, join the Blur Tailgate at Hilton Omaha this June for our 12th annual hospitality event during the College Baseball Championship Series. Book an experience for your clients or employees with an inclusive bar, buffet, TVs, music, and tailgate games. Secure your spot today and let Blur Events take care of all the work so you can enjoy the day. Plus, we're just steps away from Charles Schwab Field. Visit Blur Events. Events.com to book your group, buy tickets, or learn about sponsorships. That's BlurEvents.com, your college baseball and football tailgate destination. Start your engines. Joe's Indoor Karting in Council Bluffs is off the charts crazy. Joe's Karting is fast-paced, adrenaline-pumping, wheel-to-wheel racing action at over 40 miles per hour. The only speed restriction on these cards is how good you are. Joe's Karting is located just a couple of blocks north of Bass Pro Shop and directly east of AMC Theater in Council Bluffs, Iowa. Go watch a movie. Come race at Joe's. Planning a bachelor party, graduation party, or just a night out with friends. Go to Joe's. Remember, Joe's Karting is your place to race. The back seat. Check the back seat. Check the back seat. Gets in your head, right? Good. Because every year, dozens of children are forgotten in the backseat of a car by a parent or caregiver. All never thought it could happen to them. But with changes in routines, distractions, or a sleeping child, it can happen to anyone. Parked cars get hot fast and can be deadly. So get it in your head. Check the back seat. A message from NHTSA and the Ad Council. Now back to mornings with Sharp and Hammond on 1620 The Zone. All right, our good friend from Husker 24-7, Brian Christofferson, joins us now after consuming some football content. Good morning. Good morning, roving reporter. Uh, What's up, buddy? In the uh, phrase of uh, Mike Riley, did you did you notice good football? <laughs> it was probably a mixture. Uh, I just stepped out. Actually, the, the media is still in there uh, for a few minutes. Oh. Um, it, was an, it was a nice little, uh, you know, cur- they lifted the curtain for us a bit. They ran some eleven on eleven in front of of us for a few drives with each quarterback. So that was a. Uh, if you want to have the depth chart laid out on the radio, we can do that right now. Let's go. Um, okay. I'm kidding. I'm, I'm kidding. I'm kidding. <laughs> Who was the fourth string right tackle? No. <laughs> hey, uh, no. On, on Saturday, there was an incredibly hand, handsome gentleman in the back of the room that asked Matt Rule a great question about the relationship between Glenn Thomas and Marcus Satterfield uh, and the inside workings <laughs> of the program. A, I love the opening paragraph to your story, but B, do you anticipate that the communication – uh, and and small details will be a little more ironed out this season, and maybe game management because of that reason. I think it certainly helps. Um, I mean, it, it was a good question by uh, by you, and it, it was a good answer too. I mean, just as far as it, it tells you how much rule when when he hired Glenn Thomas, it was somebody's like I've been with this guy multiple stops, and every time that he's been connected with with Sat and me, good things have have followed you know it was the he brought up the baylor third year run they had at the sugar bowl and of course the temple when they got it rolling and beat penn state and he just has um i a real strong belief in glenn where he's over there working with the quarterbacks he knows the qbs are getting the right instructions he trusts that and if he has a question for glenn thomas um it's a relationship deep enough where he can walk in ask it and and get an answer pretty fast as hell. Like, so yeah, I, I, I think it, it definitely helps and nothing's ever seamless because things evolve over time and everybody switches a little bit how you're doing things if you're separate from each other for a few years. But as far as when you think about guys like the college football landscape and how staffs get shaken up now in a blender like every off season, the fact that the only real, you know, on-field coaching move here was Glenn Thomas, a guy that 
um, you know, half the staff is already really familiar with is coming in. Yeah, Nebraska got away with a pretty good offseason on that in that respect. Hey, as we're starting week three, Mike Stroud's in, we've kind of gone through every position group. Um, they've had a representative or their position coach. Kitty Pohoski spoke the other day, and there has been a little bit of talk about offensive line. Doesn't it seem like we haven't talked much offensive line in a place where we seem to talk a lot of offensive line? Something or nothing? Um, I don't know if it's anything. Um, it, sometimes it's just uh, it, it's connected to like how many guys come up with a certain position group. Like Donnie uh, Ryle is coming up, uh, I think, Thursday, and maybe a few more linemen. Uh, we'll filter into the media room, and then you get more of those stories and more of those questions asked to those guys. Um, I mean, it, it's it's still a big topic to me because it's you know that interior of the line. Uh, there's good competition there at those guard yeah. spots. Um, I think Henry Lasovsky is a guy who could have a say in things that people kind of gloss over. The thing I always remind myself, um, and I think it's worth always putting out there, is with O line, we sometimes get fixated on that guy who's in his first or second year in the program. Like, oh, maybe this guy who was here last year, redshirted, he's going to make a move. Sometimes that happens. Mm -hmm. But just as often or more so, it is that guy like Latovsky, like Justin Evans, you know, that. That, that makes that jump when he's like in his third or fourth year, who people have kind of uh, moved past in their head a little bit because he's out of sight, out of mind, but then they're really important all of a sudden. You've seen that with guys like Ethan Piper and stuff throughout the years. So just I think people just keep that in mind. I think Micah Mazuka, you know, he, obviously he was challenged uh, publicly, but, um, mm. you know, it's like he's had a good response to that sense and obviously has all the talent on the field. So I still expect him to have a big when I ask that question, it's not necessarily on a negative point of view. Maybe, yeah, they're just out there doing their job. Um, but we haven't we haven't talked a lot about offensive line because it's going to lead me to my other question. Do you think now that you have watched a little bit and today eleven on eleven is is Nebraska? They, we know they like their offensive line, and we know that in past years where Nebraska has been successful, BC the offensive line and the defensive line because they go against each other during the week and complement each other. Do you see us getting to a point where that is something that is brought up this year? Um, repeat that again. I'm sorry. So, I mean, so, where, so where they like their defensive line and they think they have a really good defensive line, it starts to benefit the offensive line because those are the guys they're going against every day of the week to get them ready for Saturday. Yeah, I mean, when you're going against like Ty Robinson um, and Nash and Jamari Butler and some of these guys who are you know fourth, fifth year players, uh, it should get you really good in a hurry, and you should be able to walk away from a practice and say that particular player is as good as I'm going to see in the Big Ten, or, or you know, hopefully a, in a top two or three team on the Big Ten when it's all said and done. And so you're hoping that feed, they feed off each other in that way. Um, I think there's some of that going on. The biggest thing I can say of optimism about the Matt Rule era so far is the defensive line last year. If we, if we go back 12 months, we're asking a lot of questions like, how's this all going to fit together? And now we're talking about them like strength. You know, like they, there's, there's storylines that are obvious to us now that we're not. Like, you know, National Soccer was like a fringe player at this time last year, getting 20 some snaps. And now he's a guy that everybody's talking about as, you know, a, can he be what kind of all conference player can he be potentially? Um, so the fact that they made that jump in the trenches on that side, and I think you saw some progress on the offensive side. Now you're hoping the offense, I think, kind of makes that same move, the same number of steps the defensive line made last year. And then you're really cooking uh, if you've got that working for you. You mentioned you guys got to see a really small sample size. Was there anything that stuck out to you that looked different from the offensive side of things that you saw today compared to a year ago? Oh, I don't, I don't think I could say that. Um, you know, well, I could say this. You know, Nayer makes a nice catch. I won't go too far into that. But, it, you know, he goes up and gets it. And you've got a guy like him and Banks who comes back to the ball and just wins a fight against the DB in the one-on-one to go get it. Um, and you heard on Saturday, uh, real talk. back conversation when we talk about um, you know the low completion percentage and all the struggles of last year it's got to be a full team thing where your guys go and make plays too and 
I do think there are some additions um, on the outside there that are going to help and, and help drive some of those young players. Like, this is how it's done around here, particularly Banks. And I think Nair has that uh, ability as well. And then you're hoping, like, your Jalen Lloyd and your Jaden Dawson just kind of take off with it. And then a year or two from now, they are those guys who are like, this is how it's done. And, and, and you know, it just speeds off, speeds off of that. Uh, and you got a cycle going. Hey, what through if you're writing a story, and I, I know you will and you have, from Tommy Hill, because I want to go back about a year ago, Matt Rule's first spring practice, Tommy Hill was not involved because he was suspended. Tommy Hill today is out there playing on an island as a guy that probably is has a spot like uh, locked up as a starting quarterback. And oh, by the way, in between before Rule got here, he was a DB and a wide receiver in the same year. How would you begin to write the story of, of where Tommy Hill started and where he is as of right now? I would start with guys who can take a critique that's a tough one, process it, say, that doesn't mean this guy doesn't care about me. He does, actually. That's why he's, he's, he's going hard after me. Like uh, Mike Mazuka, you know, for instance. He goes. He's going after him because he he sees stuff in him. Like he he knows what he can be. He knows that he's got six to eight months with him to try to erase question marks about him as a pro prospect. So do you want to do you want to take the tough love and uh, run with it and nod your head a bit to it? Say yeah, there's some truth there, or do you do you kind of turn your back on it? And I think we learned something too in how to report on the team a little bit. In there have been past eras where if the guy is not there the first day or you know that first he's gone for some reason there's always sort of been a thought like well i guess that's that that's the end of that story um you know and you move on and and you don't expect guys to come back um i think if you look at rules track record he's had players at temple who he's had that same kind of tough love with um sometimes they've even gone away for a little bit came back and had real great success stories and so when you hear him, you know, talk about a player and um, there's a little bit of like, yeah, this isn't quite where it needs to be or, or maybe even more blunt than that, I think we need to not necessarily think like that's always a negative thing. Sometimes it, it, you, you see it as like he sees a lot in this guy. He knows what he can be. Now is the player going to respond accordingly? And Tommy did that to his credit, and that's, uh, that's why he is where he is right now. And I think he's also just a dude. You know, some guys are good at football, maybe don't love it as much. I think he loves it. He's just one of those guys who sort of is uh, saturated by it, and it really helps him. That's not the only change we've seen. There's obviously been a change in kind of recruiting philosophy and when they want to get guys on campus. And, and you wrote an article about it and the fact that they've kind of directed more towards practice versus game days. Do you think that kind of is derivative of the NIL discussion in the portal game that's kind of making the focus about game day just about the game versus the days during the week that are about recruiting? Yes, good question. I think some of it too is just a sped up recruiting calendar. If you like think about last year and what happened, June was the month, right? Where there was just mm-hmm. all this camping and there's guys committing and, and guys are, are, they raise their hand and say, I'm with this program before fall begins. So a lot of guys just want to have it locked up and have that decision made. And so, yeah, the game day experience is awesome for Nebraska recruiting. But you have to understand a lot of these guys are going to make their call before that. You need to really get that ball rolling with a sped up calendar and say, this is what this campus looks like. It's probably not exactly as you imagined it. Um, and also, this is how we practice. And they're proud of how they practice. They think they're in kind of rare company and all the stations they have and how nobody's standing around. And I can attest today, you know, like that, that there's a truth to that. There, there isn't just a lot of inactivity ever. It's always sort of on the move. And I think the thing I hear most from recruits is, they see opportunity. If they can go to a place where they say, these guys are legitimately going to give me the same number of reps, even if I'm a true freshman or third, and third or fourth team that first year, I'll be a part of that because that, that's all I'm asking for is an opportunity to put on film. This is what I'm about. This is how I can grow as a player. So that's what recruits tell me the most when I interview them is they just like the reps are split up and it gives them their chance to make a statement. You can probably hear the, yeah. our famous train in the background here <laughs> hey, we'll get, uh, that goes by the dorm. Hey, we'll get you out of here, and I appreciate it because I know you're up against it and you got to get to uh, writing and other stuff post-practice. Um, just an observation on my part because I know Cam Jurgens, I think, is working out in Lincoln, 
before, He's there, yeah. Yeah, he before, there today. before he uh, goes to the start of OTAs in Philadelphia, have you noticed more former players are here in spring that have been here in a while? Not just Rule's first year where he was getting to know people, but in the last few years? Because it seems like a lot of former guys, either guys that are still playing or the old heads, are coming to watch practice. Yeah, I think there are. Um, I don't. I can't put that to like data yet, but that's the story to worth worth tracking because I do think that all matters. And you heard Rule on Saturday. He talked about the coaches clinic. They had what seven hundred, eight hundred. He wants it to get to twelve hundred, fifteen hundred. And then he said about the players, there were like a hundred on the sideline. So let's get that up to like seven hundred, eight hundred. So it's a big deal to him. Um, you heard Troy Dannon say it in his opening remarks. We stand on the shoulders of these yeah. people who have been, actually been through the program. I think that's something you're going to hear stress more and more. Um, and you got to walk it then. You can't just talk about it. And so um, I, I do think, you know, he, he said Saturday, always an open door to high school coaches and former players. It's always open. And, um, you know that that should make a bit, that should be a big deal to people around here that they know like on a Tuesday if I want to go down and learn some things take some notes I can and we'll see we'll see what that does for the health of the program but um, I it, it can't do anything but be favorable. Hey, if you didn't know Cam Jurgens was going to be a starting center in the NFL and you just saw him in street clothes like at practice today, what would you think he did for a living? <laughs> um, I would think he r- would run like oh, I don't want. Like a landscaping company, maybe that's a successful one. It's better than um, what I thought you were going to say. He just kind of bl- <laughs> he just kind of blends in. Yeah, yeah, and I mean that like in a compliment. Like, yeah. I don't any landscaping guys out there listening? That's not a dig. I think, but I think he'd be a successful one. So, um, yeah, that's he does blend in. Um, I didn't. I, I honestly, I walked right by him and I was like, oh, that's Cam Durgan. It, it kind of didn't <laughs> didn't uh, cross my mind immediately that it, it's a. Uh, guy playing in the nfl hey fantastic stuff i appreciate you uh taking time for uh, us and uh look forward to uh uh what your eyeballs told you today well hopefully the wind wasn't too bad i'm down kind of I, I tried to hide a little bit but uh couldn't hear it at all a hey, fantastic all right. bc thank you thanks guys uh, um good sign you got guys that are coming back to work out whether they're trying to make it back into the league make the league or in the league that are working out in the facility and why wouldn't you at the new uh, weight room. Um, but it's also yeah, like 16 you know, year old brothers that might be five-star quarterbacks. I mean, the divorce, too. the divorce of Nebraska and Cam Jurgens on the decision to go pro wasn't, wasn't smooth. Um, but he's been around a lot in the spring. That's a, that's a really, that's a really, really good sign, especially for an offensive line room for, a, for the offensive linemen that have gone on and are playing in the league that come back and hang out just whether they're working out or just hanging out. That's a good sign. He come off to a guy that uh, come off to you as a guy that may have a future in coaching too. Cam? Yeah. Uh, I don't know. I mean, I, he comes off to me as a guy that's going to have a ten year plus career in the NFL. Yeah, I think so too. But uh, it just feels like he loves the game. Maybe a guy that probably going to be around after he's done playing too. All right, quick break. We'll come back. Uh, we'll wrap it up. It's been a rough day for Jimmy over there. What a great he's, day. Uh, opened Joke up a funeral home. He's killed a lot of things in sports that we love. Death's one you, shiny moment. And you say I'm the negative one. I, knew. I'm I don't think I was that negative. Hey, I'm today. a beacon biggest, of joy. Over biggest here. accomplishment today, Jim, Jimmy, Jimmy Chavez is like bright and easy, sunny. Easy day over there for Jimmy. Always yeah. sunny and Lawrence guy over yeah. here. <laughs> Regular Stuart Smalley sitting over here. <laughs> you are the sunshine of our life, Jimmy mm-hmm. Chavez. So, uh, mornings with Sharp and Hanley and Jimmy and Jimmy on 1620 The Zone. <laughs> mornings with Sharp and Hanley on 1620 The Zone and 1620TheZone.com with Gary Sharp and Nick Hanley. Big names, big games. We've got them all. 1620, the zone. Make the right call. When it's time to replace or repair storm damage, make the right call. John Higgins Weather Guard, the local, trusted, and proven choice. No one has installed more DaVinci roofs, and there's a reason why John Higgins Weather Guard is the nation's leader. Community member, community supporter. Make the right call. John Higgins Weather Guard, the home of the rooferies. Make the right call. The Zone Hotline is powered by 42 Degrees. The Source, by your mom's house. 
At Cox Mobile, we know you're smart. You brush your teeth in the shower to save time. <laughs> make coffee ice cubes for your cold brew. Mm. And wear goggles to cut onions. You also added Cox Mobile. So smart. Now you're running on the network with unbeatable 5G reliability and saving on your Cox Internet. It's ingenious, just like you. Oh, thanks. Cox Mobile, the smart way to mobile. Cox postpaid internet required. Cox Mobile runs on the network with unbeatable 5G reliability as measured by Ookla LLC in the U.S. to H 2023. Other restrictions apply. Learn more at cox.com slash mobile. Equitable Bank. We take banking personally. EquitableOnline.com. Hey, baseball fans, join the Blur Tailgate at Hilton Omaha this June for our 12th annual hospitality event during the College Baseball Championship Series. Book an experience for your clients or employees with an inclusive bar, buffet, TVs, music, and tailgate games. Secure your spot today and let Blur Events take care of all the work so you can enjoy the day. Plus, we're just steps away from Charles Schwab Field. Visit BlurEvents.com to book your group, buy tickets, or learn about sponsorships. That's BlurEvents.com, your college baseball and football tailgate destination. Getting quality employees to fill positions in your company is essential. But finding those people can be a major hassle. Unless you use ZipRecruiter. ZipRecruiter makes finding quality people a breeze. And right now you can try it for free at ZipRecruiter.com slash radio. With ZipRecruiter, one click sends your job to hundreds of top job sites. But more than that, ZipRecruiter's advanced technology identifies the candidates with the skills you need sends you a list of great matches to review, then actively invites them to apply for your job. And the results speak for themselves. Four out of five employers who post on ZipRecruiter get a quality candidate within the first day. That's right, the first day. Now you can focus on your business and let ZipRecruiter do the work finding the best people for you. See for yourself. Experience the ease, efficiency, and power of ZipRecruiter for free. Just go to ZipRecruiter.com slash radio. That's ZipRecruiter.com slash radio. ZipRecruiter.com slash radio. Host is roasting every morning. Host is roasting every day. Put your coffee department in good hands with Host Coffee Service, providing direct delivery and loaned coffee equipment with service programs. If you're ready to change to a better coffee provider, it's time for Host Coffee. Omaha's best coffee. Since 1972, Host Coffee is always roasting something good for you. And we're back. Mornings with Sharp and Handy. Here's Gary, Nick, and Jimmy on 1620 The Zone. All right, big thanks to uh, Sam McKeown and uh, Brian Christopherson, all the good conversation. And thank you to... To... But you're still here tomorrow. Oh, that's right. I got one more day. Yeah. yeah. No, no. We're I'll not... set my flowers tomorrow, Gary. Yeah, you're not going off to Nam <laughs> just yet. What are you, what are you quitting? Uh, like, what do you like? You, well, you've had five days with yours truly, uh, and it's that's enough for me. Okay. Well, <laughs> that's uh, that's what it's more, she, it's that, more that five a.m. wake up call. That's what she said one time. <laughs> oh, you get used to it. Don't worry about it. You know what? Oh. I actually think I'm in the rhythm. I think I'm. <laughs> that's the rhythm of the night, mm-hmm. or in this case, early morning. Yeah, as DeBarge once told yeah. us. My uh, my uh, internal clock went off at like four forty-five today. That's because you overslept yesterday. Trust me, I was up at three. That's exactly what it was. I had to go watch one shiny moment, and loved every minute of it. Oh yeah, I was even like, Juwan, can't wait for Juwan Gary from the Big Ten tournament. Um, <laughs> better editing, <laughs> keep the song forever. All the uh, all the segments are up on the radio uh, replay page. So there was a little <laughs> survey that has just come out. Um. The average duration on cue, I'll start with Jimmy C. Okay. The average duration of grumpiness after a bad sports outcome. How long do you think it takes you to get over a can you're, you're you root for a football school? Get over a Kansas football loss these days. Ooh, ooh. Uh, I can give you a real life example. Jimmy is a Jimmy is a season ticket holder to KU yeah. football. I, I'll give you a real life example. You brought up when I was doing that North Dakota State game the other or the other day, uh, when I saw on the crawl at the chi the final score i just sank and i basically mailed in the last couple minutes of the call but <laughs> to answer your question first steps admitting when, it when, they, when fargo's yeah, listening yeah when they lost to k-state <laughs> that was on saturday i think i got over it wednesday night yeah okay so it's uh, long, it was, it it's was a sad week the, yeah. what do you care average, about more these days the average, uh, college basketball or college football losses it's always been college football yeah okay. it was like that when i was two so if you have a football team you root for i know where you're going as creighton guy but the average duration of grumpiness after a board a bad sports outcome on uh promo guy.us slash viral dash share slash game dash gloom 
two hours and 38 minutes. I was going to say two and a half days, but. Yeah, that seems two two hours and 30 minutes. That seems like. Jimmy two, just got over the man. Super Bowl but last do, week. Do it. <laughs> but in the state of Probably Nebraska, yet, according to uh, Game Gloom, takes us 22 minutes. I call BS on that. Yeah, listen, doing post game after a Creighton loss is rough. If there wasn't, if that was the case, we wouldn't have a show called Big Red Overreaction. It'd For be like, four oh, hours. Glad Damn. they had a good time yeah. today. How long did it take you to get over to the Tennessee loss? Man, that drive home sucked. Uh, there was there was a part of me that was like, ah, at least I get to be here with my family on Easter. But the other part of me was like, man, it'd be really cool to be in Arizona next weekend. <laughs> But yeah, it was it was rough, and I, I think a lot of that was that sixteen zero run. But that that one was one of the toughest to swallow. Two hours two and thirty eight minutes on average. I don't know. It used to be around here. Nebraska football lose a game, it'd be a week. It'd be it'd be a, it'd be yeah. multiple days. Yeah, Ray Allen took me three hundred and sixty days to get over it. And two thousand seven happened, and people started getting it over quicker. Yeah, I I don't know this. So like in Indiana, it's an hour and thirty one minutes. Kentucky, it's eight hours and fifty three minutes. Checks out. We're passionate around here. Yeah. I know what Kentucky is. That's about basketball. No, we are extremely passionate around here. It does take a while for us to get over our losses. I, w- I want to see the data. I want to see how they hit this this person found this information because I don't think it was very in detailed. If they don't believe, have Rule follow somebody randomly on Twitter and have everyone lose everything. Yeah, listen to call-in shows stuff. around the country and tell me how long it takes people to get over things. We, we on this now, station, we have people calling on Monday that are still but, upset but about a football there, game on there Saturday. There is a sign of where and Nebraska football, you. for example, has been. It doesn't take you as long to get over a loss as it used to. I mean, there's, a, there's yeah. more of them. I mean, we but, literally have people that call into Big Red Overreaction that say, I just don't care. Make them mow my lawn. But there I were believe lo- half of them. But the type of losses this year, uh, it was probably the middle of the week before you got over them. Like you got over <laughs> Maryland. Maryland probably, Maryland probably is one of those losses that even though a couple have come after it, you went, I'm still not over it. How? Yeah. B- because of goal. And, and then, and then so Iowa. Much, yeah, the, and that. Yeah. I don't know. I like, like the Iowa women's basketball fan. How soon were you over the South Carolina game? 20 minutes? 30 minutes? Probably a couple hours. I mean, there was a lot of people that felt like this hey, was going to be the one. I was over Nebraska, Texas A&M in the tournament because I'm like, I knew this was going to happen. That was like, psh, good 15 minutes, on to the next. No, I, I think you're the rare, though. I think a lot of people were very hopeful and very disappointed. Well, I'm not saying I wasn't hopeful. I was just realistic that this is not a scene of matchup. And the lopsided. They're, they're, they're playing Illinois for the second straight game. The lopsided yeah. victory probably helped people get over a little quicker, too. Uh, Yeah, but then I was sad because Tominaga was sad. Anytime the case is sad, Nebraska's sad. And Lego anytime seems to, a Lincoln cast. Any, any, anytime K-State's happy, everybody's happy. Except for Odson, who I guess crushed Tominaga in the three-point competition. He's an anti-Nebraska basketball fan. He's anti He's anti He kills more things than I do. Well, you guys could, Ooh, make, you guys could, be, you guys could get together on a funeral home he then. He canceled Nebraska basketball after like game nine. Then Let's be honest. Song. There were a lot of people that canceled Nebraska basketball after year two. <laughs> it's true. Uh, we'll see you tomorrow at six. Live from the Host Coffee Studio, this is 1620 